Chapter 181 The Wave Surges Jin Ming can be said to have a good understanding of Yin Xiong's situation. After all, Yin Xiong absorbed a lot of metal materials from the spacecraft and mechanical equipment controlled by Qin Ming. So Qin Ming had no doubts about how to realize his idea. However, Qin Ming has not yet decided whether the extracted top-grade materials from psychers will be used in spacecraft armor or weapons. Wait, that's not right. Qin Ming suddenly realized that his idea was wrong. When applying these high-strength materials, his current knowledge gradually began to become scarce. This kind of high-grade metal should be used in places with the most cutting-edge technology, such as the design of capital ships or antimatter reactors, or show it to the boat spirit to see if this material has any special uses. Rather than simply being used on spacecraft weapons and armor, Qin Ming suddenly realized that he was now as if ancient people had obtained high-strength metal materials that could be used as aerospace technology. Assuming that ancient people could use these materials at will, the biggest use for them was to make a cold weapon or armor. Their level of knowledge determines how well they can use the material. Now, although Qin Ming can't only use this material as a cold weapon, the properties are similar, and he can't fully apply these materials. But it's okay. He still has time, and he still has many opportunities to learn. Moreover, although he does not know how to use this material, his Chao Fan is obviously different. As long as Chao Fan is given the opportunity to study these things, Qin Ming will soon know the practical application value of this material. In short, Qin Ming had to first extract all the psychic materials from Yin Xiong that he might have saved for most of his life. After confirming his idea, Qin Ming suddenly couldn't help but say, I'm really born. Qin Ming suddenly cursed himself, which made the boss a little unresponsive and asked, What did you say? It's okay. Boss, please help me refuse. I suddenly discovered that Yin Xiong seems to have other uses. Oh, what's the use? Qin Ming asked him to help find a new home some time ago. Now that he has found one, he is willing to pay a good price. The value of things like the fairy tree is not low, especially since the buyer still has a 10-year warranty, which is enough for the fairy tree to produce something valuable. Since Qin Ming chose to refuse, he must have his reasons. Combined with this, Qin Ming just suddenly scolded himself. The boss is very curious now. There was no need for Qin Ming to hide anything. So he simply repeated his thoughts. It can only be said that Yin Xiong's alloy furnace is very useful no matter how you look at it. Even if the top metal contaminated with psychic properties is regarded as Yin Xiong's flesh and blood to a certain extent. Qin Ming does not have the slightest psychological burden at this time. After all, as much Qin Ming is poached as it is, it will be replaced with other metals. The whole thing is similar to giving cats coffee cherries and using the coffee beans you get to make cat poop coffee. Although it's not a cat now, and it's not coffee, the effect is similar. Moreover, Qin Ming took the initiative to extract it, and did not need to pull it out. Besides, Qin Ming had already had a mental breakdown once, when he knew that Sky Steel was the shit of an eel from Artur and Kong. When you know that the door of the biological spaceship is made of muscle tissue such as sphincter, your mood is relatively stable. So this time, he was in a good frame of mind. Anyway. Yin Xiong is just a ball now. And it doesn't matter where he extracts the metal from. After listening to Qin Ming's story, the boss said, Now I know why you suddenly scolded yourself just now. It's indeed a bit raw. But yes, you will probably need something like this that can produce alloys in the future. Then I will reject the other side for you. Are you sure you won't have any thoughts of selling it in the future? Qin Ming responded, Well, that's it. While the fairy tree is great, it's not just its leaves that can be used to make tea. Also, when Qin Ning was at Yu Hui's place before, when he mentioned fairy tree tea to his boss, the boss also mentioned several valuable things produced by fairy trees. But even with these, the value of the fairy spirit tree to Qin Ming is definitely not as good as a universal alloy smelting furnace that his spiritual power needs. After Qin Ming confirmed his idea, he sent a document to his boss and said, By the way, this is the data recorded at the highest point in the past few days. The boss opened the file and took a look. He found that the content inside was all data that he could not understand. And then closed the file and said, Okay, I will transfer it. There should be nothing else going on. So I will hang up. Wait a minute. Boss, I want to ask the name of the new member of the association who designed the highest point. Xiaoyang. As the communication with the boss ends, the matter that Chen Ning still had in the empire was basically settled. Except for the pirate hunting he has been asking Gamma B to do. And the regular return of data records from the highest point. 
there is basically nothing that Chen Ning needs to worry about. In the next period of time, Chen Ning should live a relatively calm and ordinary life, but also busy. In addition to needing to learn a lot of things, the starport that has been built can be used to its fullest extent under brilliant command. Chen Ning still has to ask Gamma B to go to the space station occupied by the left path to offer a reward or something. Not long after Chen Ning ended his call with the factory director and boss, the Esconia system, far away in the empire, is the headquarters of Sinar Corporation. The company's board of directors meeting is being held. The entire conference table was noisy at this time. The content of the quarrel was the news that they had just received the death of the director. Some people say that this is Chen Ning's threat, and the company cannot ignore it. Some people think that this is helping the factory director, and that they should continue the tone they set before and befriend Chen Ming. There are also people who are acting as peacemakers, thinking that since the company has fired the director in name, what Chen Ning did and the company's attitude towards him are completely different, and there is no need to argue. Of course, there is no shortage of people who are angry. There is a director who is happy to see people at his level losing face and quarreling over such things. Even with the new directors, there were only a dozen people in the board meeting, but it still felt like a wet market. The chairman sitting in the main seat did not care about the specific content of the director's debate at this time, because what really made them quarrel was not that Chen Ning killed someone casually, but the subsequent impact of Chen Ning's doing so. All I can say is that the director's death was too scary. He was burned to death on the spacecraft by the high temperature inside the spacecraft. Although there must be arrangements from the space station, the person who ultimately implemented it must be Chen Ming. And only Chen Ming can do this. The two had to let the directors consider whether Chen Ming might do this to them in the future. The directors had no means to confirm whether Chen Ming controlled a certain spacecraft. There was indeed a possibility that they would die in Chen Ming's hands in the same way. The more contact you have with Chen Ming, the higher the possibility of this happening. After all, it is still the same sentence. The company is a power, and they are businessmen. And the power and businessmen must be profit-seeking. No one can guarantee that their relationship with Chen Ming will not change in this life. So the possibility of sudden death at any time without warning will indeed worry some directors. But the chairman in the chair is not worried about this. Because anyone who knows the whole story can see that the director is seeking death. It's just that some of the directors don't believe it. That's all. In addition, the factory director actually told the chairman about this matter in advance. And he also said that Chen Ning was the one he specially called to deal with the director. So he had reported it in advance. Of course, the chairman must not tell anyone about this matter. After all, this is considered a factory director's leverage. As long as he remembers that what this incident revealed is that Chen Ning is good to his friends, it will be okay. There is no point in further arguing at the board meeting. So the chairman coughed twice and said, Stop. When the conference room gradually became quiet, the chairman put a document on the screen next to him and said, Evaluating Chen Ning must not just talk about it. You must look at the evidence. Previously, when Chen Ning was still in the afterglow, the 14th Army Corps took the lead in organizing a joint meeting. The 14th Legion specially found a few people who majored in psychology to make a personality model for Chen Ning to analyze his personality. You have seen the result. The chairman pointed to the content displayed on the screen behind him and said, Chen Ming is a good man. At least if you don't have time to mess with him. He will definitely not mess with you for no reason. He is even quite nice to his own people. If you have any concrete evidence that proves that Chen Ning is not a good person and will come to the board of directors to kill people, you can mention it now. A director immediately said, Isn't the death of the director of the Space Station Management Bureau the best evidence? Chen Ming's psychology must have been tortured and distorted by Yu Hui so he attacked so harshly when he came back. The chairman nodded and said, Oh, then please explain that before the invasion of the space station on Zuiju and the war zone, someone assassinated Chen Ming. But Chen Ming only had his hands and feet broken, disabling his ability to move. Also, when Zhu Jing invaded the space station and several people with explosives tied to their bodies blocked Chen Ming at the door of space wall 1, Chen Ming did not directly kill these Zhu Jing who were mixed in with the crowd. Instead, he took the risk and entered the dock. Thing. He directly killed people and blew up a bunch of ordinary people. And then casually hid in the space station. When the five cruisers outside opened. Who could fight in? Isn't it more convenient? If Chen Ning's character is twisted. It should have been shown before this. The chairman was not angry at this time. Because he knew that this was a situation that must be maintained in order for the company to operate. 
someone must raise objections on some matters, even if there is some internal friction in the entire company. It must not be as alone. In short, even if you object to continuing to communicate with Chen Ming, there is no way to change the fact that Chen Ming can control the spacecraft. Isn't the risk of being killed by Chen Ming greater? If you and Chen Ming have a good relationship, will Chen Ming come to kill you when he is full? The chairman's eyes were locked on the director, who had just spoken and said, If you still have any objections, one of you can directly initiate a vote on whether to continue to maintain a friendly relationship with Chen Ming. No one spoke at the conference table. The directors all know that they may quarrel in words. But in actual work, they must put interests first. Just as the chairman said, the possibility and risk of Chen Ming coming to kill them is actually basically non-existent. On the contrary, the benefits are more realistic. The chairman shook his head and said, Wouldn't it be over already? Okay. Today's meeting is mainly about two things. The first one is antimatter reactor technology. We were the first to obtain a patent with the support of the government. Now that the technology has been initially verified, it is time to start industrial production and prepare for large-scale testing. The director sitting next to the chairman asked, Does this mean that antimatter engine technology can already start making money for us? Yes. So we can't avoid the second thing today, which is Chen Ming. We all know that several companies in the empire are researching antimatter technology. But we were the first to get the results. The Yue antimatter shockwave weapon that Chen Ming brought back is indispensable. Then because we took the initiative to cut ties with Chen Ming before, we allocated some patents to him. The chairman said, moving his fingers to display a list on the display behind him. Then he crossed out most of the patents on it, leaving only one line. Chen Ming previously sold some of the patents back to us, those that were crossed out, for a sum of cash. However, he did not sell the most critical antimatter reactor patent. A director who had just joined the board said, So cunning? It's smart. Although he was just a team leader before, he is not ignorant of technology. He knows that the reactor in antimatter technology is the most valuable. Then what do we do? Find a way to buy the patent back? The former director who liked to take advantage of the situation took advantage of the situation and said, We have many ways to get back Chen Ming's patents in a reasonable way without spending money. The director in front immediately stared at the director who spoke behind him and said, Don't talk nonsense. I don't mean that. The chairman ignored the director's intrigues and said, Chen Ming deliberately kept the antimatter reactor patent before so it is impossible to let go of the patent. If we want to make money, we will definitely not be able to avoid him. In that case, we might as well take the initiative to use this opportunity to build a relationship between him and our company. From Chen Ming's performance over the past 20 years, we can see that he is very motivated, wants to make progress, and has strong self-learning ability. In addition to money, our company can provide him with many technologies within the company that he has not been exposed to at his previous level, provide him with many learning opportunities, or simply seek cooperation. Cooperation is the best way to build relationships. Then how to get it? We still have to start with money first, and send the money earned from the antimatter reactor in proportion to the patent. And things like technology cannot be sent directly. It would be no good if we sent them directly. We can just trade normally with Chen Ming. We can use our company's internal technology to exchange with Chen Ming the technology he got from Yu Hui. Then we can use the opportunity to exchange technologies with each other. We can take the initiative to ask him about Yu Hui's technology issues and help him solve his problems in learning our technology. Wouldn't the relationship come back after this back and forth? And wouldn't it be easy to have more in-depth communication in the future? A director raised his hand and said, Well, Chairman, how do you know that Chen Ming must have Yu Hui's technology? The chairman glanced at the newly joined director with some confusion and said, If you were Chen Ming, you had the ability to control the spaceship and control Yue. And then you would run away from Yue without doing anything or taking anything. Come out? No. But what if the technologies he has at his disposal are all technologies such as guard expulsion and many other technologies that we have already studied thoroughly? The chairman became even more confused and asked, You can control a cruiser, but you only have the technology of a destroyer? Uh. Pretend I didn't say that. The chairman nodded and returned to the previous topic. But we can't be so direct. Chen Ming must have a bad feeling towards us now. And giving money may not necessarily bring back the relationship. We'll use a more indirect approach. Starting with Wuin. The chairman looked at the director in charge of the pirate space station. He immediately said, The relationship between our company and Wuin on the space station is currently quite good. 
Our relationship with Chen Ning did not affect Chen Ning's attitude towards us too much before. However, Wu Wen has not clearly shown any intention to recruit from us. But since he has been staying on our space station, he basically has no chance to contact other forces. As long as nothing unexpected happens in the future, he will eventually have a good relationship with us. The chairman nodded and said, That's right. Furthermore, Wu Wen helped the Psychic Association get a new member some time ago. You all know the pinnacle of his design. Right. The prototype spaceship at the Supreme Point is the one that Chen Ning drove away. He also has technical cooperation with Chen Ming. Finding him is actually an indirect way to contact Chen Ming. If we want to find people we don't know in the Psychic Association, we must start with people we know. So this matter comes back to Wu Wen. Look for Wu Wen. Whether you find a way to contact Chen Ming through him, or contact the newcomer from the Psychic Society called Xiao Yang, and there will be a good opportunity after a while, the chairman said as he displayed a press release from the Empire's official media on the screen, with a photo of Bai Quan posted on it. The commander of the 14th Legion in the Gallo Star Territory, Bai Quan, has returned to the station of the 14th Legion and is preparing to be promoted to Lieutenant General. Bai Quan killed two battleships on Yue's territory, one of which was a new model of battleship. He even obtained some data of that new model of battleship. With such great achievements, the Empire is now promoting him as a model of the army. Look! The screen next to the chairman displayed countless press releases issued by the official or news media with certain official backgrounds, all of which were reports on Bai Quan. The significance of what the authorities did was clear, and it attracted countless small newspapers and periodicals to publish the same article. It was as if he wanted to promote Bai Quan as the youngest lieutenant general in the empire in recent years and a hero of the empire. One director was keenly aware of some of these problems and said, It's so popular that it's hard not to make people wonder if the empire is going to make any big moves in recent years. The chairman did not deny it and said, It's very possible. That's why I asked the company to adjust the production line and shift the production of civilian spacecraft to the military. But we are not talking about this time now. What we are talking about is that Wuin will go to this promotion ceremony. There is also news that the 14th Legion also invited Xiao Yang, the man who designed the Supreme Point. It can only be said that Xiao Yang just came out of Tachyon technology, and he has the design of a Supreme ship as his family background. He is indeed a good recruitment target. Whether Xiao Yang will go or not, Wuin will definitely go. That's for sure. Actually, I also plan to get in touch with Bai Quan more. The chairman suddenly changed the content on the projection behind him, replacing it with a document recording the current situation that appeared in public view, and a document documenting the achievements of the 14th Army Corps announced to the public. When you looked at these two documents, did you notice anything special? Before the directors discovered the problem, the chairman explained directly, The day Chen Ning escaped from Yu Hui happened to be the day Bai Quan went to Yu Hui's place. And Bai Quan, who had just arrived in the Gallo Star territory a few months ago, suddenly led his fleet deep into the hinterland of Yue, found Yue's giant shipyard, and knew that there was a newly designed capital ship inside, and killed it. Then Wu Wen, who had almost no interaction with Bai Quan before, suddenly agreed to attend a promotion ceremony so far away from the headquarters of the 14th Army Corps. You should be able to understand these messages that can be analyzed on the surface. Right. A few directors looked slightly embarrassed but they quickly covered it up. So the conclusion is very clear. Chen Ming and Bai Quan have additional cooperation in private. They did not have conflicts because of the previous internal issues of the 14th Legion. Instead, they came together. We cannot continue to waste the opportunity to contact Chen Ming. So, Wu Wen, Bai Quan and Xiao Yang are all candidates for indirect contact with Chen Ming. We happen to have a pretty good relationship with the 14th Legion now. Although it's a bit embarrassing. Getting an invitation letter shouldn't be a problem. I can take people to Bai Chuan's promotion ceremony. The chance for us to have a good relationship with Chen Ming is now. After the chairman finished speaking, he motioned to the directors to speak freely. The meeting lasted for more than an hour and ended. After this, the peaceful week passed quickly. A week later, Chen Ming was still on the planet orbit of the mechanical city, leading a busy life every day. Chapter 182 An Unexpected Reward An Unexpected Gain Although a week has passed since Chen Ming talked with the factory director. But at this time, he was counting the gains he had just received from the space station hijacked by Zwapath. Just before, the moment Chen Ning finished chatting with his boss, he directly made Gamma B move and headed to the coordinates of the hijacked space station. Just on arrival, 
The situation at the plant research station was a little more troublesome than he thought. Not that anyone had already taken care of the space station before him. After all, when he came here, he was in a galaxy with stars with special light radiation wavelengths in the edge star field. Except for a few left path spaceships that rushed over and blew themselves up when they saw Chen Ming. There was nothing. Even Chen Ming from the Harmony Plant Research Institute didn't see it. At the same time, it's not like leftist elements have blown up the space station. The space station is still intact in the orbit of the only planet in the galaxy that is in the habitable zone, but is a desolate planet without life. It wasn't even how crazy Zuijiu's subsequent counterattack was. Because when Chen Ming's fleet entered the galaxy from hyperspace, a few patrol spacecraft from the left path came over to cause trouble. There was basically no other movement in the galaxy. Not even the space station. Of course, Chen Ming also knew that three days had passed since the incident, and that his fleet had arrived in this galaxy. The movement that should have occurred should have been completed a few days ago. And this is according to the information given by the factory director. Although the Harmony Company's space station is occupied, the communication device is completely fine, and the means of external communication are not blocked like the former mining space station. Therefore, the company can directly lock some permissions of the space station from the outside and close some functions of the space station from a long distance, turning the space station into a large piece of scrap metal. However, Chin Ming could not rule out the possibility of someone behind Zuijia providing support to them. So it was a question of whether some equipment on the space station, especially defensive weapons, could still be used. He was skeptical. But to be honest, the weapons of the space station are just that. This space station, which is less than two kilometers at its largest, is a research space station after all. It is not a battleship specially used for combat. And it cannot install any powerful weapons. What really troubled Chen Ming was the densely packed wreckage of various ships floating around the space station. These debris all come from spacecraft available on the space station. Now they are all in pieces. They were probably all bombed by Zhuijia. If it's just the wreckage of the spacecraft, forget it. Chen Ming opened the spaceship shield at the last moment and took the law enforcers of the 14th Legion as the first, followed by five hammerheads to attack directly side by side. But it can be found on the sensors of Chen Ming's fleet ship. On top of these broken spacecraft wreckage, Zhuijia still maliciously placed a large number of explosives that could be triggered at any time. If it hits a little bit, it might explode. If Chen Ming's spaceships really hit each other in a row, they would definitely explode into pieces. It doesn't matter if Chen Ming only blows up his own spaceship. But he still doesn't know the situation inside the space station. And he is not sure whether the aftermath of the explosion will affect the space station. What would be fatal if there was a chain explosion that caused the space station to blow up? At this time, in addition to the left path molecules, there are many living researchers on the space station. According to Chen Ming's previous information about the contents of the reward, because the space station can be controlled from the outside. And the management of the space station responded promptly. Many researchers have successfully hid in the living area with the highest safety factor on the space station, which can be regarded as a large escape capsule. Only some researchers were captured by the rioting leftists. So the personnel losses of the space station were not much during the riot. As for the living area, there is food, shelter, and various infrastructure, which is actually quite good. But now, things have changed. Although Chen Ming didn't see anyone from He Company when he arrived. But they do have spaceships come over every day to patrol at the risk of being bombed by the left path. Confirm the general situation of the space station and publish the information. And after these few days have passed, because the leftist elements took control of the power system of the space station and directly implemented power-off measures for the entire space station. Only the emergency backup power supply, which is not under any control, is still running to maintain the minimum survival of the space station personnel. So now, the situation in the living area is most likely not optimistic. People must find ways to rescue them as soon as possible. But the wreckage of the spacecraft outside with a large number of explosives almost blocked all possibilities of using spacecraft for rescue. Moreover, the current communication between the space station and the outside world has been completely disconnected due to power outage. And it is impossible to confirm the status of personnel on the space station. So Jing not only turned the space station into an iron sh. L tortoise. But also a barbed iron sh. L tortoise. Even if this ironclad bastard moves even slightly. There is a chance that it will explode directly. Not to mention rescue operations. Just dealing with the actions of leftist elements is very troublesome. Chin Ming also thought about simply giving up all the researchers above. 
and only dealing with the left path. Even so, any unexpected situation may cause the entire space station to be completely scrapped. So there is no need to think about extra bonuses. It's no wonder that Qin Ming's fleet came here several days after the bounty was issued. And no one is still here to continue processing this thing. This is a really troublesome bounty. But during the recent period, I don't know if Qin Ming killed too many pirates or something. In short, there was no news about new pirates from Glasses and Lao Wu. This group of Zhu Jing is already the only criminal in the area with a large reward. The remaining pirates are either too far away or the bounty is too low. The most they can earn from a trip is fuel money. So now Chen Ning did not give up immediately, but stared at the space station inside at the edge of the galaxy. He didn't believe that he had no stable way to deal with this space station. For this reason, Chen Ming deliberately put aside his studies temporarily. Gamma B and I stared at the space station and the data scanned back by the sensors for several hours. During the process, his fleet circled the galaxy several times. Unexpectedly, he bumped into the Harmony Company's fleet that came for patrol every day. The other party had also heard about Qin Ming and knew that Qin Ming's fleet had significantly improved the security of the entire Edge Star Field during this period. Therefore, after the Harmony Company's ship confirmed that the interior of the galaxy had been scanned several times by Qin Ming and that it was safe, it acted very enthusiastically when it came up. They directly sent some of the information they had just collected yesterday that had not yet been shared. They even provided Qin Ming with a more detailed design blueprint of the space station than the space station map they released. Then they ran away so as not to disturb Qin Ming. With a blueprint and a few hours of observation by Qin Ming, hard work pays off. Qin Ming finally discovered that most of the sensor array on one side of the space station was damaged, and only a small part was still working. Although the remaining sensors can definitely detect obvious things like the spacecraft engine, other things may not necessarily be detected. So Chen Ning calculated the orbit at a certain distance outside the galaxy, relying on Chao Fan beside him, a monster whose computing power reached the star level, directly relying on his improvised acceleration device. He threw a robot carrying a gamma core in the direction of the space station. It smoothly passed through all the explosives distributed around the space station, avoiding the scanning of many of the sensors that had been damaged. Then he found a gap in the outer wall of the space station. Then, there is no more. The reward ended when Qin Ming came into contact with the space station's wiring. Not counting the way here. It starts from Qin Ming's arrival at the edge of the galaxy and ends with his robot contacting the space station. Total time spent is 5 hours. 4 of those hours were spent observing the situation. 59 minutes waiting for the robot to speed up and fly over. The rest of the problem solving took a total of 1 minute. Qin Ming originally thought that there would be a fight between a spaceship and a miniature space station. But it did not happen. After the space station was completely controlled by Chen Ming. Chen Ming can also control all inanimate things on any space station. Naturally, these include powerful explosives that are spread throughout almost all areas of the space station and can definitely blow up the space station completely. Chen Ming instantly dismantled all dangerous things on the space station, including these explosives, and dismantled all weapons, armor, and clothing in the hands of leftist elements. Then he took over and repaired the control center of the space station that was destroyed by left-wing elements. Successfully took control of the entire space station and sealed off all rooms where leftists were present. A few of these leftists who have lost all their weapons and have no ability to resist want to commit suicide. But it was immediately completely enveloped by the metallic liquid surging out of the wall next to it, tightly restricting all movement. Even if he wanted to bite his tongue and commit suicide, Chin Ming filled his mouth with metallic liquid and solidified it directly. He couldn't even close his mouth, let alone commit suicide. If he had the ability to hold his breath to the point of committing suicide, he would be considered awesome. And Chin Ming admired him. In short, not one of the hundreds of left-wing elements on the entire space station was able to perform any act of resistance under Chin Ming's spiritual power. As for those researchers caught by Zhu Jiao, all I can say is that Chin Ming expressed regret. These people on the space station obviously had no intention of leaving alive from the moment they occupied the space station. And the teachings of this cult are destined that researchers like them will never be treated normally. Therefore, Chen Ning could only help control the leftists next to the six remaining researchers on the space station who had not been able to escape and hid in a safe living area. I accidentally modified a few pistols that were accidentally loaded with bullets nearby. Then he guided them to a safe living area a few minutes later. There at least they can get treatment from their colleagues and medical robots. At this point, the entire reward is completely over. However, 
As soon as the matter ended, Chen Ming did not directly contact the people from He Company whom he had just met. Instead, I plan to spend some time studying this plant research station. He came with the idea that if he didn't take something away, it would not be a waste of his ability. Chen Ming relied on his spiritual power to control all the equipment on the space station and figured out the situation of the Plant Research Institute. After all, it took him a lot of energy to control a space station that was as large as two or three cruisers. It would be a waste not to take advantage of the fact that he hadn't signed an agreement with Harmony Company to earn some benefits. Although a lot of research equipment was destroyed by the left path of the space station, Chen Ning could still tell that it was a large plant research and cultivation laboratory. Most of the research here is about crops that can be grown commercially in batches. But what surprised Chen Ming was that the core of the entire research station's overall work was a laboratory in the central area of the space station. At the door of this laboratory, there are several biohazard icons with yellow background and black characters that are uncomfortable to look at. In this laboratory, Chen Ming unexpectedly discovered something special. No, it's a group of purple fungal creatures being cultivated. It is not accurate to say that they were cultivated because they had escaped from the damaged culture room, killed several left-wing molecules that destroyed the culture room, and began to grow disorderly. When Chen Ming looked over, these purple fungi appeared almost everywhere in the laboratory, especially concentrated in the cultivation observation room inside the laboratory. All the other petri dishes in the laboratory that were specially used to cultivate various organisms were eaten clean. However, the fungus did not move on the corpses killed by the fungus. It even kept a certain distance from the corpse and did not grow on them. I don't know if it has something to do with the black-red blood mixed with some dead purple fungi flowing out of the eyes, nostrils, corners of the mouth, and ears of these corpses. The most special thing about these purple fungi is they are psychic creatures. Through the gamma core, Chen Ming could feel extremely obvious spiritual energy fluctuations on them. Chen Ming didn't react at first because he had been exposed to a lot of things related to psychic energy recently and it seemed like a coincidence that he came across another one. But when he thought about it carefully, it didn't seem so unreasonable. After all, he came here following the traces of the Zhu path. In Chen Ming's impression, the things he encountered several times related to Zhu Jing seemed to be a bit special. The first time was when he went to participate in an auction where the government and Xindao company cooperated to catch left-track fish. And that time he just got involved. The next few times seemed to have happened because Zhu Jing took the initiative to come to him as a psyker. In a sense, wherever there is a left path, there is psychic energy. So this time Chen Ming took the initiative to follow Zhu Jing and encountered a psychic creature, which didn't seem to be unacceptable. On the computer in this laboratory, Chen Ming just happened to find the research records and all the research documents of this group of fungal psychic creatures. The origins of these psionic fungal creatures are also documented. It was a psychic creature found underground a few months ago when Harmony's main company, the mining company, was developing a planet's mineral veins. The boss of Harmony Company knew the boss. So it was normal for him to have the ability to capture this psychic creature. A month ago, Harmony Company intercepted some samples of this group of psychic creatures that had been studied for some time and sent them here. I want to study whether the special optical radiation band of the stars in this galaxy will have any special impact on it. Although the document states that it is a secret transportation, Zwijia will appear here to snatch the space station. It can only be said that the secret transportation does not seem to be so secret after all. There must be people who believe in the left path have been mixed into the company. And there is a high probability that they are on the space station. Chen Ning couldn't figure out why. If we talk about some mining planets, even the mining space stations where he once stayed, he can understand that there are leftists on these places. After all, this kind of work is extremely hard and difficult. But in a mental workplace, like the plant research station, the average IQ of the researchers there is higher than that of ordinary people. Right? Can this still be penetrated? Can't figure it out. Forget it. If you don't understand it, don't do it. In short, Zhu Jing knew that there were some psychic creatures here that didn't seem to be strictly guarded. And then, they came over to cause trouble. As a result, they didn't know how to take these psychic creatures away so they could only occupy the space station and wait for orders from their superiors. Although it seems so, but the reality is different than it seems. Chen Ning learned the actual situation from the data read from a terminal that looked like the one in their leader's hands before it was dismantled. Zhu Jing actually wants to do something big. After all, they can see the big words, biohazard, posted on the door of the laboratory. 
and the orders their leaders received from their superiors were even clearer. This kind of psychic fungal creature is extremely contagious and harmful. It once caused a lot of damage when the Harmony Company captured it. If left unattended, it will be very harmful. That's why Zhu Jing focused on this dangerous creature. On the contrary, they also hope that someone will directly send a team to land on the space station so that they can have a chance to spread the fungus. That's the idea of Left Path. And they had personally experienced the horror of fungi when they first destroyed the fungus culture room in the laboratory. As long as someone actually lands on the space station, they will open the closed laboratory door as soon as possible and use their bodies as a carrier to infect the people who log in. It's simply an interpretation of madness to the extreme. But for Chen Ming, everything was in vain. All Zhu Jing's arrangements were resolved one by one by Chen Ming, which only wasted a few hours of his time. As for the fungi that escaped, Chen Ming used transformation technology to physically change the appearance of the entire laboratory. With the metallic liquid that filled the entire laboratory, all the psychic fungi covering the laboratory environment were gathered together and stuffed back into the culture room and repaired the damaged places and equipment in the culture room. The environment was restored to its original state in just a few minutes. Chen Ming even used psychic energy to confirm whether there were fungal spores elsewhere in the space station. Although these things are invisible to the naked eye, Chen Ming's psychic powers are still very effective against these psychic creatures and can easily detect them. But what surprised Chen Ming was that the person in Zhu Jing seemed to have some brains. Fungal spores are not released directly into the air circulation system. After preventing people from dying, other people felt that the space station was hopeless. So they directly blew up the space station, causing their plan to fail. The researchers in the company must be more aware of the dangers of fungi escaping after people die than they are. The lesser of the two powers. Their final outcome may be to become dust in the universe together with the space station and these fungi. So at least for now, Chin Ning's psychic power has not discovered that these psychic fungi exist anywhere on the space station except in the laboratory. So at this point, Chin Ming has conveniently solved the problems left by Zhu Jing. Chin Ming's attention was naturally attracted by these psychic fungal creatures. Although Chin Ning wanted to pack up the entire culture room and take it away, there were many devices connected throughout the laboratory to limit these dangerous fungal organisms. And digging out the entire lab seemed a bit much. However, Chin Ming was still happy to take away some samples. Anyway, it's an unspoken rule to go along the way when doing this kind of mission. As long as you don't go too far, no one will pursue it. What's more, Chin Ming was very considerate in collecting all the fungi that escaped and also blocked the gap in the culture room. Harmony Company had to thank him. So Chin Ming took away some live samples of fungi with peace of mind, as well as some samples of shriveled fungi and shriveled fungal spores that were stored in special containers in the laboratory and sent the completely sealed storage container containing the samples to his fleet, which had successfully eliminated the minefields around the space station and approached the space station, although Chen Ming didn't know what use this biological weapon of mass destruction had for him. But in short, take it first, and you will know later whether it is of any use. Even if these psychic fungi have no ability to be used as weapons, even if they eat and sleep all day long and run around the spaceship like Xiao Shi, who is also a psychic creature, it is not a loss to carry them around. What's more, Chin Ming also has a Chao Fan who is responsible for research. Although Chao Fan is not a researcher in this area, Chao Fan is already bored enough to accompany him to study cruiser level technology. It seems that it is not impossible to study the creatures next door. Of course, Chin Ming also hoped to get guidance from Chao Fan in biotechnology, who would definitely learn faster than him. In short, Chao Fan did agree. Although the process is a little twisty. At first, even though it had been bored out of its wits for the past two days. It didn't want to agree at all. But when Chen Ming mentioned that this thing was a psychic creature, Chao Fan swallowed back what he said before. After confirming that nothing happened here on the space station, Chen Ming first asked the fleet to detach a fleet to send away the psychic fungi. Then I contacted the people at the company again. Then he asked Lao Wu to help him go to the capital of the Star Territory. With the help of the company and his boss, they each found an official to witness and signed a contract restricting Chen Ming's subsequent use of psychic energy on the space station. Of course, let's forget about the past. Harmony Company would certainly be able to see that Chen Ming had taken some samples. But they could also see the repaired culture room. So they might as well just pretend it didn't happen, and it would be better for everyone. They also chose to pay in full the rewards for protecting their research results. In the end, the bounty Chen Ming received was in addition to the 1 billion 
that almost all the leftists were captured alive. There are also 300 million people with little damage to the space station, 500 million to protect the research results. And most ordinary researchers and a few important researchers on the space station were not injured or killed. And the final 600 million were obtained. Total 2.4 billion. It can be regarded as filling the gap that Xinming purchased a large amount of industrial equipment and research equipment some time ago. The harvest of psychic creatures that Xin Ming accidentally obtained on the space station was not delivered to him until today. It can only be said that the transportation of biological things is still quite troublesome for Xin Ming. But the result of waiting also made Xin Ming completely accept the process of waiting. After Chao Fan started studying biology from scratch like Xin Ming two days ago, he is now able to investigate the data Xin Ming obtained at the plant research station. It will take about another week to give Xin Ming a definite answer and analysis report. Chapter 183 The Past Week Upon the arrival of a completely sealed ship carrying the psionic fungal creatures, Chin Ming besides transferring it to Chao Fan. He also transformed some research equipment that he purchased a few days ago that were the same type as the research equipment he saw at the plant research station into the spacecraft that transported psychic fungi. It was handed over to Chao Fan to assist it in biological research. As for the first batch of research equipment that Chin Ming bought, it can only be said that it may be because he bought too much and the supply was not enough. So it has not yet been sent to the boss. We can only let Chao Fan wait for two more days. After completing this matter, Chin Ming had finally finished dealing with the matter of the left path occupying the space station. Then he picked up the terminal again and began to record other things that happened in the past week. Chin Ming has now developed a habit of recording some important things regularly to avoid forgetting them suddenly in the future. By the way, it can also remind him of what he needs to do every week, such as providing the boss with the highest operating data that Xiao Yang needs. And this past week, except for the day before when Xin Ning went to play with Zhuijing, he was very busy at other times, especially learning. In the past week, every morning during the day was a high-intensity military command course taught by Bai Quan himself. In fact, according to Bai Quan's original plan, Xin Ming needed to learn commanding techniques from him all day long. But because on the first day, Chen Ming spent one day successfully learning the content that might have taken a week to learn in the Bai Quan plan. So, although Bai Quan also believed that Chen Ming did not have the various foundations of militarized management and command in the military academy, so he put a lot of basic content in the textbook. But Bai Quan was very surprised that Chen Ming's learning efficiency was so outrageous. So much so that Bai Quan wanted to directly speed up the entire learning process. But Chen Ming did not agree. Because on the first day, he wanted to confirm his efficiency in command learning through a day of study, so that he could replan his previously arranged schedule and try to keep the progress of the three aspects he currently wanted to learn basically consistent. After all, he had to learn how to conduct. But he certainly couldn't leave behind other things. You have to learn cruiser-level technology. And you have to learn the basics of biology. Over the years, Chin Ning has almost forgotten the biology he learned before. He has never been exposed to biology since college and there is nothing in his memory. Everything has to be patched up. Bai Quan wants to speed up the command course to squeeze out all his time. Therefore, Chen Ming's last request was that within the limited time he planned for one day, that is, one morning, Bai Quan could teach as much as he wanted and cram in as much as he wanted. He studied as hard as he could, and he had other uses for the rest of his time. At that time, Bai Quan seemed to have assumed the role of instructor, and asked, You can leave everything to your Yu Wei to handle. Right. What else do you have to do? So Chen Ming packed up all the things he wanted to learn, including spaceships, biotechnology, and various documents that Chao Fan wrote specially for Chen Ming to learn cruiser technology and transform the spacecraft, and sent them to Bai Quan. Then Bai Quan had no objection. So Chen Ming was a little miserable because of the intense study every morning these days. However, being able to feel my progress during the learning process can make up for the painful feeling. In addition, Bai Quan specifically asked Chen Ming what he was doing studying biology. Then Chen Ming said that he should know about it after a while. If Chen Ming remembers correctly, Bai Quan will definitely know about it within this month. Of course, Chen Ming was not referring to the biological spacecraft. The bioship is too important and bizarre, and too closely related to the Zerg, to be exposed now. What he was referring to was the large-scale cultivation of crystal crabs that would definitely be carried out after his colony was established. This is a long-term process that Chen Ming will use for his own use and maintain contact with the Empire to a certain extent. After all, 
Chen Ning couldn't really rely on himself to earn the supplies needed to maintain a colony. Nor could he really rely on the support of his boss. Colonies must have their own industries. Then Chen Ning didn't know what kind of colony he could find. The crystal crab, which has been cultivated by Yu Wei and can be mass-produced and reproduced on a certain scale, and is not yet available in the empire, is obviously a very good choice. It just so happens that the boss now has two crystal crabs and two eggs that Chen Ning gave to the boss as souvenirs. The boss will definitely give the pair of energy crystal crabs to Bai Quan during Bai Quan's promotion ceremony later. Chen Ning had previously heard from Bai Quan that he invited his boss to attend the promotion ceremony. And his boss agreed. Although Chen Ning initially gave the crystal crab to his boss, he actually had no intention of letting his boss take it out during the promotion ceremony. But since it happened to be at this time, even if Chen Ming didn't mean it, he still had to mean it. By then, it would make sense for Chen Ming to study biotechnology. And Bai Quan would naturally not think too much about it. He would only think that Chen Ming wanted to use this opportunity of the 14th Legion to help publicize the existence of crystal crabs in advance. Chen Ming doesn't have to worry about the two crystal crabs and the two eggs causing the crystal crab cultivation method to be leaked. Yu Wei had been researching for so long before he was able to stably cultivate crystal crabs in an artificial environment. The empire only has two crystal crabs and two eggs for research. So it's impossible to make it faster than afterglow. Even if it were really possible. For example, if there were some great biological researchers in the empire who relied on cloning technology to mass breed crystalline crabs for research. Maybe the results would really come out. But Bai Quan will definitely help contain this matter. And will never give others the opportunity to learn more about it and obtain crystal crab samples. After all, Chen Ning wants to take advantage of the opportunities provided by the Bai Quan 14th Army to expand the spread of his future colonial industry. So he will definitely need to give Bai Quan some benefits. Bai Quan can benefit from it himself. So why should others get a share of the pie? It would be better to say that it is possible for the 14th Legion to conduct internal research on crystal crab technology. However, this also means that Chen Ming and the 14th Legion will conflict and their relationship will become very bad. The benefits of a crystal crab and the friendship of a psyker. Bai Quan can definitely make a reasonable choice. But this is what happens in the future. The specific date of the promotion ceremony in Bai Quan has not been announced yet. And Chen Ming's colony is still far away. We can talk about everything later. In short, Chen Ming now has nothing but conductor study at Bai Quan in the morning. The cruiser skills I learned in the afternoon also improved by leaps and bounds under the extraordinary guidance. At least now, Chen Ning has no problem with the basic knowledge of the cruiser class some basic transformations that break through the output limits of the power grid under normal circumstances can be carried out at any time. It can only be said that Chen Ming still prefers this kind of overclocking modification he learned from Zhu Jing, because his ability can ensure his safety after overclocking the spacecraft. Therefore, such transformation has almost no negative effects on Chen Ming. Even Chen Ming has recently asked Lao Wu to collect some information about the left path, preferably about their strange technology for ship modification. Although the teachings of the Luddites are extremely averse to technology, they have made good progress in carrying out destruction or some extreme technologies. Chen Ning can definitely try to recreate it. During the day, Chen Ning was learning command skills and ship technology. Every night, Chen Ming spends time studying biological technology. Due to the recent increase in the number of machines he controls, his learning efficiency has also increased significantly, and he still has some vague memories about the subject of biology in his mind. Chen Ming spent three days remastering everything from elementary school to high school. In the remaining four days of the past week, I was studying some other basic subjects required for biotechnology starting at the university level. And I am currently almost one third of the way through. Once he has mastered the subject at the university level, Chen Ming can then study biotechnology in more depth. Chao Fan even relied on his more exaggerated learning efficiency than Chen Ming to master more advanced biotechnology faster than Chen Ming. So it directly helped Chen Ming plan the path Chen Ming would take in biology. By the way, he also helped Chen Ming think about some biotechnologies that Chen Ming must master in advance. It is the biotechnology that allows Chen Ming to transfer the insect queen to him wherever he needs it. Two in total. One is a biomass clump. A solid material formed by condensation of high concentration biomass belonging to the Zerg race. It is used by Chen Ming to use the honeycomb network to transmit the queen. Supplement the queen with nutrients and cultivate the Zerg. It is equivalent to a kind of compressed biscuit exclusive to the Queen of Worms. The second type is SH. Lack. This is the food of the Zerg and the fuel for the Zerg creatures. 
Ordinary Zerg do not have a rigid digestive sac that can eat anything like the queen. Therefore, ordinary Zerg must eat normal food, animal carcasses, or various plants. Or Thorn Zerg SH. Lack produced by a specialized trophic insect within the Zerg. In other words, as long as Chen Ming can come up with these two technologies, you can rely on these two abilities and some body tissues of the insect queen. Create a Zerg army with sufficient combat capabilities in any place. As long as he can bring the insect queen's consciousness to him through the hive network and provide enough nutrition, the insect queen will help Chen Ming take care of the rest. Therefore, Chen Ming's next plan for biology is to only learn the knowledge points related to these two technologies and not learn the others for the time being. He will figure out how to make up for it later. It can only be said that the Zerg are indeed in a little trouble. After all, they are living creatures, completely different from the mechanical race next door that can also be transmitted through the hive network. Although the machine race itself is indeed relatively complex, especially the core chips, secondary cores, and nanorobots that are most critical to maintaining the operation of the machine race, especially nanobots. Chen Ming's technology has been moving toward macro technologies such as cruisers and battleships. Micro technologies such as nanorobots can only be said to be completely confusing. Fortunately, nanorobots are a detachable component for the mechanical race as a whole. So Chen Ming does not actually have to master the technology of nanorobots to create a mechanical race. Remove the components from the corpses of other mechanical clans. And then reinstall them. If it doesn't work, Chen Ning simply won't install these nanorobots. His own psychic powers can replace the functions of these nanobots. As for the design of the machine tribe itself, it can only be said that the Empire has integrated many designs of the machine tribe into the Empire's own related textbooks on the way to development. For Chen Ming, it is not difficult to learn. Therefore, the mechanical race's reliance on his spiritual energy for teleportation was realized much earlier than the Zerg race's reliance on his spiritual energy for teleportation. But there are always things about living things that machines cannot match. Therefore, even if Chen Ming's progress in learning Zerg-related biotechnology is very slow, he can still accept it. Anyway, he only spent a relatively short period of time in the evening. The total time spent in the morning. Afternoon and evening during the day is not short at all. It can even be said to be fully arranged. It really put a lot of pressure on Chen Ming. But once you get used to it, the rest won't matter. And although he was very busy, Chen Ming still managed to find time to visit the galaxy where Chen Ming's afterglows discovered habitable planets last week and entered the atmosphere of the habitable planet. During the study, he was distracted and controlled the highest point to conduct several high power scans of the planet. Robots controlled by Yu Hui were even arranged to conduct multiple surveys at different longitudes and latitudes on the planet's soil, water quality, atmosphere, and various local organisms. The final result can only be said that the planet is not bad. This habitable planet is not as dangerous as Ruemu and can be judged as a level 4 planet. But the galaxy where the planet is located is not very good. According to the survey data of other planets in the galaxy that Chen Ning sent to his boss, the boss responded that it was barely possible to assign this galaxy to level 3 because, except for the habitable planet, there were almost no resources that could be developed in the galaxy. I can only say it's a pity, but it's still okay. Anyway, Chen Ming doesn't plan to build a colony here. Someone will always be interested in a level 4 habitable planet there. This is the same even if this galaxy is outside the afterglow star field. Because Chen Ming heard some special news from Lao with these days. The Empire has been in a stalemate on the front line with Yuhui headquarters for a long time, and seems to have plans to put its focus in the direction of the Gala Star territory. Chen Ming still remembers clearly what Hui Wang once said to Chen Ming. The moment the Empire really turns its iron fist here, it will be the moment when the final countdown of Yuhui's life in this star field begins. If the afterglow here is eliminated, then the star field outside itself has value. But because of the existence of the afterglow, the value of galaxies that are not that high will naturally return to the price they should be at. But one thing is clear to Chen Ming. That is, any slight movement in such a huge empire will definitely take a lot of time. The empire didn't start attacking this afterglow star field so quickly. So Chen Ming still has some time to do something with his Yu Wei individuals, who barely survived the internal massacre by Yu Wei. Of course not now. Now he still has things to do to study, develop and build colonies. As for the planet data collected by Chen Ming, during the development process. The boss will collect it first, and will not sell it immediately. The boss will wait until Chen Ming continues to develop and Yu Wei and Ren are gone before processing this batch of data, which will not affect Chen Ming's work. 
except last week Chen Ming's afterglow was surveying the surrounding galaxies. In the past week, Chen Ming's afterglow continued to explore the outside world. And just at the beginning of last week, the construction of the starport over the temporary base had just been completed. Under the brilliant planning, the entire starport can carry the upper limit of the number of spacecrafts that are constantly taking off and landing. In the past week, all galaxies with the possibility of habitable planets within a full 110 light years surrounding Chen Ming's temporary base have been investigated. The efficiency can be said to be very high, although the efficiency will definitely decrease as the exploration distance increases later. And in some places, hyperspace channels have appeared that need to be opened up by Chen Ming's highest point before they can be dredged. Continuing outward, the possibility of encountering hyperspace clouds blocking the channel will become higher and higher. After that, the highest point may have to be responsible for helping open the way for the spacecraft behind it 24 hours a day. But fortunately, there is an autopilot system at the highest point, and there is Chow Fan staying on the spaceship, so there shouldn't be any big trouble. As for the declining efficiency, Jin Ning can only say that this is also a part that must be experienced on the road to development. Just get used to it. And during this week, we were exploring the 110 light year surroundings of the temporary stronghold. The results of the investigation by the Afterglow individuals were still the same as last week, which was not very satisfactory. Even though the search distance has more than doubled, the search scope has expanded several times. In the end, Chin Ning found only one habitable planet. However, there are four other planets with open pit mine veins that can be easily discovered. Together, these four planets almost perfectly cover the mineral veins of iron, aluminum, tungsten and other basic metals that will be greatly needed to build colonies after Chen Ming. Chen Ming even found a high-grade metal material, solid gold, on a planet. It is a synthetic material that is also an advanced material, called gold crystal, and is often used in high-precision sensors on various combat types of spacecraft. The demand is big or small. Or small. It looks okay. But that's about it. After all, the several hundred light years of a limit jump plus the more than 100 light years that Chen Ming explored were not far from the Empire's border in a practical sense. And in such a place where the Empire border, the Afterglow border, and the Machine Race border meet, a planet with good things should have been discovered long ago. The previous planet with an independent mechanical race was an unexpected surprise. For now, we can only say that if we have collected planet data and can judge the value, we will be successful. Although there are not many valuable planets. When Chen Ming went to the planet discovered last week, he also visited several valuable planets and galaxies discovered this week. With automatic driving and transcendence, Chen Ming doesn't need to worry about anything. And although it is impossible for him to invest too many resources in mining these mineral veins that Chen Ming needs, but leaving some open pit mining equipment and afterglow individuals on these mineral vein planets, and mining some open pit mineral veins on a small scale is always no problem. The difficulty of mining open pit veins is low, and Chen Ming provides various remote supports. Mining never loses money. Moreover, Chen Ming has almost learned some simple basic equipment used in the colony in the past few days. He can even directly transform industrial equipment on site by relying on those afterglow individuals and provide remote supply of maintenance and fuel purely through spiritual energy. Even simply exchanging some fuel and mental power for some high grade mineral veins would not be a loss for Chen Ming. When Chen Ming makes the next extreme distance jump and is ready to leave, and when his boss sells the data on the galaxy and planet, he will remove the equipment here. Anyway, the equipment will be dismantled and taken away, and the materials will be directly transformed and transported. For the Yuhui individuals here, it's okay to just let them drive the spaceship back by themselves, or Huiao can pick them up, if he encounters the same resource planet that can be easily exploited in the future. Chen Ning will treat it the same way. Chen Ming always felt uncomfortable if he didn't pick up something when passing by. Except for the four planets with open pit mines. That habitable planet is quite special. Because this is a planet dominated by large arthropods. To put it simply, it is a planet that is similar to the ancient Earth. But the main species are not dinosaurs, but insects. Chen Ming made special arrangements personally and spent some time catching dozens of giant insects of various shapes. Ready to feed them to the queen. In the past few days, the insect queen is still on the planet of the mechanical tribe, continuing to expand the scope of the population and its territory by devouring various creatures on the surface and underground and all kinds of things it can digest. In the past few days, in addition to controlling the mechanical clan every day, 
Jin Ning was also trying to communicate with the Insect Queen to see if he could let it actively evolve some abilities. Although the Insect Queen's conscious reply was a bit vague, Jin Ning still understood its meaning. The Thorn Zerg species are very powerful, and the source of their power is their special evolutionary ability. The most important way to display this evolutionary ability is through combat. During the battle, some Zerg individuals will show evolution adapted to combat. These evolutions will be extracted, saved, and recorded by the Zerg Queen, and then applied to every Zerg individual. The other kind is actually related to combat. Zerg will instinctively release the abilities contained in their genes during battle, showing powerful traits deep in their genes. As for the origin of the traits in these genes, there is only one. Eat. Chapter 180 for the second cocoon of the Insect Queen. For the Zerg, the parts of the genes of all the creatures that are eaten that are useful to the Zerg will be preserved in the Zerg's own genes. The Zerg can evolve these traits. Of course, these traits can also choose not to evolve according to the will of the Insect Queen who controls the Insect Colony. Or they can be displayed individually in a certain type of insect individual. Even the Insect Queen can take back all these characteristics of the Zerg that have evolved related traits. Zerg are exoskeleton creatures after all. It is assumed that a certain kind of bird has a hollow skeleton. An innate characteristic that is one of the foundations of bird flight. If the Zerg eat this kind of bird and then evolve this kind of skeleton, will their lives be lost? However, even if the traits are controlled and withdrawn by the queen, the things contained in the insect's genes will not change. Everything is hidden deep in the genes, including of course the hollow skeleton genes that Chin Ning hypothesized. It's just that as the complexity of genes increases, the genes in front of the Zerg will become difficult to mine. And as the Zerg community expands and reproduces, many queens will gradually lose their memory of these genes during iterations. It will be even more difficult to evolve various genetic shapes that may have evolved due to the external environment. The genetic insect queen that has just been eaten recently can evolve at will. But the genes that were once hidden deep in the genes, it can only rely on the stimulation of the external environment to allow the insect queen to first find the existence of these genes on a certain individual and then express these genes on all Zerg individuals, just like combat, or extremely harsh and harsh environments. Fortune Ming, there is a third way to evolve the Zerg, which is to use his psychic power to retrace his genes once a month. However, in a practical sense, this should be regarded as the second method, which extracts the traits inherent in the gene, but the efficiency can only be said to be unflattering. In short, when Chen Ming learned that there were these large insects on the habitable planet, he took the initiative to send Yuhui to catch a bunch of them. Jin Ming's idea is simple. Anyway, the Zerg can obtain genes by eating it. There is no problem that the genes just obtained are contained in complex gene chains. The Zerg Queen can evolve at any time. Then simply find more creatures to feed the insect queen. Like the giant bugs on the habitable planet that Jin Ming caught last week. Some of the unique creatures found on the habitable planet last week. They were all fed to Jin Ming to the queen of insects. Once valuable genes are extracted, evolve them. And if they are of no value, leave them alone. Even if this leads to an increase in genetic complexity, the traits evolved in combat are themselves designed to adapt to combat. Zerg individuals that cannot evolve suitable traits, or evolve traits that will affect combat traits, should have died long ago. And although the Zerg have been coming here for so many years, but since they were forcibly killed by humans and became endangered creatures, it has been proven to a certain extent that their evolutionary ability is definitely not feasible with specialized targeted methods. With the lessons learned from the past, Chin Ming felt that it would be better to use more scientific methods to evolve the Zerg. Just wait until he has enough ability in biotechnology to analyze and test the Zerg genes. Directly use physical means to extract Zerg genes. Analyze the abilities contained in each gene fragment. Select the useful ones. And then let the insect queens extract and evolve from their own genes. What Chin Ming is learning now is also the crystallization of the Empire's biotechnology. Since the Empire was once able to specifically target the Zerg race and kill them until they were on the verge of extinction. Correspondingly, in terms of cultivation, the Zerg race will surely gain new brilliance. Although Chen Ming cannot do this now, he will always be able to do it in the future as his study of biotechnology deepens. And he always feels that compared to relying on the Zerg itself to evolve in battle, direct feeding and nearby evolution are actually more efficient. Moreover, it can satisfy his ideas to a certain extent. After Chin Ming learned about the laws of Zerg evolution from the Insect Queen, he already had several special ideas about the Zerg. For example, he fed the quite large number of crystal crabs he had on hand to a few Insect Queens. 
as long as the energy crystal crab eats normally. It can use its own secretions to create a self-storage material on its back that naturally contains energy. At the same time, this kind of crystallized carapace is also an ordinary energy storage material of extremely high quality, which is even more useful than various artificial materials and artificial devices. It's just that the crystal crab is an omnivorous creature, and its usual diet mainly consists of various rocks and mosses in caves, so its eating efficiency is extremely low. The zerg are just the opposite. They can eat anything, and the zerg itself has something similar to a crystal crab carapace. That is, the biomass stored after digestion and transformation by the queen worms. If the zerg absorbed the genes of the crystal crabs, Chen Ming would not dare to think about the advantages that would come from combining the two. Another idea Chen Ming had was the altar and sky eel, the source of sky steel. Sky steel, which can be said to be the most top-notch material among advanced materials, is a necessity for manufacturing hyperspace channel systems, and is also a necessity for spacecraft manufacturing. Now that Chen Ming is running around with a bunch of afterglows all over the star field, he needs this kind of material very much. But he did not have a stable source of sky steel. So he had no choice but to buy it at a high price. Although Chen Ming could buy it from Xindao Company based on his relationship with the factory director, the company is currently mainly engaged in arranging the mining space station. They want to rebuild the mining space station at a new location to facilitate the subsequent development of sky steel. Therefore, at present, Xindao Company can only rely on some mining spacecraft to collect a small amount of sky steel. It may not be enough for its own use. And its partners must provide some. Chen Ming definitely has no share. So when a large amount of expenditure needs to be used to purchase sky steel, Chen Ming was thinking, if he could feed the empty fish to the Zerg, would there be some unique output and effects? It's just that empty fish is a little difficult to deal with. At present, Chen Ming only knows of two places where Kongyu exists. One is the galaxy where the mining space station is located, which is managed by the company. The other one is over at Yuwei. They caught several empty fish when Afterglow raided the sector military outpost. Chen Ming knew which galaxy Yu Wei had sent Kong Yu to, but it was not that simple to bring him out. Therefore, Chen Ming has to think about the Kong Yu matter again. Although the two ideas of crystal crabs and empty fish are good, they are not of the combat type. They should not greatly improve the combat ability that the Zerg species needs most. However, Chen Ming has never seen a powerful combat creature with his own eyes. The only powerful creature he had ever seen with his own eyes was the mammoth like black Zerg in the Zerg genes. Of course, Having never seen a powerful creature doesn't mean that Chen Ming doesn't know that there are powerful creatures. Because when he was studying biology, he also knew about many ecological reserves or ecologically protected planets within the empire. These are basically from the empire's pioneering era where planets with unique creatures were discovered and some creatures were included as examples in the empire's biology textbooks. Each of these unique creatures deserves special protection in their own way. For example, Chen Ming knew about a giant butterfly that lives in the atmosphere. Butterfly colonies have the ability to produce auroras on a large scale. Let the entire planet be shrouded in aurora all year round and surrounded by a magnificent environment. Therefore, in addition to being an ecological protection planet, this planet is also a good tourism planet. Although the butterflies on this planet seem to have nothing to do with combat effectiveness, the biology book only gives a brief introduction to this species and does not explain that this butterfly has aggressiveness and strong fighting ability. But if you think about it carefully, you can see that something is wrong. The cause of the aurora is the glow of plasma generated by the ionization reaction of the flow of charged particles entering the planet's magnetic field. It is the same plasma as the plasma burst propulsion and plasma weaponized entanglement on the brilliant class. Therefore, these aurora butterflies actually have the terrifying ability to control powerful charged particle flows and even plasma. Although in the Empire, it became an animal for people to watch in a zoo. But if their genes can be ingested by the Zerg, how can the Zerg evolve? This is just a unique creature that Chen Ning has briefly learned about. Within the Empire, there are many such ecologically protected planets and more unique and powerful creatures. So Chen Ning's current plan is to try feeding the crystal crabs to the queens first to see the effect. Of course, he did so. It was not difficult to send the crystal crab from the temporary stronghold to the insect queen. After confirming that the crystal crab has enough effect, or the insect queen shows some potential, he will try to find other interesting creatures. Of course, it is through serious means. Things like poaching are not popular in the prosperous star field. Even after Chen Ming's fleet visited the space station that was held hostage by Zhu Jing, 
Chen Ning still had some thoughts in his mind about feeding the fungal psychic creatures he had recently acquired to the bugs. We still have to wait for the performance of the insect queen first. And look at the progress of Chao Fan. Let's see what Chao Fan can come up with. See whether it is more valuable to grow the fungus yourself or to feed it to the queen. But just after Chen Ning finished recording what happened to him this week, he suddenly received news from the insect queen. The queen has formed a cocoon. Chen Ning immediately took over a bug in the queen's hive through the Zerg hive mind network. We went to the insect queen's biological spaceship, which no longer needed to be buried deep underground, but nested directly on the surface. The insect queen had already eaten the energy crystal crab a few days ago, but she didn't expect that it would only start to form cocoons now. When Chen Ning observed the current appearance of the insect queen through the Zerg's compound eyes and hive mind network, you can see that it is the same as before. The entire biological spacecraft is wrapped in growth. If you get close to the cocoon, you can hear the heavy and slow heartbeat of the biological spacecraft inside the cocoon. Chen Ming, who had been running around in the past few days to open up a hyperspace channel, made a special trip back to the insect queen to skin the cocoon. The result was the same as last time. The growth that made up the cocoon resisted the scanning of the highest point except for a little bit of the carapace of the biomass spacecraft. Everything further inside was pitch black. It was this darkness that made Chen Ning feel a little more hopeful. After waiting for more than a day, the insect queen made movement again, and it successfully emerged from the cocoon. Although the biomass spacecraft outside the insect queen has not changed much, it is still covered by a streamlined black carapace. However, when Chen Ning was distracted while studying and controlled a bug to enter the interior of the biological spacecraft, Chen Ming discovered that the evolved biological spacecraft was different from the previous one. Originally, there were some fluorescent cocoons inside the biological spacecraft that could provide extremely small amounts of illumination, provide some lighting to the bugs inside the biological spacecraft to illuminate the dim environment inside the spacecraft. Bugs with night vision and thermal vision capabilities only need this little lighting to move freely in the dark environment inside the spacecraft. Now, these fluorescent cocoons have all been replaced by some luminous crystals with bright green colors that always feel full of radiation. Of course, there is no such thing as radiation. These crystals are the biomass converted from the Zerg's digestion and are actually condensed after the insect queen expresses the genes of the unique glands used by crystal crabs to condense their back SH. LS. These things are self-storage materials that can store energy just like the carapace on the back of the energy crystal crab. It's called Thorn Zerg Biomass Energy Crystal. This thing has a unique meaning to Chen Ming because Chen Ning's ability still has an unsolvable problem. Transmission of energy. For Chen Ming, almost any energy storage material, including artificial batteries and other things, as long as he uses spiritual energy to transfer it, all the energy stored inside it will be completely dissipated. Only the only exception. Self-storage materials, which naturally carry their own energy, can still retain energy under the influence of Chen Ming's spiritual energy. Even if the energy is used up, it can be recharged using some ordinary methods. The energy that is subsequently stored can also be transmitted over long distances by relying on the carrier of self-storage materials. According to Chen Ming's previous understanding, the self-storage material of the energy crystal crabs SH. L is already much more powerful than most of the artificial energy storage materials he has learned about. A typical energy crystal crab back SH. I can store two to three times the energy of the same volume of energy storage devices or energy storage materials. And these Zerg energy crystals condensed into glands evolved by the Zerg by absorbing the genes of the energy crystal crabs are even more terrifying. Just pick one up, and it will have five times the energy reserve of the top artificial battery on a cruiser of the same size. At this point, Chen Ning already felt that the name of the batch cultivation plan of crystal crabs he had previously thought about could be changed. Changed to a batch breeding plan for crystal worms. Let the insect queen produce some insects specifically used to produce these insects that can produce energy crystals. Cultivating such insects is definitely simpler than crystal crabs. As only the queen is needed. It is easier to raise than crystal crabs. It can eat anything. If it cannot be eaten, it can be converted into SH. Lack by specialized nutritional insects. Harvesting materials is also easier than the energy crystal crab. And it can even spit out the energy crystals on its own initiative. Just like the Worm Queen had just done, Chen Ning saw that the Insect Queen actively discharged these energy crystals from the flesh and blood of the biomass spacecraft when the brightness of these energy crystals was gradually charged and reached its highest level. Let some bugs responsible for the transportation work be sent to the giant storage bag that has shrunk several times 
because the biomass for storing fluid is no longer needed. Such bugs can be bred and produced in batches, and almost everything can be used as food for the bugs, transformed into bugs with such powerful materials. Chin Ming has already foreseen how important it will be to the development of Chin Ming's colony in the future. As long as the insect queen is around, Chin Ming doesn't even need to be responsible for collecting it. What he has to do is to find ways to put these materials into practical use and use them for trade within the empire in the future. However, it is still early for trade and so on. And studying the practical application of biomaterials does not mean simply replacing batteries with self-storage materials. There are many complex processes involved. Chin Ming is confident that he can achieve results within a year. But don't think about it now. The technical level he currently masters is simply not enough. And Chao Fan also has things to do. So after identifying the insect queen, Chin Ming calmed down and checked to see if there were any new changes in the insect queen. We'll talk about the rest later. After all, Chin Ming still remembered that Sinda Company had just developed an antimatter reactor that was stable in large quantities and more powerful than all the current power generation equipment in the empire. Energy crystals seem to have some wonderful cooperation with antimatter reactors. Therefore, since antimatter reactors have not yet been applied in batches, it is not easy for energy crystallization to be mass-produced yet. Let's talk about the two promising things in the future. On the Insect Queen's biological spaceship, apart from the most obvious changes in the energy crystal, only some structural details have been optimized. The overall changes are not big. It seems that the crystal crab mainly promotes the cocooning and evolution of the Insect Queen. The other creatures that Chen Ming fed to the Insect Queen before were of little use. But when Chen Ming observed the details of the Queen's changes, he suddenly noticed that the insect queen had recalled all the zerg who had gone out to collect various kinds of food and directly absorbed most of the bugs in the nest, leaving only some bugs responsible for the defense of the nest. The insect queen began to cultivate a new generation of zerg with crystal crab genes. Two days passed in the blink of an eye, in the bodies of all zerg individuals, under the control of the zerg queen. An energy crystal that can store a large amount of energy is condensed. It can greatly extend the activity time of all Zerg individuals outside and improve the combat effectiveness of Zerg individuals to a certain extent. There is no doubt that more energy reserves mean a stronger body. However, the condensation of energy crystals may also cause some negative effects. For example, when the Zerg fights with the enemy, the energy crystals on the Zerg corpses may be snatched away, but compared to the negative effects of some additional energy consumption, the improvement in the quality of the entire Zerg race is obviously more important. And sufficient energy means that the speed of Zerg expansion will increase again. The speed of evolution of the Insect Queen will definitely accelerate again. Chin Ming is looking forward to the day when the Insect Queen evolves into a cruiser. If necessary, he can even actively sacrifice a cruiser. Just like the mother of the Insect Queen he currently controls. Converting the artificial cruiser into a biological cruiser. Since the day when the insect queen re-evolved the insect nest, another four days passed in the blink of an eye. The research equipment Chin Ming bought before finally arrived. There was absolutely no case where Chin Ming deliberately delayed the progress in order to give Chao Fan time to research biotechnology and had to wait until Lao Wu and others had gathered all the equipment before notifying him, causing delays. In short, Chao Fan has almost studied and understood the situation of this group of fungal psychic creatures in the past week. Therefore, Biological research can indeed be put aside for a while. It is time for Chao Fan to study what it wants to study. Chao Fan's research results were written down by Chao Fan at a level of knowledge that Chen Ming could now understand in biology and sent to Chen Ming's hands. However, Chen Ming did not watch it for the first time, but continued the morning lesson with Bai Quan. It wasn't until noon, when Chen Ming was eating and resting, that he put the terminal with the document open next to him and contacted Chao Fan. But before he even looked at it, Chao Fan came to a direct conclusion and said, These psychic fungal creatures are actually almost harmless to humans. Question mark. What? Chin Ming quickly swallowed the food in his mouth to avoid choking. He had clearly seen these fungi killing several people on the left before. How could they not be harmful? Chao Fan directly adjusted the content on Chin Ming's terminal to a page of photos, which were photos of the damaged culture room in the laboratory that Chin Ming had taken when he controlled the space station. Several dead bodies were lying there. Based on my research, I found that the genes of this psychic creature have been modified by humans. They have been implanted with some special root genes, which are genes that cannot be modified twice. As long as they are modified, the species will die. This gene has only one effect. Human body tissues are highly toxic to them. 
So the spores themselves died after killing those people. And, since they are psychic beings, even fungi do have a modicum of consciousness. They actively move away from things that are dangerous to them. So that's why I think it's almost harmless to people. And look here, Chow Fan explained, marking a special device on the photo. It was this device that emitted a large amount of fungal spores in an instant, causing the death of those few people. Under normal circumstances, the concentration of spores in the air is not high. Once the spores come into contact with human skin tissue or the mucosal tissue of the nasal cavity and oral cavity, they will die directly. Dead fungi may cause some minor illnesses such as upper respiratory tract infections, but they are definitely not fatal. To reach a lethal number of spores, you're almost inhaling pure spores. So I seriously suspect that humans on the space station use special devices to deliberately collect extremely high concentrations of spore clusters for emission. This is an attack method specifically used on that space station to target intruders. Chapter 185 The Process of Exploration Jin Ming frowned slightly and looked at the content on the photo, feeling very confused. It's not because those people's Wu Jing died in the laboratory were killed by the laboratory's protective measures. Rather, it is the quality of this psychic fungal creature that makes human body tissue extremely toxic to them. This trait does not seem to be a naturally occurring trait. Just when Chen Ming was confused, Chao Fan continued to patiently explain to Chen Ming. After excessive absorption of high concentration spore clusters, some fungi will always take root on the corpses of the same kind. Although these spores that enter the human body also died soon after taking root on the corpse, they will continue to adhere to various mucous membranes and cannot be expelled by normal breathing. Those that remain in the lungs cause damage to the alveoli, pulmonary hemorrhage, coughing up blood and suffocation that ultimately led to the deaths of these individuals. It is most likely that the blood leaking out of other parts of the body's tissues will be in a similar situation. There are spores on the mucous membranes of human tissues that have taken root in the same kind of corpses and cannot be excreted. Chin Ming looked at the dead figures on the left side of the photo, and it was indeed exactly the same as what Karen analyzed now. These fungi cannot pose a threat to humans unless they act deliberately. So it is said that Harmony Company transformed the psychic fungi immediately after capturing them. Then the modified fungal organisms were sent to the plant research station in this galaxy. Or do these fungi have this characteristic from the beginning? Chen Ming remembered that the records of the space station laboratory he controlled previously stated that the people of Harmony Company suffered serious losses when capturing this group of psychic creatures. It can't be said that mining people went deep into the ground without any protective equipment and encountered these fungi. And then, they were choked to death by the high concentration of fungal spores underground. Right? These psychic fungus creatures must have been extremely aggressive towards people from the beginning. So they caused losses. That is to say, this trait of human body tissue is highly toxic, is most likely to be acquired later. So Chen Ming asked Chao Fan. Is this kind of root genetic modification a technology currently mastered by humans? Yes. Oh, that's okay. The doubts in Chen Ning's mind were cleared away, and it was certain that it was a trait specially created by Harmony Company. However, Chen Ning still asked curiously, When was this technology developed? Why am I not impressed? Chao Fan sent a paper and the website where it was published to Chen Ming's terminal, and said, Technology from five days ago. It was released by the research institute of that Harmony Company. The paper states that this technology was obtained from the ruins of that destroyed civilization. Oh, is it something found in the ruins of that civilization again? Shen Ming immediately opened the paper, found that he couldn't understand what was written in it, and immediately closed it again. Tisk! Shen Ming smacked his lips and clicked on the endpoint coordinates of the signal sent by the satellite in the orbit of the mechanical planet that he had stored in the terminal. There must be the remains of a civilization there. And such technology may also exist inside. Anyway, the situation has been straightened out. Although the paper was released relatively late. The late release of the paper does not mean that the technology is mastered late. Maybe it's because of this fungal organism that the Harmony Company's Research Institute has completely mastered this technology. Chin Ning regrets that he still needs to continue to develop normally and cannot just drive over with a spaceship. And it's useless to go over it. Searching and investigating the ruins is also a big project. He may not know how much trouble is waiting for him on the road. Even if Chen Ming really solves all the troubles on the road, the language problem will still continue to bother him. So Chen Ning glanced at the coordinate position and adjusted the interface displayed on the terminal back. It was better to advance slowly. If he progresses quickly enough along the way, he might be able to learn a few more things. 
and he will encounter far fewer problems by then. But suddenly Chen Ning realized a problem. He asked Chao Fan. Wait a minute. Chao Fan, your technical level in biology is enough to understand such a cutting-edge paper? Chao Fan suddenly brought back what happened before and said, According to your needs, I planned a learning route for you that will allow you to use psychic powers to bring out the effects of the Zerg. This learning route abandons most of the temporarily unnecessary learning of the same level of technology. Just to achieve your goals, Jin Ming understood instantly and said, So you did the same thing. I don't want to invest too much in biology. What I'm good at is always the research on spacecraft. Also, after Chao Fan figured out the fungus on Chen Ming's hand, there was really no need to continue studying biology in depth. Among its additional alpha core bonuses, there is indeed no bonus related to biotechnology. Studying cruisers was already something it had no choice but to study. If it were allowed to study other creatures for a while, Chen Ming would feel as if he was going to be depressed. But Chen Ming still has a question to ask. Are these fungi useful for anything else? It's edible. What? It's edible. Ah? Uh? Chen Ming asked again and again with some uncertainty. And the extraordinary answers he got were unanimous. But Chen Ning still clearly remembers that he had just seen a biohazard sign painted on the door of that laboratory before. Are these fungi really edible? Chao Fan explained. The direction of cultivation of psychic fungi at Harmony Company's plant research station is food. This fungus reproduces extremely quickly as long as it can grow normally like ordinary mushrooms. Harmony Company can cultivate a kind of psychic food with stable output. Chen Ming carefully considered what Chao Fan said, and it seemed that there was really no problem. Even if the human empire does not openly acknowledge the existence of psychics, Harmony Company cannot directly use psychic food as a name and gimmick to sell it. But since the president and boss of Harmony Company know each other well, their psychic food is not false propaganda, and there will be no shortage of sales after all. So if this psychic fungus can really be cultivated successfully and become psychic food, it is a very high value to Harmony Company. Moreover, Chin Ming just saw it written on the report Chao Fan gave him. The radiation from the stars in the galaxy at the plant research station has a consistent effect on many plants. That is to say, the plants affected by radiation will increase in overall size, have thinner cell walls, and increase intracellular fluid, which means they will change in a direction that is more suitable for eating although fungi are not plants. It is because of those changes in plants. Only Harmony Company will send the fungus here after modification to try it out. The result of the attempt seems to be that there is a real possibility of success. Because Chao Fan discovered it based on the data from the space station that Chen Ming got back. It has been a month since Harmony Company sent the modified fungus to this space station. And it should have been exposed to the stellar radiation. Moreover, the space station has already applied for the next batch of fungi for experiments and it was approved on the same day. If this project does not progress, it will definitely not be so easy to approve psychic fungi. So the fungi may have taken an edible shape. Chin Ming slightly helped his forehead. Sure enough, the fungus should be fed to the queen of insects. However, although he had this idea in his mind, he still asked, Do these psychic fungi have other functions? Chao Fan replied, Basically it only has its own function. As a highly offensive biological weapon, Although this fungus is not harmful to humans, it is highly transmissible and can cause great damage to the host after parasitization. But it also has another very fatal weakness. It is afraid of high-intensity ultraviolet rays. So the location where Harmony Company found it is deep underground. Afraid of UV rays? Chin Ming was stunned for a moment and asked, What about the stellar light? I'm afraid. It's just that the stars in the galaxy at the plant research station are special and the spectrum contains almost no ultraviolet light. So the plant research station can conduct subsequent experiments. Chin Ming instantly frowned and said, It's not even qualified to be used as a biological weapon. If you want to use it as a biological weapon, you must first remove the weakness of fear of ultraviolet rays. Otherwise, as soon as dawn breaks, all the biological weapons will die on their own. In that case, he had to really consider the option of feeding the fungus to the Zerg. Anyway, he could keep some of the samples and consider other uses for these fungi later. But as Chao Fan said, although this thing does not pose a threat to humans, it will still cause big problems if it is released into nature. After all, these fungi are alive and can hide underground, lurking during the day and becoming active again at night. If such a biological weapon were used to attack people, it would be eliminated in minutes. But if it is in nature, it is very harmful to any living creature. Besides, if an organism is parasitized, 
The fungus inside the organism is not afraid of the light from the stars outside. These organisms will become time bomb storing fungi, which is very dangerous. So Chen Ning thought about it and decided to give the insect queen the shriveled sample he had obtained before to eat, which would have a higher safety factor. But at this time, the queen of insects seemed to have learned some of Chen Ning's ideas through the multidirectional hive mind network. There was a hint of resistance from its side. It wants Chen Ning to feed it living psychic fungal creatures. It wants to kill them. To devour them itself. Although Chen Ning didn't know the significance of this, it certainly wouldn't be a big deal if the insect queen was protected by Chen Ning. Even if it didn't work out, he would just put the consciousness of the insect queen back into another body that the insect queen had actively created before. So Chen Ning satisfied the insect queen's idea without much thought. Maybe the insect queen thought the prey she killed with her own hands tasted delicious. However, just in case, Chen Ming asked the insect queen to leave the insect nest temporarily. Keep a distance from the insect nest before eating the fungi sent by Chen Ming to prevent the fungus from spreading and causing problems in the insect nest. Anyway, the only people on the entire planet who can threaten the insect queen are the mechanical tribe. And the mechanical tribe is now all under Chen Ming's control. These mechanical tribes can even protect the insect queen in reverse. So the insect queen will not be in danger even if she leaves the insect nest. Perhaps after the insect queen kills and eats these psychic fungi. After the digestion is completed, the next cocoon and evolution will usher in. That night, it's time for another weekly record. Because of the insect queen, there is a lot more content in this week's record. But other content is slightly reduced. After all, in the past week, Chin Ming mainly studied and took care of things after the insect, and naturally paid less attention to other things. However, Brilliant's exploration of the surrounding galaxies has never stopped. In the past week, two habitable planets and seven or eight planets with open pit mines or other resources were also discovered. Chin Ning can clearly feel that as the scope of exploration expands, the number of valuable galaxies and planets is increasing. It's just that there are still a few things inside, and it's not worth Chin Ming's excessive investment. Go to the livable planet as before and catch some creatures to feed the insect queen. It is enough for the resource planet to leave some simple development equipment and some afterglow individuals to collect resources. In addition to recording the number of these galaxies, the equipment on them, and the afterglow individuals, there's not much else to do. Chin Ming quickly turned off the terminal and lay on the bed. A week goes by in a blink of an eye. It's time for Chin Ming's weekly recording again. The past week was just like the previous week. Everything went according to plan. Chin Ming naturally began to record the important events exploration progress and learning progress of the past week step by step. The important event of this week was that the insect queen successfully used the highly corrosive blood she evolved after being infected by the fungus to kill the psychic fungus in her body and devour the group of psychic creatures when she almost overturned. Entered the evolutionary cocoon again. At this point, Chin Ming finally understood why Chin Ming had to feed the insect queen living psychic fungi. Because being parasitized by fungi is also a battle in a sense. It's just that the battlefield is within the insect queen's body. The insect queen evolved highly corrosive blood during the battle, specifically used to target the fungus parasitizing her body, and finally won the victory. This time, the queen's cocooning process seems to be longer than before. Anyway, the queen formed a cocoon three days ago, and it hasn't reacted until today. But since Chen Ming didn't need to worry about the insect queen's safety, he now hoped that the insect queen's cocooning time would be longer. According to Chin Ming's understanding of the insect queen during this period, the longer the insect queen spends time in cocooning, the greater the degree of evolution, and the stronger the ability she will eventually evolve. Chin Ming wrote down the situation of the insect queen this week before starting to record the progress of this week's exploration. He had another important thing to record. During the day today, when Chin Ming and Bai Quan were in class, Bai Quan suddenly sent an invitation letter to Chin Ming, an invitation letter for his lieutenant general promotion ceremony. This is considered a formal invitation. And it is also a formal process that must be followed. The promotion ceremony will begin in one month, giving everyone invited to participate sufficient time. Although Chen Ming couldn't and couldn't go, he still said curiously at the time, I thought that this kind of formal investiture ceremony would only invite some people with status at most. The 14th Legion is not an orthodox army directly under the empire, but an independent legion. So some of the rules are different from those of the army. And there is a banquet after the ceremony, which is an occasion for communication in itself. After receiving Bai Quan's reply, Chen Ming said no more. Anyway, this promotion ceremony has little to do with him. He has already received the benefits from Bai Quan. 
and the credit belongs to Bai Quan. And it should have nothing to do with Chen Ming. Moreover, it has been almost a month. And Bai Quan has almost approved everything that needs to be approved. The Stardust class is already heading towards the boss carrying the artificial spiritual nerve. It won't take long for Chen Ming to get a new cruiser that can best utilize his spiritual power. And a spiritual nerve that can definitely make his spiritual power further improve. Of course, this incident did not affect Chen Ming. He continued to study normally during the day. When it's time to go to bed at night, it's also a normal record. Anyway, do whatever you have to do. The record is the record. Chen Ning just made a note of this incident. After all, Bai Quan must have been very busy in those days. And the study matters may change a little during those days. Remember in advance so that you won't be in a hurry when the day comes. These are the only two important things worth recording. It's time to record the exploration progress over the past week. In the past week, the afterglow individuals have explored their surroundings for more than 170 light years, which is faster than Chen Ming thought. Chen Ming would drive to the highest point to visit every valuable planet, take away the creature, leave the afterglow, and send back the data. Exploit some easily mined resources by the way. After doing too many repetitive things, the initial freshness wore off, and Chen Ming gradually began to feel bored. That is, if you discover some new species on a planet, you can raise them for the time being and prepare to feed them to the queen later. Chen Ning would then find it a little fun to guess what traits the insect queen could show and what abilities it could have. The learning aspect is the same as last week. Everything is proceeding step by step. There is not much progress. And the progress is not fast. There wasn't much worth recording. So Chen Ning wrote casually and lay on the bed. This week has been a quiet one. Time is like a wild donkey. It runs without stopping. Another week passed during Chen Ming's repeated learning process every day. Nothing important happened this week. And the queen was still in her cocoon. However, Hui Hui has already commanded the afterglow individuals to expand the scope of exploration to more than 200 light years. At this distance, the hyperspace channel has basically been blocked by hyperspace clouds. Chen Ming's highest point needs to open a path first. So that other small ships behind can enter the interior of the galaxy to investigate. It's not a hassle. Just go and fly around. But the development itself was as boring as ever. But from here on, the number of valuable galaxies discovered by afterglow individuals continues to increase. Chen Ning even found sky steel or in a galaxy. Although there are no definite traces of Alcher and sky eels, the existence of sky steel or has proved that there were sky eels living here in this galaxy. Maybe he just went to other galaxies. So Chen Ning asked Hui Wang to increase the exploration of several surrounding galaxies. But so far no trace of Kong Yu has been found. However, besides Kong Yu, there are still other planets worthy of Chen Ming's attention. For example, two planets with high-level resources, and a dozen resource planets with different scales that can easily develop resources. These planets, like the previous planets, were all arranged by Chen Ming to develop resources. There should be more galaxies waiting for Chen Ming to do this. So much so that Chen Ming was thinking about whether he needed to bring back some of the Yuhui individuals who were temporarily stationed on relatively low-value planets to mine resources and move them to other planets. Although it is not needed yet, as Chen Ming continues to explore, jump to the next location, and further expand the scope of exploration. Chen Ming's afterglow will eventually run out. He had to keep some spare. But when Chen Ming and Hui Wang mentioned this, although Hui Wang didn't say it directly, the three minutes of silence made Chen Ming suddenly feel as if a meaningless question had popped up in his mind. In short, this is the overall exploration aspect. And in terms of learning, according to Chao Fan's previous plan, Chen Ning has mastered some biological technologies related to the Zerg by learning only one technology tree. It was the technology for making SH. Lack that Chao Fan specifically specified before. As for another technology of fast condensation of biomass. After the insect queen ate the energy crystal crab and obtained the insect's own energy crystal, Chen Ning no longer had to learn this thing. Biomass agglomerates are fully replaced by energy crystals. Chen Ming just learns the energy crystal technology related to the energy crystal crab that he stole from Yu Hui before. It's okay. Through the body of the insect queen, Chen Ming can directly create everything that needs to be created. In fact, energy crystals also replace the function of SH. Lack to a certain extent. After all, every Zerg has energy crystals in their bodies. Their activity time is greatly extended. And the importance of SH. Lack must also be reduced. However, SH, lack, a common nutritional supplement for the Zerg, was still needed when the Zerg fought for a long time. 
so Chen Ming continued to learn. And by using the body fragments of the insect queen that Chen Ming knocked off from the empty SH. L of the unconscious body left by the insect queen. Chen Ming could directly create SH. Lack around him. To be honest, no matter how you look at this gelatinous bright green food, it makes Chen Ming very appetizing. It usually doesn't smell like much. But when you poke the surface of the gel, a unique aroma inside will leak out. Just like what Chen Ning just made in his hand. Chen Ning has always carried a bit of the insect queen's body tissue with him. It was specially made into a wristband and put on his left hand. Like pieces of pitch black scales covering his wrist. It is convenient for him to use this bit of body tissue to indirectly transform some of the zerg things he needs at any time. Incidentally, it can also help him test his mastery of zerg biotechnology. Just when Chen Ming was recording what happened in the past week. Chen Ning's other hand subconsciously applied it directly. The SH. Lack was produced with a slip of the hand. And a little of the skin was accidentally pinched. Staring at the unique aroma of SH. Lack on his hands. Chen Ming suddenly swallowed his saliva. Chapter 186 New Discovery. The cracked SH. Lack in Chen Ming's hand looks really delicious. And his instinct did not tell him that eating this SH. Lack was dangerous. How about giving it a try? This thought flashed through Chen Ming's mind. He recalled the Zerg research report he had seen before by the scientific research bosses in the empire. The research report records that this kind of Zerg food can also be eaten by humans. And very delicious. And based on experimental records, this thing is basically confirmed to be non-toxic. Only 0.2% of tens of thousands of volunteers suffered from mild food poisoning due to personal physical conditions. However, in the second test, the conditions of these 0.2% people were normal again. Food poisoning caused by SH. Lack is random poisoning and may be related to personal constitution and is not fixed. Therefore, although there is a possibility of food poisoning, SH. Lack is indeed an edible food. After all, many people are allergic to peanut butter. And some are even allergic to raspberries, which is actually similar to food poisoning. Probably. And this 0.2% probability is a bit low. So Chen Ning made up his mind and finished the SH. Lack with great enjoyment. Half an hour later, Chen Ning walked out of the hospital at the highest point. He washed his own stomach with the help of a robot. It can only be said that a very unfortunate thing happened just now. And there was a 0.2% probability that he encountered it. At this moment, the scene where Old Wu once said that he had a crow's mouth flashed through Chen Ming's mind again. So without thinking, he wrote down in his notepad that he would send a copy of SH. Lack as a souvenir to Lao Wu later, and also listed it in the column of important events. In short, the other things that still need to be recorded were almost done before he got food poisoning. So today, Chin Ming chose to rest just like before. The next day, that is the first day of the new week, Chin Ming completely recovered from the food poisoning, regained his energy, and started studying with Bai Quan early in the morning as usual. But just half an hour after Chin Ming and Bai Quan started, Hui Wang suddenly sent a message that needed to be received by Chen Ming personally. Chen Ming skillfully divided his mind into two tasks. While continuing to teach normally with Bai Quan, the other side directly used psychic energy to read the information sent by Hui Wang in his mind. Just now, Hui Wang received news from a Yuhui individual who was out exploring. The afterglow individual discovered a planet where a mechanical race was suspected to exist. Chen Ming didn't show any special expression on his face. But he immediately put the picture of the spacecraft sensor controlled by Yue in front of his eyes. Although he can no longer use the faster than light communication network within the Empire after being far away from the Empire. But he can also build a communication network based on his psychic power between different afterglow individuals. As long as he allows it, different afterglows can communicate directly with each other. Therefore, the information collected by the outgoing spacecraft does not need to come back to be conveyed. Instead, as soon as it is discovered, Hui Wang can receive the information as soon as possible. This is also the reason why Chen Ming only has these after we individuals on hand. But his exploration efficiency is pretty good. And Chen Ming sent back the picture through the sensor of the spacecraft controlled by Afterglow that he was observing at this time. It can be seen that the spacecraft is parked near the middle of the galaxy at this time. And is not too close to the interior of the galaxy. Obviously, the spacecraft left the hyperspace channel and entered the galaxy. After a while, the afterglow above discovered that something was wrong inside the galaxy. It is the third planet from the inside out among the six planets in this galaxy, not far from the spaceship. There are obvious mechanical creations in the orbit of such a planet that has no atmosphere and whose surface looks like an earthy desert when viewed from space. 
but I can't see exactly what it is. After all, the Yue entity currently controlled by Qin Ming is only driving a destroyer. That's why Hui Wang said just now that he suspected that he had discovered traces of the existence of the mechanical race. As for why Hui Wang immediately suspected the mechanical race, it's because many years ago, the Empire had put its focus on dealing with Afterglow due to the two problems of low income from continued development and the trouble of Afterglow. As for Yu Wei, he has just recently emerged from the trouble left by Qin Ming. Although the removal was not that complete, at least Yu Wei's side seemed to feel that they had completely cleared out all Yu Wei individuals who might have had contact with Qin Ming. They are undergoing post-disaster reconstruction at this time. And there is no way they would appear in this damn location. Then the only things left may be the remains of another civilization and the mechanical race that is closely related to them. As for the glory, why don't you suspect that this is the relic of another civilization? It's because the spacecraft currently controlled by Qin Ming captured a scene. Just now, something that was probably a spaceship on the surface of the planet brought a mechanical creation to the orbit and pushed it into orbit. If it is the relics of that civilization, it is impossible not to know what is still being built in the orbit of the planet after so many years. So it can only be the mechanical race. Anyway, at least for now, Qin Ming doesn't know that besides the humans of the Empire, the afterglow of the afterglow, and the mechanical race of the mechanical race, there are other things in the entire universe that have intelligence and already have a civilized structure. In short, it is best to prove all doubts with facts. So Chen Ming directly modified an additional large-scale sensor for the destroyer on the spot to confirm the real situation. Although the sensor couldn't fit inside the spacecraft, Chen Ming had to modify it to the outside of the spacecraft, making the entire spacecraft look like it had a bloated organ. But there's nothing the spacecraft needs to do now. It can just stop and observe quietly. It doesn't matter if there are multiple things. And with the activation of large sensors, the appearance of those things on the track gradually appeared in Chen Ming's eyes. It looks like some kind of combined large satellite composed of multiple satellites orbiting the planet at a certain distance. Each satellite has a completely white appearance and is obviously made of dolomite steel. Moreover, these dolomite steels are still pure white, and there is no green appearance caused by the oxidation of the dolomitic steels that Chen Ning has seen among the independent mechanical tribes. It seems that there is indeed a mechanical race on this planet, and it is still a well-maintained mechanical race. Chen Ming gradually became excited. Although the machine race is difficult to control, if he can continue to control it, it will be of great significance to his machine race hive mind network. So he was thinking, even if his main task now is to continue to develop, should he give it a try? Just as he was thinking about it, Chen Ming saw a flash of fire appear on the surface of the planet. At this time, another satellite happened to be carried into space by a spacecraft and entered the orbit of the planet. After putting the satellite into orbit, the spacecraft turned around and left. The satellites that remained in orbit adjusted their orientation and were combined with the original satellites in orbit to form a larger satellite. It seems that the satellites themselves have different modules, and their complete functions can only be realized when they are all assembled. It was just through Chin Ning's observation of the large combined satellite that had been completely assembled. He found that each large satellite combined did not seem to have complete functions. It seems that several satellites must be connected together to be considered an overall facility. According to the empirical analysis in Chen Ming's mind, this seems to be some kind of orbital defense system that is still in the early stages of construction. However, he can currently see that the satellites in orbit have only almost filled one-fifth of the orbit above the planet's equatorial plane. There is still a lot of work that needs to be completed. It is obvious that it has only been built not long ago. As for why the mechanical race wants to build such a thing, I am afraid we can only find the answer from the planet below. The planet below can be seen as an uninhabitable planet from its appearance and lack of atmosphere. Simple observation can also tell that the terrain of the planet is very flat. Near the planet's equator, there are some areas that look like buildings. As for more information, it cannot be seen by relying on sensors alone, at least not in the current position of the spacecraft. But Xin Ming doesn't dare to let the spacecraft get too close now. After all, it was a surprise that this spacecraft had come all the way from outside the galaxy without being discovered. If we get any closer, God knows that the mechanical tribe will react suddenly and destroy the spacecraft. Although Chen Ming could dismantle the afterglow core and leave it alone outside to take away, he didn't have to worry about losing the afterglow. Then, he personally controlled the spacecraft to approach it and conduct observations. Even if it was destroyed, it would only be a matter of one destroyer. But since the machine tribe has not discovered the existence of this spaceship until now, 
there is no need for him to expose it so early. It's better to wait and see if we can get more information without exposing it. Find out what the mechanical race is doing in this position. This way he can have more time to choose how to deal with these mechanical tribes. If the machine race discovers this spaceship and is alert, it will not be so easy. And some things can't be understood without going in person and investigating. It can also be analyzed based on some external conditions. Just now, after Chen Ming confirmed the existence of the mechanical race, he opened a star map. It was discovered that this galaxy happened to be located far behind the mechanical star field adjacent to Afterglow and the Empire relative to the Empire. Although there is a slight deviation from the location of the mechanical race's star sector on the star map, it has already exceeded the star sector drawn by the Empire, where the mechanical race has frequent activities. But based on the relative position of this planet and the mechanical race's star area, Chin Ming can basically determine that this planet is an independent planet of the mechanical race. Why is this planet independent? Is it still at least 200 light years away from the star field occupied by the machine tribe itself? This cannot be analyzed by analysis. Chin Ming could only make a random guess that it was a fallback path left by the machine clan, or that it was a direction they were exploring, or that there were some rare things here that were worthy of being developed by the machine clan. Although the guessed answer may not be accurate, it should be close to 10. After all, no matter who you are, as long as you are a conscious being, you always have to have a reason for doing things. For such an independent planet to be occupied by a mechanical race, there are only three possibilities that Chen Ming just guessed. He could try to figure out which one it was. At this time, Chen Ming was still learning conducting lessons from Bai Quan, while he began to control the high point that continued to help Hui Wang and other afterglow individuals open hyperspace routes. He turned around, started the jump engine, and headed for this galaxy. During the process, only one satellite was brought into orbit by the spacecraft and connected with other satellites that had begun to be combined. However, there is still no way to piece together a complete large-scale combined satellite, and the efficiency seems to be a bit low. If we make a simple calculation based on the number of satellites currently seen and the current efficiency of satellites in the sky, then the earliest date that the mechanical race on this planet appeared here was half a year ago. It was earlier than the Queen of Insects landed on the planet where the mechanical race existed. The coming of the mechanical race to this planet should have nothing to do with the Queen of Insects. But the more specific reason why the machine race came here has to be investigated by the Supreme Point. It didn't take long for the Supreme Point to reach the target galaxy during the jump process of the jump engine that required almost no cooling time. Chin Ming also deliberately made the Supreme Point jump outside the galaxy in order to hide. And at the end of the jump, after accelerating to a certain speed in the direction of the galaxy, the engine was directly turned off. Choose to glide through space all the way to the edge of your target galaxy. The scan array is then started. Although Chin Ming was a little worried that the scanning of the scanning array would be discovered by the mechanical clan, but without scanning, he would now have no suitable means of investigating the planet's situation. Now that the machine race can build a defense system in orbit, all options for close investigation have been eliminated from the beginning. The most stable means of remote investigation is the scanning array at the highest point. And no other means will work. In any case, this supreme point is a prototype designed by a psyker and funded by the Psychic Association. The scanning array has a special design and the probability of being discovered is extremely low. Anyway, Chin Ning saw it written in the driver's manual. And this is indeed the case. The scan of the highest point was not discovered. At least when Chin Ning checked the suspected construction areas on the planet through the scanning array. The mechanical race on the planet is still working normally in a city that is under construction with a mechanical race cruiser as the core. It is not like being suddenly scanned by a strange spacecraft signal. As for the ship located in the city of the mechanical tribe, according to Chin Ming's understanding from reading various papers before, it should be a colonial ship of the mechanical tribe. This planet is a colonial planet that has just been colonized by the mechanical race. Chin Ming instantly understood that the methods used by the mechanical tribe to develop were similar to the methods used by the Empire. Find a galaxy with relatively abundant resources to start colonizing first. Build this place into a bridgehead. And then gradually spread out with this place as the core. Then this planet suddenly attracted Chen Ming's attention even more. Since the mechanical tribe can build a colony here, it also serves as a bridgehead for regional development. Then it shows that the value of this planet has reasons for them to do this. Moreover, the machine race itself is a value to Chen Ming in building a hive mind network. And because Chen Ming did not control enough machines in the machine city he discovered, he is currently unable to use the hive mind network to build new individual consciousness like the queen of insects. Therefore, 
in order to complete the construction of the individual consciousness of the machine race as soon as possible. The machine race is no longer limited to the numbers on hand. He has to do something here. And so is the mechanical colonial cruiser. Putting aside the value of the cruiser itself, the fact that this cruiser was a colonial ship already made Qin Ming a little itchy. The most indispensable thing on a mechanical colony ship is the facilities for manufacturing mechanical species. Qin Ming now has two relatively difficult points in manufacturing machinery. One is the core chip of the mechanical family, and the other is their secondary core. These two things are the core of the mechanical clan. Although Qin Ming had the drawings, it was quite difficult to get through the drawings when he was unable to understand the language and only had mathematics. If there were special equipment for direct production, it would be much easier than Shen Ming spending half a day learning. He can even do something with the help of the mechanical clan ship. This mechanical colony ship will always have most of the things needed to build a mechanical colony. At most, it will require some subsequent investment in resources. In a sense, what Shen Ming lacks most now is material investment. Such a colonial ship seemed to be able to do something special when combined with the machines he had on hand, such as occupying a magpie's nest in a new place. Of course, Qin Ming thought it was very simple. But in practice, it was definitely not as easy as he said. Such a pioneering bridgehead colony, which is still under construction in its early stages, is definitely a very important place for the mechanical race. Qin Ming could imagine if he had just placed all the afterglows somewhere and started the early construction of the colony. Just as they were building a base in mining, they were suddenly robbed by the machine tribe. It would be strange if he didn't fight against the machine clan. So even if Chen Ming has any thoughts about this place now, he must carefully consider the mechanical tribe's subsequent counterattack. The mechanical race here is not independent from the entire mechanical race cluster like the mechanical race on the planet that Chen Ming found before. The mechanical race here is connected to the mechanical race star area next to it, holds extreme hostility towards humans and anything created by humans. If Qin Ming appeared here and attacked the Machinery Clan, a bunch of Machinery Clan would probably fly over from the Mechanical Clan Starfield to cause trouble for him. He must get rid of these troubles first before he can achieve results on this Earth Yellow Planet. Therefore, when he is bound to encounter an increase in the number of members of the Mechanical Tribe, he must first consider the possibility of failure and the path of retreat. Then consider attacking the Machine Tribe Colony, capturing Machine Tribe individuals, and controlling the Machine Tribe Cruiser. Attacking is also not a simple matter. This mechanical city under construction is completely different from the abandoned city that Qin Ming discovered before. The defense facilities are complete. And there are a large number of surviving mechanical race individuals. And each one has complete combat effectiveness and complete logistical support. So how to attack? Where to attack? How to gain maximum benefits and control the largest number of machines? How to disarm the mechanical cruiser in the center of the city? All are problems. Of course, there is one thing that can be determined without thinking about it. The main force attacking the mechanical colony must be the Zerg led by the Insect Queen. Since the machine race is still unable to create new individual consciousness, it cannot afford to lose. It is not easy for Qin Ming to spend a lot of mental energy to create and control an army of robots to continuously attack the colonies of the mechanical tribe. So Zerg is definitely the best choice. But there is one thing you need to pay attention to when using Zerg. From Chen Ming's previous review of the video saved in the abandoned city of the Machine Tribe, it can be seen that the Machine Tribe has a very keen awareness of the Zerg. The Insect Queen had just entered the atmosphere and before landing. The mechanical race on the surface of the planet had already begun to mobilize. If the Insect Queen hadn't run so fast, Chen Ming wouldn't have the Insect Queen in his hand today. Combined with what Chen Ming noticed before, the blood of the Zerg has a very special effect on the Machine Race. Qin Ming did not believe that nothing happened between the Zerg race and the machine race. Therefore, it seems that the Zerg and the machine race also have some kind of innate hatred, which is combined with the machine race's hatred of humans. It is even more likely that the reinforcements coming from the mechanical tribe will become more dangerous. And when the time comes, Qin Ming will definitely intercept the support of the mechanical tribe in space. And the insect queen will go down to prepare for the attack. He was not worried about the insect queen on the planet. Since the mechanical race on that planet was completely controlled by Chen Ming, there were no restrictions from the outside world. The buds in the queen's nest almost care about the exponential growth. And the expansion speed is getting faster and faster day by day. As long as Chen Ming's mental power is enough to maintain the transportation of Zerg energy crystals and maintain the speed at which the queen breeds Zerg individuals, attacking a mechanical city that has just begun to colonize shouldn't be a big problem. But it's different in space. Will the support from the mechanical tribe be large? 
Did it come quickly? Can you beat it? These are all issues that Chen Ning must consider. Although not everything gives him time to think about how to deal with it. But since I can take some time to think about it now, it's better to think about it. Moreover, the Corsair Queen, who is the main force in the landing operations, is still dormant and evolving in the cocoon. There is definitely no rush to attack. So Chen Ming does still have some time to think about it. The direction of consideration is naturally how to let the Insect Queen arrive at the planet of the Mechanical Tribe first and develop for a period of time without being discovered by the Mechanical Tribe. With the supply of Chen Ming's energy crystals, a group of Zerg species were reproduced. Chapter 187 Preparation Before the War If Chen Ming wants to attack the Mechanical Race, he must do more than just drop the Insect Queens and let them multiply. There are many other things to do. But the prerequisite for doing other things is that the Insect Queen can break through the Mechanical Clan's defense line and successfully reach the planet. Therefore, Chen Ming did not consider other things for the time being, but directly began to try to let the Insect Queen enter the planet. It is absolutely impossible to enter the planet directly and openly like the former Insect Queen. The Mechanical Clan here has more complete safety protection measures than the Mechanical Clan controlled by Chen Ming. If Chen Ming dares to do this, it will definitely lead to martial law of the mechanical race in the entire city. It will not stop until the Zerg-related things he threw on the planet are completely cleaned up. But the mechanical tribe here is still in the early stages of development, so they also have some shortcomings. For example, the defense against the space environment is not so meticulous, allowing Chen Ming's afterglow individual to drive a ship closer to the middle of the galaxy. At the same time, the range of influence that the mechanical race can currently have on the planet seems to be only located in space orbit, covering about one-fifth of the planet's equatorial orbit, corresponding to the surface of the planet. It is far less than one-fifth of the planet's surface area. There are also large areas beyond the control of the mechanical clan. At least that's what it seems. So Chen Ning thought of a way to take advantage of these two shortcomings. He controlled the highest point to scan the surrounding environment and found an area with many asteroids about a hundred meters in diameter densely distributed. Then, he took out a few pills inside. He wants to drop meteorites on the planet of the mechanical race. As long as the trajectory is designed well, the act of throwing a meteorite will look like a normal meteorite to people who don't know the specific situation. And there is a high probability that it will not be discovered. It is easy to capture a few asteroids at the highest point, with extraordinary help in calculating trajectories. It is easy to accurately drop asteroids onto the planet in a reasonable manner. Chen Ming also thought carefully about the location and dropped it to the mechanical city on the other side of the planet opposite to the center of the Earth. At the same time, it is best not to throw asteroids too many times. A bunch of asteroids suddenly hit the same position, and anyone with a brain could see that there was something wrong. So Chen Ming's plan is to create signs of meteorite rain. It is normal for a planet without an atmosphere in the universe to be hit by meteorites raining out of nowhere. Just prepare more asteroids of different sizes and throw them out in batches at about the same time. So that one batch follows the other. So that this matter is logically reasonable. Then, under the condition that there are no other abnormalities, you can test the reaction of the mechanical family. Let's see if they can detect the asteroid impact outside their control area, as Chen Ning speculated. Although the Supreme Point is an exploration ship, it still has the ability to capture asteroids. The collection work was completed easily, and based on extraordinary calculations, some of the meteorites were thrown towards the machine race's planet. After waiting for the meteorite to fly a long distance, the first batch of seven or eight asteroids of different sizes thrown by Chen Ming finally successfully flew near the target planet, were captured by the planet's gravity, and finally hit the other end of the planet. The mechanical race did not take any defensive measures. I don't know if they were scanned and ignored them because they thought they were no threat. Or if they were completely ignored. It doesn't matter if you don't know. Anyway, the next batch will definitely know which situation it is. After the first batch of meteorites landed, the second batch of asteroids dropped by Chen Ning almost arrived near the target planet close to the first batch. And were also captured by gravity. But this time, Chen Ning brought some fragments of the insect queen's carapace to two of the asteroids. As well as some growth from the queen's cocoon. Chin Ming even used psychic energy to create some commonly used anti-scanning materials on these two asteroids, which were relatively small and had a diameter of 30 or 40 meters. But this time, when Chin Ming observed the situation slightly nervously, he found that the mechanical tribe was still the same as before, without any special movement. These mechanical tribes really seemed unaware of the existence of the asteroid. The mechanical tribes in the entire city were not as active as when the insect queen once landed on another planet.
the insect queen's body tissue landed on the planet so smoothly. Although Chen Ming has not been able to directly use his spiritual power to transform a complete insect queen, his biological skills have not yet reached this level. But with this body tissue alone, he can already produce Zerg energy crystals and batches on the mechanical planet. As long as the insect queen is in place, the rest is a flat push of explosive troops. The first step of the plan is half completed. After the second batch of asteroids carrying the queen's body tissue were used to test the mechanical race's control over the planet landed. Jin Ming also tested and found out that the progress of the development of the planet by the mechanical tribe is really very slow, and the control strength can be said to be completely inadequate. This seems somewhat inconsistent with the situation of the mechanical tribe opening up a new colony in a new location. Logically speaking, if he were a machine race, he would definitely increase his investment in the planet he was exploring as soon as possible. Not to mention getting it right in one step. At least the security measures in the development area must be done well. And all dangers within the galaxy must be dealt with. And install a large number of fixed point observation equipment to nip all dangers in the cradle. The mechanical tribe has developed. But they have not invested enough in the areas they have developed. Something doesn't seem right about this. But there is no reason for the machine clan to treat this place as a trap or something. Who can come and cause trouble in such a location far behind the mechanical race's star field? Moreover, Chin Ming and the Machine Clan have never interacted. And it is impossible to say that the Machine Clan has predicted that Chin Ming will come. Is it possible that there is some reason that caused the Machine Clan to delay the development of this place? Chin Ming couldn't figure it out. But something had to be done. He did not directly launch the third batch of asteroids just now. Because among this batch of asteroids, Chin Ming stuffed one of them with the body of the insect queen that had been left on the highest point. Of course, a layer of anti-scanning material was also created on the outside. Therefore, it is uncertain whether the second batch of asteroids can successfully pass through the defense of the mechanical race. Chen Ning couldn't risk losing a queen's body that could not be replenished during her dormancy by throwing the queen up. At least we have to wait for the second batch of asteroids to arrive and the test results to come out before trying again. So after confirming that the mechanical tribe did not find any traces left by the insect queen on the second batch of asteroids, Jin Ning took advantage of the situation and threw out the third batch of asteroids with the queen's body. After a period of time that was almost the same as before, it arrived near the planet, was captured by gravity, and successfully hit the ground. The mechanical tribe was also silent, completely unaware of what was in the meteorite that had just fallen. When the smoke and dust from the meteorite hit, the ground fell back to the ground under the action of gravity. Only some meteorite fragments that were scattered due to the impact were left in this area that had been cratered. Although there is no consciousness in the body of the insect queen, it has various basic organs to maintain the survival of the body, as well as some moving limbs that are incompatible with the insect queen's body. So Chen Ming personally controlled the body to dig underground, hiding deep in the ground where it would not be discovered, and hibernating. At this point, the first step of preparation is completed. The insect queen's consciousness can be transferred to that empty SH. L at any time with the help of Chen Ming. As for Chen Ming, he could also transport some energy crystals produced by the crystal worms bred by the queen to the body during the period before the queen wakes up from the cocoon. After the insect queen takes shape, she can immediately start using these energy crystals to breed new Zerg races. Preparations went well though. But it was so successful that Chen Ming had to consider whether the mechanical tribe had noticed it and was just pretending not to notice it and had some more profound plan that he couldn't understand. Moreover, Chin Ming was thinking about the whole process of throwing the asteroid just now. Is the protection of the mechanical race in space really so weak? So Chin Ming pushed the remaining few of the asteroids he had just collected to the vicinity of the mechanical race's city on the planet, instead of deliberately avoiding the city, since the mechanical tribe couldn't even detect the insect queen, and the insect queen had successfully landed. Chin Ming didn't mind doing something a little more risky, but this time, Chin Ning finally saw the actions of the mechanical clan. But it's not on the ground. But the actions of orbital defense facilities in space. Those large combined satellites suddenly began to deform. Gradually unfolded. And adjusted the various equipment inside to where they should be. It can be seen that various large-scale live ammunition weapons. Large-scale energy weapons. And large-scale missile weapons are evenly distributed on the satellite. The density of the layout is even higher than that of a space station the size of a pirate space station and the firepower is terrifying. Each satellite can be regarded as a small war fortress. And on the side facing the outside of these unfolded satellites, a flat shield that is completely different from the spherical shield of ordinary spacecraft gradually expands. 
The flat shields deployed along with other dangers also in orbit were connected together. This orbital defense facility is a wall of size that can completely block intruders. Of course, that is after construction is completed. Now this wall only blocks one-fifth of the area near the equator of the entire planet and cannot protect the entire planet at all. So much so that Shen Ming threw the insect queen's body onto the planet and the machine race didn't notice it. But this at least shows that if Chen Ning wants to directly attack the mechanical city, there will definitely be a big problem. The deployed orbital defense facilities quickly destroyed those asteroids and gradually recovered them. This scene made Chen Ming frown even more, because the mechanical clan didn't seem to care about the loss of energy. Moreover, the orbital defense facilities were deployed at a time when the asteroids thrown by Chen Ning were near the center of the third and fourth planets in the galaxy from the inside out. The third planet is the planet of the mechanical race. This shows that they are indeed capable of discovering the first two batches of asteroids. But they did not respond when they determined that the orbit of the asteroids was not within the city. Then Chen Ming didn't understand the situation in the mechanical city even more. Although he had used some anti-scanning materials on several asteroids, he still felt that the mechanical race here was outrageous that the insect queen's body was so big and not discovered. It made him very confused and wanted to figure out the reason. Chen Ming found that every time he encountered something, there would always be a lot of unclear questions. So after he couldn't figure it out, he skillfully controlled his emotions and kept these questions in his mind to see if there was a chance to get answers later. Anyway, one thing is certain now. When he attacks the mechanical city in the future, he must destroy all the satellites of these orbital defense facilities as soon as possible. Otherwise, the shield of his spaceship would be severely damaged. The first step of the preparatory work is over here. At least the purpose was achieved the insect queen's body landed on the planet. And Chen Ming also confirmed the range of the mechanical race's space scan, which could be used in the next attack. And the second step that Chen Ning had to do had to start right away. He wants to deploy more means. Now that the mechanical clan is in the light and Chen Ning is in the dark, Chen Ning would really feel sorry for himself if he didn't arrange more tricks in advance. So Chen Ning wanted to prepare something to block and interfere with the signals within the galaxy. Although the mechanical race is a hive mind, they are mechanical life forms, and all their activities rely on electrical signals. It is not impossible to adjust this kind of thing. Moreover, Chin Ming knew that the Zerg's hive mind network, before he used psychic powers to recast it, relied mainly on brain waves and supplemented by pheromones. There must be some invisible connection between the hive minds of the machine race, although it may not be useful for him to do so. It is better to do it than not do it. Even if the blockade has no effect, interference is still useful. It's just that the planet-level signal blocking device is a bit awkward. Putting aside whether there is one or not, the only one who has the ability to get this thing is by Quan. Chen Ning thinks about it. After all, there are too few scenarios where this kind of thing can be applied. It just so happened that Chen Ning was currently distracted in class with Bai Quan. So Chen Ning interrupted the class and said, Wait a minute. Bai Quan, I have a question. Bai Quan didn't feel anything about Chen Ning interrupting him and just asked, What's the problem? What's wrong with the wolf pack tactics I just mentioned that are more suitable for you to use? No. I understand the wolf pack tactics. I want to ask something else. Do you have technology over there that can block a planet's communication signals? Bai Quan immediately replied. Yes. There is something that can create high energy particle turbulence. With the use of magnetic fields of stars and planets. The particle radiation of stars can be enhanced to a very high degree and the communication equipment of a specific planet in the galaxy can be interfered with on a large scale. Chen Ning was a little surprised. He didn't expect that there was something ready-made. Can you get one? What do you want to do? Chen Ning knew that such a device with a huge range of influence would definitely not be taken away by him without any reason. So he explained truthfully. I encountered a planet where the mechanical race has just begun to colonize. I want to go grab something. Oh. Where? behind the mechanical tribe star field. Chin Ming didn't say anything specific. Bai Quan knew the approximate location and didn't continue to ask. He just said, I can help you with the arrangement, but you have to do the arrangements yourself. You need to find the poles of the planet's magnetic field. Place one on each pole, and then place another one where the star's light shines directly. As soon as he finished speaking, Bai Quan immediately asked a question that Chin Ming had thought of for the first time before. But as a planet that the mechanical race has just begun to colonize really easy to fight? It's not easy to fight. But you have to try. It won't hurt if you try. I also need something to block the jump engine. Is there any way to get it? 
so determined. Bai Quan pushed up his glasses and revised his impression of Qin Ming's abilities in his mind, adding that he could directly control the machine race. Then he responded to Qin Ming's question and asked, Do you want to block the spaceship coming over? Or do you want to block the spaceship on your side to prevent them from flying away? Qin Ming thought about the possible situations he might encounter and said, Everything is possible. Not very good. What you want to blockade is at least a cruiser-level ship. If it is really that high, it will require the cooperation of at least a dozen cruisers. The only way is to blockade the entire galaxy. Otherwise, the spacecraft inside will fly out of the blockade range casually. Qin Ming only knew that there was such a technology at first and asked Bai Quan if it might be possible. He didn't know exactly how this technology achieved the final effect. So Bai Quan's words didn't surprise him too much. There was nothing he could do about it. In addition to using technical means to block it, there are other ways to prevent the mechanical cruiser from escaping. For example, the simplest way is to destroy the engine directly. Without the jump system on the engine, the mechanical cruiser would not be able to escape at all. So Bai Quan's words just made Chen Ming ask. That means we can only block the mechanical tribe from other places. Right. Bai Quan immediately replied. Yes, but there are restrictions. This device called a jump beacon disruptor has a short action time and a small range of action. It must be able to lock on to the location where the enemy spacecraft may jump over to be effective. You know that there will also be jump fluctuations at the target location of the jump of the spaceship. Right. You have to use the device at the location where the jump fluctuation occurs to block the jump process of the spacecraft that jumps over. Seeing Chen Ming's thoughtful expression, Bai Quan added, I should have told you during class two days ago that the battlefield situation will often change due to external interference. A good commander must know where the enemy is coming from after confirming that the enemy has support, which will cause the situation on the entire battlefield to change. Chen Ming nodded and said, I remember, but you just mentioned it casually. Indeed, the main reason is that this knowledge point was not taught in class before. You are a bit ahead of the times when you encounter a situation where you need to use this thing. But since you have gone outside, it is normal to encounter some accidents. In short, this kind of equipment needs to be installed and started at a suitable location in advance to disrupt the jump fluctuations and not give the spacecraft a chance to jump over. Although it has shortcomings, under normal circumstances it is enough to use it once. If you block a jump, the jump engine of the spaceship over there will directly enter cooling. And no subsequent spacecraft will jump over in a short period of time. You have to judge where the machine clan will appear then. And then use it. And you have to be prepared in advance for failure. Don't use this thing as a trump card. I remember. Um. Bai Quan thought for a moment and then said. I remember that this thing seems to have been spread. Because the effect is too limited. The supervision is not very strict. I can help you transfer up to two units privately and the money will be based on the black market price. I remember that the fleet you left in the territory has been active. Right. The entire Gallo Star territory knows the name of your fleet. And it seems that your fleet killed a stronghold on the left path some time ago. Also, it was your fleet that recently killed a stronghold occupying the left path of the space station. Right. You should not be short of money. It's okay. It's still a bit lacking. But it should be affordable. It seemed that the money Chen Ming had just earned had to be used to buy such large equipment within a few days of getting it. But Chen Ming believes that compared to the final game, he will never lose money. I want both of them. But what about the signal jamming device? Does it also cost money? And does it really not matter if you sell military supplies like this? Bai Quan directly sent the two bills to Chen Ming and said, The money must be needed. Otherwise, I won't be able to balance the accounts here. And our 14th Legion is not very pedantic but rather humane. When we are short of money, it doesn't matter if we sell something other than the dead line. And it is an old tradition of the Imperial Army to sell outdated military supplies when they are short of money. With a little heartache, Jin Ning swiped the card he still had in the Empire and transferred the 1.7 billion account to the account designated by Bai Quan. Even if he adds some of the money he earned from fighting pirates, he still has less than 2 billion left on hand now. Although it feels a little uncomfortable. After all, the money is used really quickly. But he also knows that money is not just waste paper. It has practical significance only when it is used. So after feeling a little uncomfortable, Chen Ming returned to normal and asked Bai Quan. All the things I want are backward military resources. Bai Quan thought for a while and said, It's almost enough. But the army still uses it occasionally. What Bai Quan said made Chen Ming immediately ask curiously. 
What is there that is not lagging behind and is still within the dead line? The main force level things are all in the dead line. By Quan saw Chen Ming's slightly speechless expression. And it was obvious that what he said was nonsense. So he added, Actually, the dead line is really loose. As long as it's not experimental weapons and equipment that haven't been installed yet, it's basically no problem to sell them out. Does an antimatter reactor count? Chapter 188 The Brand New Zerg By Quan said without any hesitation. Of course the antimatter reactor counts. But there was nothing I could do at that time. If I didn't bring something powerful out, a giant shipyard wouldn't be that easy to fight. Anyway, even if you do take the antimatter reactor away in the end, it'll be fine as long as you don't show it off everywhere. Chin Ming blinked. And he suddenly realized that Bai Quan didn't seem to know that he had the technology patent for an antimatter reactor. But he didn't take the initiative to mention it. And although Bai Quan didn't say it clearly, if all the people in the previous special operations team died, the problem of what to do with the antimatter reactor should not be difficult to solve. But as soon as Bai Quan finished speaking, he suddenly brought up a topic he had brought up from time to time. If you are interested in these experimental things, you might as well join us. Right. You also know that our 14th Legion has many self-developed improved models of spacecraft. I can directly take the initiative to drag you to our research institute and give you access to these spacecraft blueprints. Even if you haven't learned to master this technology, I can still let you have access to it in advance. And there is a new type of spaceship that is about to come out recently. It is still in the testing stage. I can also think of ways to get one for you. Bai Quan has gotten used to recruiting Chin Ming on a daily basis. But he still refuses on a daily basis. I still don't like being restricted. At least I have to wait until the decision I make fails before I think about turning back. However, Chin Ming was still very interested in the new type of spaceship Bai Quan mentioned and asked. So can you tell me about the capabilities of the spaceship you mentioned? Bai Quan also felt a little speechless when Chin Ming just heard what he said. But he also knows that if you don't want to let go of your children, you won't be able to trap the wolf. To reveal what I can, there will always be a day when Chin Ming really takes the bait. Bai Quan thought for a while and said, Before, when you were still at Yue's place, Yue headquarters sent that equipment to the Afterglow Star area in the Gallo Star field. The technology used to transport the equipment is similar to the technology used by our new spaceship. This thing directly allows the equipment to travel across the entire empire. And we have no way to intercept it. Chen Ming Yu had previously learned from the people who contacted him in the 14th Army that Yu Hui headquarters had sent a piece of equipment to the Gallo Star territory. But the specific transportation method and route were not clear. Unexpectedly, it went directly across the empire. If it is really like what Bai Quan said, is it really just that there is no way to intercept it? I'm afraid it can't even be locked. This thought suddenly flashed through Chin Ming's mind. Because if there is no way to intercept it, this kind of thing crossing the empire will definitely be surrounded by a bunch of military fleets and escorted all the way to the Galastar territory. When the thing reaches its destination and is received by Afterglow, then kill all the Afterglow near the last landing point of the thing and snatch the thing away. Chin Ming didn't even need help to feed back his previous location at Yu Hui's place. But if the location cannot be captured, or even seen, what Bai Quan said makes sense. Previously, the 14th Legion could only give him a rough date for the equipment to be delivered, which was reasonable. This is truly a unique technology. If you put it this way, the new spaceship Bai Quan talked about seems a bit awesome. What does a spacecraft that cannot be locked and intercepted by normal means look like? Chin Ming's curiosity was aroused by what Bai Quan said. And he asked, Since new spaceships are coming out, it means that this technology must not have just started to be studied recently. Then why couldn't it be intercepted before? You couldn't even locate it. Bai Quan was not surprised that Chin Ming correctly guessed some situations that he had not mentioned at all. Because this technology has been researched in the direction of spacecraft since the beginning, there must be less research on other aspects. And I just said that there will be a new spaceship soon. Not that it already exists. So, I can't say too much. Let's talk about what happens after you about the machine race. Also, Chin Ming also knew that there were some things that he could not know based on his current status. So he borrowed Pasya Donkey's name and did not continue to ask further questions. Waiting for Bai Quan's follow-up. Bai Quan seemed to be reminiscing. And after a while he said, Although I have fought with Yue all year round, I have also fought against the mechanical tribe. The combat style of the mechanical race is similar to that of us humans. They are both complex and changeable depending on the enemies they face. They will encounter different tactics. 
so we can't just rely on experience. We have to analyze it based on the actual situation. Of course, it doesn't matter if you have no experience. But one thing remains unchanged. When fighting humans, the machine race will never retreat. And they will definitely beat themselves to the point where they are completely unable to fight. And they are different from the afterglow. The afterglow captures humans and uses the captives to trade some things with us. But the machine clan will only kill everyone. Don't show any mercy to the mechanical tribe. At least not until they are completely defeated. Bai Quan's words seemed to have a meaning. But Chen Ning said nothing and silently nodded to accept Bai Quan's suggestion. Also, you are fighting a mechanical colony. So ground combat is also a problem. I don't have much experience in ground combat. You could only figure it out on your own and try not to stay on the ground for too long. By the way, you can videotape the whole process when you fight against the machine race or broadcast it to me in real time like you did when you were at the pirate space station. I can teach you something based on it. This might reveal Chen Ming's current position. Or it might reveal the Queen of Insects. However, Chen Ming did not refuse directly. He just said, We will see the situation at that time. Well, good luck to you then. Actually, I suddenly feel that it is useless for you to ask for permission to simulate space battles. You are serious. Chen Ning smiled and said, There will be times when it will be useful. I can't fight with the mechanical tribe every day. Right? Well, let's continue with the class. The things you want should be sent to Wuin as before. Right? Right. The morning class ended soon after Chen Ming and Bai Quan chatted. A few days passed in the blink of an eye. Several pieces of equipment for layout promised by Bai Quan have been sent to the boss. And Chen Ming used psychic energy to transform them back onto his spaceship. Since it would take some time to debug the equipment and prepare for installation. Chen Ming still waited patiently while learning and observing the mechanical family every day. It's just that the waiting time was longer than Chen Ning imagined. Until another week passed. Chen Ning had already prepared several pieces of equipment and was ready to compete with the mechanical warships. The Queen's dormant cocoon finally started to stir. It was almost late at night. And Chen Ming planned to take a rest. Discovering the changes in the cocoon made him stop immediately. And instead control the bugs in the nest to the place where the queen hibernated to observe the queen's condition. At this time, some purple viscous liquid was gradually overflowing from the gray, green and black cocoons that were originally covered by the growth. Gradually cover all the growth that covers the ground around the queen as she spins her cocoon. Not even just covering it. This purple viscous liquid is taking root in these growths. Eating them whole. Chen Ming immediately told the mechanical tribe that was originally protecting the cocoon to stay away from here to avoid being affected by the purple liquid from the insect queen. After waiting for about half an hour, the area around the queen's cocoon was completely covered by the purple viscous liquid. The cocoon located in the center of the area finally cracked open at this time. Soon, several tentacles completely tore open the cracks in the cocoon, pulling the biomass spacecraft, whose image had changed again, to climb out of the giant cocoon. The second evolution of the insect queen is completed although its overall appearance is still that of being covered by a hard carapace. Its color has changed from pitch black to dark purple. And the carapace is also covered with a large number of purple fungi. The originally smooth carapace looks like it is covered with mold. People who don't know it will definitely feel disgusted at first glance. But just between the few breaths the queen took after being exposed to the air, the purple color of the carapace faded. And the fungi outside the carapace were taken back into the body by the queen. The entire biological spacecraft has returned to its appearance before the insect queen evolved. But some details of its appearance are slightly different from before. But it is obvious that with the presence of these fungi, the carapace of the biological spacecraft definitely has more powerful protective properties than before. The changes in appearance are actually not too important. What's really important is that Chen Ning sends psychic fluctuations from the queen of insects. It is not the spiritual energy fluctuations produced by Chen Ming's spiritual energy acting on the queen of insects but the spiritual energy fluctuations that emerge from the queen of insects herself. Moreover, this spiritual energy fluctuation is very restrained, completely different from Chen Ming's spiritual energy, more like a psychic fungus eaten by a bug queen. Chen Ming still basically relies on himself to explore all things related to psychic energy until today. Therefore, it is not clear what role the psychic energy fluctuations in the insect queen have. When Chen Ming communicated with the insect queen, the information from the insect queen was also very vague. The insect queen didn't know much about the psychic power it had just acquired. Just like when Chen Ming first obtained spiritual power. Not a big problem. As time goes by, the insect queen will become familiar with its spiritual power 
and know the uses of its spiritual power. Therefore, Chen Ning was not in a hurry to figure out the psychic powers of the Insect Queen immediately. Instead, he paid attention to other major changes in the Insect Queen other than her psychic powers. In other words, these purple liquids made purely of fungi spread out from the Insect Queen's body. The purple liquid gradually lost some moisture after spreading and turned into a common fungus-covered appearance. It's just that it's more widely covered, thicker, and more biologically active than the mold that Chen Ming occasionally sees on food. And when the insect queen returned to the nest, it sprayed the purple fungus directly onto the entire nest again, covering the entire nest under a thick carpet of bacteria. And all the bugs that came into contact with these fungi were instantly absorbed by the fungi, turned into nutrients, and gathered on the queen's body. Chen Ming no longer needs to recycle old bugs through the digestive organs. These carpets are the current digestive organs of the queen. And in the process of digesting the original bugs in the nest, Chin Ming also saw things similar to insect eggs wrapped in a translucent dark purple film gradually appearing around the insect queen's body. The new generation of Zerg with psychic and fungal abilities is being cultivated by the Zerg queen. This is a new and huge change in the insect queen. Or in other words, a change in the Zerg race. They changed from egg laying to this method of reproduction that is close to budding, using the ability of fungi to cultivate Zerg individuals. The overall reproduction speed has increased significantly, and the queen has not abandoned its original method of reproduction. When necessary, it can still lay eggs containing larvae. It doesn't mean that you need a creep to reproduce, but it can speed up the efficiency. It won't take long, at most two days, for the insect queen to completely replace the insects inside the insect nest that now covers an area far larger than the size of a city. As long as the insect queen gestates a new insect nest, the rate of insect reproduction will definitely increase exponentially. In addition, Chin Ning also discovered that these carpets on the ground are not just organs for eating and cultivating larvae. When adult worms hatch out, they can connect to the carpet on the ground produced by the combination of insect biomass and fungal genes through some special organs on their limbs, get nutrition directly from it. Although the efficiency is not high, and the nutrients that a piece of bacteria blanket can store are limited. If there are too many bugs absorbing nutrients at the same time, the bacteria blanket under their feet may be sucked dry. But the situation that allows a large number of Zerg to require a large amount of nutrients at the same time must be during a battle. And there will be death in the battle. The dead corpses can be directly digested by the bacteria carpet and turned into nutrients, which can be immediately supplied to other Zerg that are still fighting. Although it still cannot completely free the Zerg from the constraints of food and energy crystals, it has also greatly alleviated the original problems of the Zerg in long-term operations. It seems that what Chen Ming did before by feeding insects and then eating fungi was correct. The queen of insects, including the entire insect hive, has undergone extremely obvious evolution and enhanced capabilities, allowing Chen Ming to attack the mechanical city later. Seeing such Zerg, Chen Ming suddenly thought of a question. Will fire be more effective against Zerg? Chen Ming remembered that when the insect queen controlled a bunch of bugs and ran to the mechanical city to cause trouble for him. She was killed by the concentrated fire of the mechanical cannon. The Zerg at that time did not show much resistance to fire. Or in other words, all carbon-based organisms should not be resistant to fire under normal circumstances. So after the Zerg combines the genes of fungi that are also afraid of fire, will they? Chin Ming felt a little worried. So he thought about it and decided he'd better test it out now. Chin Ming specifically asked the insect queen to give him a few Zerg and a small piece of carpet. Then Chen Ming made a machine directly near the insect queen. During this period, Chen Ming successfully mastered the manufacturing technology of the mechanical body of the mechanical family. The Blazing Silkworm. This type of machine has two attack modes. One is a flamethrower mode with short range and long term output. And the other is a long distance fixed point artillery shooting mode that Chen Ming saw last time. Chen Ming deliberately put it empty first and tried the flamethrower mode that he had never seen before. When I saw the fiery silkworm which was 10 meters long and about 5 meters high, spraying out a fierce flame that completely covered an area 30 degrees ahead and 100 meters long. Chin Ming silently asked the queen for a few more bugs and a few more pieces of fungi. Then the testing started. Although the test process was a little twisty, the results did get Chin Ming more confidence in the subsequent battles. To be honest, Chin Ming found the planet that the mechanical race had just colonized not long ago. After the hindfoot insect, it woke up from evolution and underwent great changes. It even had a method to counter the previous strongest attack method of the machine race against the Zerg race. Although this one is a little long on the back foot, it's not a problem. 
In this situation, if Chen Ming didn't do something quickly, he would be sorry for his preparation during this period. At the same time, another good news came from the distant empire. On the boss's side, the Stardust class cruiser of Tachyon technology that Bai Quan promised to send some time ago. This ship that best embodies Chen Ning's spiritual power is already in place with the spiritual nerf. It has been sent to the boss's colony, and under the boss's arrangement, an afterglow core belonging to Chen Ming was installed. The cruiser was completely handed over to him. It only takes a few more jumps for the cruiser to reach Chen Ming. Of course, Chen Ming informed Bai Quan first, and used Bai Quan's relationship to cover up the traces of the jump to avoid being tracked. Although it was not good to disturb people in the middle of the night, Chen Ming finally couldn't wait any longer. And Bai Quan seemed to be very busy. At least when Chen Ming came to see him, he seemed to be continuing to work. Although he was not very friendly to Bai Quan, the fact that he hadn't rested yet made Chen Ming feel a lot less guilty about disturbing others in the middle of the night. And 20 minutes after the Stardust class was sent to the boss, carrying Chen Ming's spiritual enlightenment nerve, it made several leaps in succession and came to Chen Ming's side. Chen Ming immediately went directly to the Stardust level in person and found the spiritual nerve stored in a special storage container in the Stardust level captain's room. This spiritual nerve, like the one Chen Ming had eaten before, was stored in a slightly curved cylindrical object like a medicine bottle. As long as Chen Ming wants to, he can take it out and absorb it at any time. However, Chen Ming was not in a hurry for the time being, and instead opened the Stardust level panel. Ship panel. Ship name, none. Type, Stardust class cruiser. Radiant energy capacity, 0 slash 24,000. Radiant energy dissipation, 1800. Fuel reserve, 99%. Front weapon, tachyon spear. Port side weapon, large, defender, point defense energy cannon. Starboard weapon, large, defender, point defense energy cannon. Tail weapon, large, guide thermal decoy launcher. Flight deck, port side level 400 slash 400 zero. Flight deck, second floor on the port side 400 slash 400 zero. Flight deck, starboard level 400 slash 400 zero. Flight deck, second floor on starboard side 400 slash 400 zero. Armor, tachyon cruiser grade standardized armor. Engine, tachyon cruiser class antimatter experimental engine. Built-in cabin. Important equipment. Control system module in operation. Landing module in operation. Hyperspace channel system module in operation. Unmanned fighter auxiliary control module in operation. Ship AI overclocking instrument in operation. Full width shield module in operation. Meteor network in operation. Meteor real-time target positioning system in operation. Meteor target feeding system in operation. Chin Ming quickly glanced around the panel. After skipping the built-in cabins that were completely unimportant or even unnecessary to see, it is locked on the two lines of engines and important equipment. Chin Ming could clearly see the words antimatter in the engine column. It's no wonder that the radiation capacity and radiation energy dissipation of the Stardust class are much higher than those of Chin Ming Chong Kai and Chong Kian's highest point and brilliance class. Brilliance radiation capacity is 18,000, and its radiation dissipation is 1,000. As a non-combat ship, the maximum radiation capacity is a little lower, 15,000, but the radiation dissipation is pretty good, with 1,200, but obviously they are not as good as the Stardust class 24,000 and 1,800. It can only be said that it is an indisputable fact that Tachyon technology is excellent in the design of the spacecraft's energy system, but the word antimatter still surprised Chen Ming. I don't know if Bai Quan did this on purpose, or if Tachyon technology saw that it was needed by the military so it deliberately took out the experimental antimatter engine. Or maybe the Empire has begun large-scale testing of antimatter reactor-related technologies. In short, this matter is not harmful to Chen Ming, since the antimatter reactor has received support from the government. And even the military and the company next door have related technology. There is almost no possibility of problems with the equipment in practical applications. He could still choke to death while eating. The probability of something happening to the engine protected by Chen Ming's psychic energy was definitely smaller than the probability of choking to death while eating. So Chen Ming took a second look at the antimatter engine and considered whether he should collect patent fees from the company. Then he turned his attention to the important equipment column. The most important thing inside is the three-piece meteorite suit. They are all equipment with Stardust as the core, providing auxiliary functions for the meteor, unmanned combat aircraft that can release a total of 1,600 ships on board. 
taking into account that meteorites are similar to terminators and have more powerful self-destruction functions. These 1,600 meteorites are simply equivalent to 1,600 consumable destroyers. Chin Ming remembered that the cowhood was the largest type of destroyer and could barely be regarded as an aircraft carrier. It can actually carry a total of 320 fighters. Now, a Stardust can carry more than four times that. With this boat, Chin Ming can go out without any boats and leave all the pressure of the boat to Xingqian. Anyway, the small boats brought out are basically cannon fodder to fill the line in cruiser level battles. Instead of using afterglow boats equipped with gamma class afterglow cores to fill the line, it is better to use these ships that can directly self destruct when necessary. He just didn't know if the operation of this Stardust class would give him the same adrenaline rush as the heavy rain. Chin Ming let out a breath and turned off the panel first without thinking too much. He will still have plenty of time to do things that are familiar to him at the Stardust level. He now still needs to put the consciousness of the newly awakened insect queen into its body that he had previously sent to the mechanical planet. Originally, Chin Ming thought he needed his help to update the genes in the insect queen's body. After all, the insect queen's body was left behind by the insect queen. And it has now evolved again. But when Chin Ming expressed this intention, the insect queen took the initiative to transfer its consciousness and landed on the old body on the planet. Then, Chin Ming saw that the body was experiencing psychic fluctuations, and countless purple hyphae grew on it, swallowing the body in reverse and forming a cocoon by absorbing the energy crystals left by Chin Ming. After a while, a brand new insect queen's body emerged from the cocoon, hibernating deep underground. The process of reproduction began. Chen Ming couldn't understand, but he was greatly shocked. In short, after this, the insect queen needs to breed an insect nest that is dangerous enough to the mechanical race. And it is also necessary to move the insect nest to an appropriate distance from the mechanical city. This gave Chin Ming enough time to get familiar with the new spacecraft and absorb the new spiritual nerf. Chapter 189 Raid A week later, Chin Ming arrived near the mechanical race galaxy with a fleet of five cruisers, including Supreme Point, Stardust, Brilliance, Glory, and Defender. The appearance of these five cruisers has undergone some subtle or obvious changes since a week ago. These changes all have a common feature, which is to make the spacecraft itself more suitable for playing its own role. The source of these changes is the improvement of Chin Ming's spiritual power after absorbing the new spiritual nerve. Just a few days ago, after the Qiling nerve arrived, Chin Ming imitated the situation in which he absorbed the Ling nerve. At the moment when he stimulated his mental power to the extreme using various equipment taken from the Afterglow Research Institute, he absorbed the spiritual enlightenment nerve that Bai Quan gave him that had not been specially cultivated. The difference from last time was that Chen Ming did not fall into a coma this time, but completed the entire process of absorbing the spiritual nerve soberly, and he clearly senses the changes in his spiritual energy, allowing the spiritual nerve to be completely and completely absorbed, completely becoming the nourishment of his spiritual energy. At this point, Chen Ming's mental power increased significantly. When Chen Ming absorbed his first spiritual nerve, he could only control destroyers with his spiritual power. But now, he could control cruisers. Now, Chin Ming's mental power has jumped from being able to control nearly five cruisers to being able to control seven at the same time. Chin Ming felt that his ability to control the mental power of ten cruisers was a key point. By then, he might be able to control the next level of spaceship. Of course, more may be needed. After all, the difference between battleships and cruisers seems to be greater than the difference between cruisers and destroyers. But at least Chen Ming can see the goal. Then it is possible to achieve the goal. In addition to the progress in mental power, Chen Ming's spiritual power also has new abilities. Chen Ming's most basic maintenance ability, which he had from the very beginning, has an additional branch, an outrageous option called deep repair. Its effect is not limited to damage on various things controlled by Chen Ming but affects more essential places. It can repair some problems with the theoretical design of some Chen Ming-controlled spacecraft or equipment, making these things more consistent with their own functions and closer to perfection. The price is still a huge consumption of mental energy for Chen Ming, but the mental energy is restored after sleeping, so it is almost not consumed. It's just that Chen Ming has been in a coma every day for the past week. Of course, there are some things that this ability cannot do. That is, it can only perform in-death repairs on the objects that Chen Ming's ability works on. In other words, when Chen Ming performs in-death repairs on the cruiser, the only object he can repair is the cruiser itself. Any additional equipment components, such as spacecraft armor, 
tachyon spears, and shield modules that can be removed and installed it will, will not be affected. Unless Chenning specifically performs in-depth repairs on these things. The mental energy consumed will not change and is still quite terrifying. Only the spacecraft structure, basic control equipment, or the plasma system exclusive to the Brilliance class that are part of the spacecraft will be optimized along with the cruiser itself. But the problem is not big. The optimization of the spacecraft itself also includes various radiation transportation routes. These alone can enhance the performance of the spacecraft itself by at least 20%. What's more, Chen Ning's spiritual power is not limited to this. And there are more optimizations in the details of ship application in combat. Many of them are optimizations that Chen Ming cannot understand even when he is driving a cruiser and drawing blueprints with 3D imaging. The overall combat effectiveness is improved by at least 50%. Although the in-depth maintenance, which is the highest point of the exploration ship, seems to be more focused on exploration and protective operations, the offensive capabilities are slightly reduced. Moreover, the mental energy consumed in every in-depth maintenance in the past has reached an abnormal level. But at least Chen Ming was still very happy every time he fell into a coma. Because this means that there are still many places where his spiritual power can be explored. Shipling had previously shown the ability to transform directly from the microscopic level when Chen Ming condensed the second source of condensed spiritual energy. But now this essential repair ability has not been shown. Which shows that Chen Ning can at least rely on the advancement of spiritual energy to obtain the ability that the ship's spirit can master in advance. There is still more potential to be explored in psychic powers. And for a psyker, this is definitely something worth celebrating. And in the past week, Chen Ning spent six days focusing on the cruiser. These six cruisers include the five currently launched by Chen Ming, as well as the refraction class heavy unmanned cruiser operated by HR, whose attitude has softened a lot recently as a guarantee of the combat effectiveness of the temporary stronghold. For the rest of the day, Chen Ning gave his mental power to the Queen of Insects. You can also carry out deep repair on the biomass spacecraft and the Insect Queen, who is the core of the biomass spacecraft. At that time, Chen Ning also specially brought the consciousness of the Insect Queen, which had been developing for a day near the mechanical city he wanted to attack, back into its body. Then he activated the ability he had just acquired, and which he had already used once on the highest point. Then, the insect queen exploded. The entire body exploded, leaving only the brain, the carrier of the queen's consciousness, still twitching in place. But this does not mean failure, but rather part of a deep repair process. The broken zerg flesh and blood tissue was rewoven under the influence of Chen Ming's spiritual energy. A large number of invalid gene fragments that may have been broken from the zerg genes left over from ancient times were all cleared away by Chen Ming's spiritual power. All genetic fragments that had no significance to the race were also cut off. It restores simplicity to the Worm Queen's already somewhat bloated genes. Of course, all the previous statements were incomprehensible. He could only see that the exploding body of the Insect Queen was constantly secreting dark, rotten liquid. It is the consciousness of the Queen of Insects that transmits to Chen Ming in real time what impact his spiritual energy will have on the Queen of Insects. While the remaining body tissues were expelling the liquid, they were gradually stuck together under the pull of the hyphae that had become part of the Zerg and returned to their original state. The content of the last consciousness transmitted by the Queen of Insects that Chen Ning obtained before his mental power was exhausted was that the spiritual energy it obtained by swallowing psychic fungi was even more enhanced. It was here that Chen Ming understood the effect of the Insect Queen's psychic energy. It is the most simple and crude ability to strengthen physical fitness through spiritual energy. And this spiritual energy is not placed on a single insect queen, but on the hive mind of the entire insect hive. The hive mind is the brain of the Zerg. And it makes perfect sense for psychic powers to be hosted on the hive mind network. Chen Ming immediately thought of a possibility along this line of thinking. But it was immediately interrupted by his exhausted mental energy. And he fell into a coma. When Chen Ming woke up, he saw that the size of the insect nest that the insect queen had already developed on the planet he controlled had shrunk by a full quarter. All the disappearing bugs were absorbed and devoured by the queen last night and used to complete the process of deep repairs. After this process was completed, the insect queen did not directly start to update the zerg individuals. Instead, she transferred her consciousness to another body again and continued to complete the goals set by Chen Ming. Until today, a week later, at this time, Chen Ming, who was at the highest point of one of the five cruisers in space, was observing the entire mechanical colony through the scanning array. And only he saw this scene. In the end, 
He still did not open the real-time broadcast to buy Quan. It can only be said that some things are best not exposed until he is ready. Of course Bai Quan also understood this and knew that Qin Ming had many secrets that could not be known to others. So he didn't say much. I just hope that Qin Ming can send him a video later and give him the parts he can see. Of course Qin Ming could meet this requirement. And he really needed the commanding teachings Bai Quan gave him. Anyway, when the time comes, just edit it a little and put what can be shown in the video. For example, right now, before the Zerg has set off, the image recorded by the Supreme Point scanning array is showing the appearance of the mechanical city. The city itself is still almost the same as before, with only some less obvious developments and no sense that they are about to face disaster. But having said that, it is still quite troublesome to actually fight. After all, attacking a city with complete defense facilities is a risky behavior in itself. But there are enough profit promoters behind Shen Ming to let him do it. There are three ways to attack such a city in the air, on the ground and underground. Qin Ning ruled out the air immediately. Because the Zerg, which is the main means of siege, are not flying creatures. Although some of them do have the ability to fly. Not all of them can fly. Moreover, after Qin Ming completely captures the space orbital defense facilities and possible subsequent support, the sky is actually not a very safe and suitable place for attack. And the remaining two methods are above ground and underground. The underground was also excluded because Qin Ming knows the city of the mechanical race very well, and his knowledge has been verified through scanning at the highest point. The underground of the entire mechanical city is made up of a tight combination of high-strength steel columns and steel plates, which bear the weight of the entire city, unless the Zerg have the power to directly overturn a city. Attacking from underground is not a wise choice. Of course, Qin Ming also considered hollowing out the soil and rock layers beneath the entire mechanical city and letting the entire city sink underground. But through Qin Ming's understanding of the mechanical clan he controlled, it was clear that the mechanical clan had an attack method targeting the underground, relying on the mechanical city itself to generate powerful vibrations deep underground. Judging from the performance of the relevant equipment Qin Ming found in his city, even the current Zerg race cannot withstand the attack of the mechanical race using cities as weapons. If they are not careful, they will be shocked to death. So there was only one way left. Attack from the front. Although this is the most difficult path, Qin Ming believes that the Insect Queen, which has evolved many times and has been strengthened by his spiritual power, will not let him down. After the cruiser arrived at the predetermined combat position, Qin Ming sent the information to the Insect Queen to start taking action, and he himself started this battle initiated by himself from space. The five cruisers entered the jump state at the same time, and in just a few seconds appeared on the orbit of the mechanical colony planet. Between the orbital defense systems, even if the machine race had already started to react the moment it detected the transition wave appearing in the orbit. The speed at which the orbital defense facilities were deployed could not keep up with Qin Ming's activation of the spacecraft's weapons. The five cruisers had a total of 13 large weapons. And the torrent of particles emitted by the 13 tachyon lances instantly swept through the surrounding orbital defense facilities, destroying them before they had time to transform. The orbital defense facilities, covering one-fifth of the planet's equatorial orbit were completely wiped out in just 30 seconds, by the terrifying tachyon spears launched almost continuously. It has lost the ability to defend externally, and it has also lost the ability to turn these orbital defense facilities around to help ground operations. At this moment, Qin Ming's highest point suddenly detected a fluctuation caused by the transition appearing near the orbit. The jump interference device that Qin Ming had prepared long ago was activated instantly, completely disrupting the fluctuations of these jumps and directly interrupting this wave of additions to the mechanical clan. Perfect preparation makes it impossible for any unexpected situation to happen. In the blink of an eye, all the living forces of the mechanical race in space were completely wiped out by Qin Ning. However, he did not stop, but continued to command several cruisers to perform their tasks. He needs to place jamming equipment that can block the signal of the entire planet at the poles of the planet in front of him and in the direction facing the star. And it is also necessary to lock in the number and location of those orbital defense satellites that were not completely damaged in the raid just now. Dropping afterglow instances on them. Controlling them becomes part of his combat abilities. At times like this, more firepower means more possibility of victory. After completing this step, while waiting for the second wave of additional members of the mechanical clan, Jin Ming was finally able to take some time to take a look at the situation on the ground. At this time, we are on the edge of the mechanical colony city. The pitch black carapace made the Zerg race like a pitch black tsunami. 
rushing towards the city crumbling in the waves. Obviously, the Zerg commanded by the Queen of Insects also had an advantage. Among the insect waves, what caught Shin Ming's attention the most was a huge insect unit that appeared at the front of the mechanical race's temporary defense line. The appearance is similar to the pitch black Zerg that Shin Ming has seen from the Queen's genes. But it is larger, and the thickness of its front carapace has forced it into the armor of the cruiser. It charged ahead of the rest of the Zerg race, using its body to resist the firepower of the mechanical race. Relying on brute force, he shattered several lines of defense built by the mechanical race. There are almost no weapons on the ground that can cause enough damage to it. It was forced to withstand countless attacks that could tear the rest of the bugs into pieces and protected most of the bugs behind it. Destroyed the machine race's dream of blocking the Zerg race from the city. Even though most of the Zerg, who took on huge amounts of damage fell on the way to the charge. But as long as the Zerg are allowed to enter a more complex environment inside the city, even if it is just on the edge of the city, they will be able to perform better on the flat land. And some Zerg that the Queen has been hiding can finally play a suitable role in the right position. Chen Ning saw a group of small flying Zerg with Elytra and a relatively bloated abdomen flying out of the cave dug by the Zerg. Under the cover of the Zerg on the ground, he dodged countless anti air fires, rushed into the city, and took the initiative to self destruct above the area where the mechanical race was densest. Countless amounts of Zerg blood fell from the sky, almost dyeing the ground of the city the color of Zerg blood. The blood of the Zerg has not lost its initial properties due to the first two evolutions and still maintains the ability to attack the mechanical race. In the blood splashing all over the sky, a large number of mechanical tribe individuals gradually lost their combat capabilities and could only be crushed by the subsequent charging Zerg tribe. And unknowingly, a deep purple carpet gradually spread from the cave where the Zerg appeared to the city, accelerating its expansion while absorbing the Zerg corpses. On this layer of carpet that can provide a steady supply of nutrients to the Zerg, the Zerg's combat effectiveness can also increase significantly. The defense line of the mechanical clan was broken again and again. As the environment becomes more complex, some special bugs with the appearance of worms have appeared again, half lurking in the ground. They themselves are extremely fragile, but they can spit out high-energy liquids formed by melting very unstable energy crystals. When these liquids are impacted by any severe external force, they will produce some reactions that Chen Ning likes very much. Explode? The power is comparable to the explosion of left diameter explosives. Although it may not be able to completely blow up the armor of the mechanical clan, it can easily shatter the internal structure of the mechanical clan through impact. These special new species of bugs all were the result of the communication between Chen Ming and the insect queen in the past week. The idea was put forward by Chen Ming and the result was realized by the late Qing dynasty. After Chen Ming used deep repair on the insect queen last time, the insect queen had completely cleaned out the useless parts of the genes and mastered the valuable parts of the genes. Therefore, it has the ability to rub all kinds of zerg with its hands. And it can even do some things that Chen Ming didn't expect at first. Just like the kind of worm-like bugs that half burrow into the ground. Chen Ming's initial idea was to evolve the zerg queen to be able to directly spray offensive liquids or directly spray zerg blood to interfere with the mechanical tribe as a long-range unit for zerg combat. But the insect queen simply relied on the knowledge in Chen Ming's mind and the various natural biological materials it knew to liquefy the energy crystals and construct a dangerous liquid similar to the effect of left diameter explosives. Even though there are not many of these bugs because they are fragile and indeed very dangerous. In actual combat, they were able to create liquid energy crystals with constant nutrient supply. And the auxiliary insect swarm broke through the defense circle inside the mechanical city with overwhelming force. However, the mechanical tribe is not just for a living. It did take some time to continuously break through several defense circles on the periphery and within the city, so that the machine race could finally organize a decent resistance. As various combat units of the mechanical tribe arrived in the direction of the Zerg attack from all over the city, the momentum of the Zerg attack finally suffered a setback, and the losses instantly increased. In particular, it is a flying mechanical unit of the mechanical family. It has a similar appearance to the flying mantis Jingmanis that Chen Ning had seen before, but it is lighter and can fly in the sky for a long time. After it occupies the commanding heights of the battlefield, it is difficult for Zerg flying units to break through its sniping attacks. It is also difficult to resist it. And with the emergence of these flying robots, Chen Ning also noticed that some optical stealth combat robot units appeared on the battlefield. They wander on the edge of the battlefield. And if they get the chance, they will pierce into the heart of the insect nest like ghosts. 
assassinating the jet worms among the assassin insects, which are the greatest threat to the mechanical race. If you kill one of them, they will immediately burst out with more terrifying mobility than the flying mantis and evacuate the battlefield in an instant. Only a body was left that was about to explode. As these two mechanical bodies gradually began to affect the battlefield situation, the blazing silkworm that Chen Ning had seen before also appeared on the front line of the battlefield. But when he saw them, Chen Ning breathed a sigh of relief. These fiery silkworms are all about 10 meters in size. When they activate their weapons, they will emit raging heat waves and scorching red light, like a huge red iron. It hit the Zerg, and at the same time activated their flamethrower mode for close combat. But it was just as Chen Ning had predicted before. When these flames that stretch for nearly a hundred meters cover the Zerg, a large amount of blood will actively overflow from the gaps in the Zerg's carapace, extinguishing the flames and releasing a large amount of acid mist. It does not affect the Zerg's vision, but it will affect the oxygen content in the air and slow down the combustion efficiency. The Zerg can live in space and in a vacuum, and the lack of breathable air is nothing to them. And the fungi under the Zerg's feet will also undergo some changes when burned by flames. The fungus will turn into the viscous fluid like the insect queen did when she just woke up from the cocoon, which can greatly slow down the damage caused by the fire. And when the flames sprayed by the flame-boosting silkworms are mixed with fuel and sprinkled on the bacteria carpet, the fungus blanket can even eat and digest these combustion accelerants directly, just like the rigid digestive sac of a queen worm digests all kinds of strange food. The fungus carpet on the ground has inherited this ability of the insect queen. The combination of these factors has resulted in the damage that fire can cause to the current Zerg race, which is not even one-third of the damage that the Zerg queen received when she attacked another mechanical race city. However, in addition to this close-range flamethrower mode, Chizikin also has another ability to cover clusters of powerful artillery that Chen Ning has also seen. Although the city of the mechanical tribe is still in the development stage, there are still a number of blazing silkworms divided into two waves. As the Chizikin on the front line lost the battle, a sharp, intertwined roar suddenly appeared in the sky. Chapter 190 Advancement The sound that suddenly appeared in the sky was the sharp whistle of a volley of blazing cannons. Blazing Silkworm's long-range artillery is not pure fire damage, but also comes with secondary damage from explosion impact. If it hits a dense swarm of insects, the effect will be very terrifying. Chen Ning had witnessed this scene with his own eyes, so he knew that he must not let this scene happen. At this moment, a new type of insect suddenly appeared behind the insect tide. The appearance is similar to that of vesicular worms, but they are obviously different from vesicular worms. What it sprays is not acid, but a liquid that condenses quickly in the air. And this rapidly condensing liquid has the pitch black of the Zerg carapace and the bright green of the Zerg energy crystals. This makes the sharp cone formed by the liquid solidifying during flight possessing extremely strong penetrating properties and the property of exploding after being destroyed. It is a biological type armor piercing explosive bomb. Although the coverage area is smaller than another type of bug that directly sprays a large amount of liquefied unstable energy crystals. But the ability to blast at fixed points is obviously not comparable to that of another bug. Moreover, these throat muscles have been developed to the point where the crystal cones ejected by the bloated bugs can fly at a faster speed, distance, and with greater accuracy. And this means that they can intercept the cannons of the blazing silkworms that are falling in the sky. The planet where the Zerg and machine races are fighting has no atmosphere. In the sky, apart from the flaming wreckage of the destroyed orbital defense satellites and the distinctive postures of the five cruisers, what's left is the continuous firing of blazing silkworms. Each shot is hotter and redder than the previous one. And in the end, it is even close to pure white artillery SH. LS. Dozens of bugs that fired crystal cones were scattered throughout the insect wave and it was easy to locate the impact points and trajectories of these artillery pieces. I saw countless huge fireballs exploding in the air. In an instant, the earth that is at night on this planet is as bright as day. However, bugs are not machines, and their actual actions cannot be 100% accurate. Moreover, the long-range ability of the Zerg is ultimately its weakness. It is impossible for these bugs to guarantee that every crystal cone launched can accurately hit the artillery SH, LS falling at high speed in the sky there will still be some fish that slip through the net. Even if there are not many of them, each SH, I can cause serious damage to the Zerg. And those blazing silkworms located in the center of the mechanical city and behind the battle line did not face any threat from the Zerg. The moment their weapons finished cooling down, the second batch of artillery fired by the blazing silkworms once again appeared above the battlefield, 
above the heads of the Zerg. The almost continuous artillery SH. LS were like a sort of Damocles, threatening the Zerg offensive front. If these blazing silkworms are not dealt with, it will be difficult for the Zerg to continue to gain an advantage on the battlefield. Instead, they will gradually be regained by the machine tribe. So, Chin Ming took action directly. He activated the Tachyon Spear at the highest point, which had been adjusted in advance, and fired at the path of the cannonball fired from the blazing silkworm cannon. Without the interference of the atmosphere, this oblique torrent of particles from space swept across the sky, accurately annihilating all the artillery SH. LS fired by the blazing silkworm cluster in the city. And as the firing of the Tachyon Spear came to an end, Chin Ming controlled the aftermath of the torrent of particles to bypass the mechanical cruiser in the center of the city and headed towards the blazing silkworm cluster with fire and explosions. Location. Large weapons are a dimensionality reducing blow to almost all ground units. Even the last remaining aftermath will instantly destroy these blazing silkworm clusters that can pose a sufficient threat to the Zerg. When the torrent of particles from the Tachyon Spear subsided, a blazing red trace that was nearly 10,000 meters wide and tens of meters wide was left on the planet's land due to its angular deflection. An ugly scar was carved in the city of the mechanical tribe. This scene shocked Chen Ming, the instigator. But for the two sides, the Zerg and the machines, who had just experienced a devastating torrent of particles overhead, what just happened didn't affect them at all. They continue to fight desperately. It's just that the Zerg no longer have the worries of being in the center of the city and can charge towards their goals more unscrupulously. The larger long-range combat units that can launch crystal cones created by the Queen of Worms can completely output firepower on the frontal battlefield without the need to continue to intercept artillery. And as the Zerg continued to advance, another new Zerg appeared on the battlefield. Chen Ming was stunned for a moment when he saw this new bug, because it was not a bug that he and the Queen had discussed and actively created. But just now, the Insect Queen herself poured out a new thing on the battlefield. This worm also has an appearance similar to that of a cis worm, and has well-developed neck musculature. What it can spit out are balls of purple fungus flowing with thick fluid, which will explode directly after flying a certain distance in the air. These exploded fungal sap is extremely viscous and remains connected to each other, forming a huge catching net. It is used to restrict those flying mechanical units in the sky and prevent them from suppressing the insects on the ground unscrupulously. Even the fungal net has difficulty catching these units that can notice the movements of the Zerg react in advance to the crystal cones launched by other Zerg, and flexibly dodge past them. But as long as these mechanical tribes give up the attack and dodge, it means that the Zerg tribe did not spit out the fungus ball in vain. And even if the fungus ball misses, it can restrict the actions of other mechanical races after falling on the ground. Or it can be directly used to expand the fungus blanket. Or it may be reabsorbed by the existing fungi carpet on the ground and turned into nutrients to continue supplying the bugs with the next round of fungus balls. And this bug is only playing a supporting role now. The real killer move against the air is another new bug that will appear later. A kind of insect created by Chen Ning after discussing with the insect queen. It has a similar appearance to a flying zerg, like a self annulling bug. But the difference is that it has four jet black sickle-shaped limbs and a dexterous sharp tail that also has a blade. Although it is not necessarily possible to cut off the dolomite armor, it is definitely not difficult to cut off the fragile joints. The most important thing is that the number of these bugs is far more exaggerated than the number of flying mechanical bodies of the mechanical tribe. Only three minutes after the first flying zerg appeared on the battlefield, the sky over the mechanical city was already covered in darkness. This is the ability of the queen to reproduce. And it is also the result of Chen Ming's cultivation of the queen during this period. It has to be said that melee combat is the zerg's strongest ability. It was the same even after Chen Ming used his spiritual power to deeply repair the insect queen. As the flying Zerg completely took over the initiative in the sky, the Zerg quickly eliminated all the mechanical flying units that dared to fly in the sky. However, the shortcomings of the Zerg were immediately exposed. In other words, the shortcoming of all carbon-based organisms is that they are afraid of fire. Even though the Zerg have various means to suppress the damage of fire, suppression also requires the assistance of various environments. For example, the dense swarm of Zerg on the ground can share damage with each other. A large amount of acidic liquid volatilizes into non-combustible gas. And the carpet under the Zerg's feet can also inhibit the spread of fire. The combination of various factors allow the Zerg to resist the fire damage of the blazing silkworm on the front line. Dragging the machine race with it despite the fierce output. But suppressing the flames isn't about completely ignoring them. Therefore, in the sky, 
the blazing silkworm flame can actually exert its due effect. This resulted in hundreds of torrents of flames, with terrifying coverage instantly appearing in the city. A large area of the Zerg covering the front was instantly cleared, revealing the appearance of space again. The Worm Queen was forced to temporarily give up its air superiority, allowing these Zerg to retreat temporarily and look for other opportunities. However, the mechanical tribe also did not dare to reoccupy the sky immediately. Otherwise, the flying Zerg that had just retreated would surely return to the battlefield in an instant and hunt down the few flying units of the mechanical tribe. It doesn't matter even if he risks being burned extensively by the fiery silkworms on the front line. The Zerg can use the creep to quickly recover corpses. But the machine race cannot do this. So at this time, the battlefield returned to pure ground combat. Although the Insect Queen has solved the troubles in the sky, the troubles on the ground have not necessarily diminished. The invisible units of the mechanical tribe are still constantly breaking into the insect tide to assassinate. Even if some are completely left behind due to the fast reaction of the Zerg, there is no way to prevent more invisible units from continuing to appear and assassinate the fragile remote output Zerg, causing the explosions after their death to spread to other bugs. Even if there is a carpet of bacteria that absorbs the dead bugs immediately, it cannot completely prevent the unstable liquid energy crystal from exploding. And there's another problem. Even these fiery silkworms on the front line are gradually starting to get into trouble. Although the flames they spray are indeed not effective against the Zerg, who have various means. But as Blazing Silkworm continues to use flame weapons, the heat emitted from Blazing Silkworm's body is constantly increasing. This high heat contained in the steel can cause irresistible damage to the Zerg's body in close contact. The size of the Blazing Silkworm itself means that it is not only capable of long-range attacks, but its melee capabilities are also very good. With the cooperation of these two points, it is almost difficult for the frontline soldiers of the Zerg to gain an advantage over the Blazing Silkworms. However, the Insect Queen quickly came up with solutions to these two problems. Spores once again appeared on fungal carpets that originally did not need to be spread and reproduced due to the situation of the Zerg itself. And it was controlled by the Queen of Insects to actively raise it, covering the entire battlefield. It was also carried by more insects and continued to spread to the surroundings. Countless purple spots are extremely conspicuous in an environment filled with twisted flames and constantly disturbed acidic gases. Of course, Conspicuousness is not the main purpose. It is useless to be conspicuous on this chaotic battlefield. What the Insect Queen wants to do is to make these fungi become the sensory organs extended by the surrounding Zerg. Any machine race that wants to fight the Zerg will inevitably come into contact with these fungi. Once touched, these fungi will immediately stick to the target and emit positioning pheromones to the surrounding Zerg in real time. The invisible units of the mechanical family are no exception. In the past, they were able to move freely in the insect swarm by relying on their mobility to roam around the battlefield and their concealment that could not be accurately targeted. The moment they find the opportunity to step on the creep, the interception is impossible. So the insect queen simply covered the entire battlefield under the fungus, without the invisibility effect of the optical camouflage. Such a machine clan is just an enhanced model of the flying mantis. As for the burning silkworm that has entered a state of high fever, there is only one solution. Using the huge bugs added later by the Insect Queen, they relied on their astonishingly thick carapace to crush the blazing silkworms. When there is no good way to deal with it, directly suppressing people with force is obviously the most efficient way. The high heat on these fiery silkworms cannot directly harm the flesh protected by the carapace through the extremely thick carapace. After all the means of the machine race that could pose a threat to the Zerg race were eliminated, once again, the Zerg had the upper hand. Once again, they advanced quite a distance into the mechanical city. But just when the Zerg were about to advance into the core area of the mechanical city, suddenly the Zerg were met with resistance again. Some stubby figures larger than blazing silkworms appeared in the mechanical city. Some of them are equipped with two huge cannons with a diameter of nearly 40 centimeters. And the cannon body has already flashed with electric light similar to the electromagnetic javelin's electromagnetic weapon energy storage. After a familiar sound like a sledgehammer hitting each other. The SH. LS flashing with bright electric arcs directly penetrated the bodies of almost all the giant Zerg at the front of the battle line, and landed among the Zerg at the rear. The SH. L exploded violently immediately, with violent impact and flashing arcs hitting the surrounding Zerg. Broken carapace and severed limbs flew together, and the extremely solid black carapace could hardly protect against these SH. LS. The insect swarm instantly suffered heavy casualties. Chin Ming recognized them the first time he saw them. These were centipedes, the main combat units of the mechanical tribe. 
Chin Ming didn't know why this thing that looked like a shortened version of a caterpillar, but had many small limbs supporting it was called a centipede. But it was indeed recorded in the paper about the mechanical family. These mechanical centipedes are usually equipped with three weapons. Namely Hellfire Cannon, Charge Cannon and Charge Machine Gun, and the one that can penetrate the Zerg armor with the strongest protective capabilities with just one shot, and cause an arc explosion at the impact point of the SH. L is probably the Charge Cannon. The main force of the mechanical race successfully stopped Chen Ming's Zerg in front of the core area of the city. Just when Chen Ming was wondering if the ground needed his support, he suddenly discovered that the second batch of support from the mechanical tribe had arrived in space. But this time, Chen Ming failed to use the equipment to stop them. It's not because Chen Ming doesn't have a second device. It's because the machine race didn't jump from any position that he judged could best affect the situation. They chose to jump to the other side of the planet, where Chen Ming's equipment could not affect them, and then flew around the planet. Chen Ming immediately realized that he still had too little experience in space combat. Otherwise, such a place should not be ignored. Although in order to avoid being blocked by Chen Ming's anti-jump device, the mechanical race can randomly select a landing point in the entire galaxy that they don't know to jump to, and then fly over. It can indeed be said that there is no way to stop it at all. And it is also the jump method chosen when knowing that the enemy has an anti-jump device under normal circumstances. Although it will cause a delay in joining the battlefield. It is better than being unable to even jump. But since the jump location chosen by the mechanical tribe is on the other side of the planet. Such a place is very close and full of risks. Then it is indeed Chen Ming's problem to live unprepared. But it was just like what Bai Quan had suggested to remind him before. He would not put all his treasure on the successful function of the anti-jump device. It was an unexpected surprise to succeed for the first time. The second time. Just think that he made a mistake. In short, Chen Ming doesn't have much time to take care of the ground now. The main mechanical body of the mechanical clan on the ground can only be left to the insect queen to deal with. Chen Ming believed that the insect queen would not let him down. The reinforcements from the machinery clan that he now faces are the beginning of his assault on the machinery clan in the true sense. The fleet of the mechanical race is now advancing towards Chen Ming along the orbit of the orbital satellite defense facility. Their fleet consisted of a total of eight cruisers, 200 destroyers, and 200 frigates. It seems that they knew the situation on Chen Ming's side, and knew that he only brought out five cruisers and no escort fleet. So he configured such a fleet. He just wanted to rely on the suppression of the cruiser and the interference of the larger number of small ships to completely crush Chen Ming in all aspects. But to Chen Ming, boats and other things didn't matter at all. Because as long as the enemy can't directly blow up his cruiser, he can rely on his spiritual energy to maintain the shield and forcefully blow up all the small boats first. Drag the battle to a fair situation of big ship versus big ship. And then deal with the enemy cruisers. This time, it's no exception. As soon as the mechanical fleet entered the range of his spaceship, Chen Ming took the lead. A dozen beams of tachyon spears hit the mechanical fleet. As for Chen Ming's side, the mechanical race's boat was fully equipped with tachyon spears and had no room for resistance. As long as the spear was swept by, a series of fires exploded from the mechanical race's battle line. Generally speaking, in a normal, evenly matched cruiser class battle, as the main force of the fleet, the firepower of the cruiser needs to be output on the opponent's cruiser to prevent the entire battlefield situation from collapsing if the duel fails. This is especially true for the weaker side. Only by destroying one of the opponent's cruisers first can there be a chance of victory. But Chen Ning didn't need to think about this issue at all. He could just withstand the fire bombardment of the opponent's cruiser and kill all the boats on the opposite side. If the machine race dared to exchange the loss of his spiritual power for the loss of actual ships, then Chen Ning would be in trouble. The mechanical tribe obviously doesn't know this. In other words, anyone who fights against Chen Ning without knowing his abilities will think that Chen Ning is a fool when he sees Chen Ning using the radiation of the cruiser in exchange for damage to the boat. So the current mechanical race is in the same situation. They just let the small ships suffer losses, while the big ships continue to desperately deal with Chen Ming's ships. The weapons of the mechanical family are all equipped with live ammunition. Energy and missiles distributed very evenly. Although he may not necessarily specialize in any aspect, he can adapt to a variety of complex environments. But it's obviously not that good when it comes to outbreaks. So Chen Ming just kept silent and relied on his mental strength to endure the beatings from the machinery clan's weapons and cleaned all the machinery clan's boats. No ship can withstand the ravages of the almost unlimited tachyon spears. As time went by, the mechanical tribe finally discovered that something was wrong. 
Chin Ming's tachyon spears can be fired more frequently and intensively than normal. Moreover, the radiation energy that activates the tachyon spear to increase and the shield to withstand damage should have exceeded the upper limit of Chin Ming's ships long ago. These cruisers should have collapsed long ago. And it is impossible to say that they are still standing there. The mechanical cruiser's radiation capacity has reached nearly half under the continuous firepower output, and they have been outputting at a higher frequency. At the same time, there are no signs of overload on the shields of these ships that are still suffering damage. This strange situation caused the mechanical tribe to immediately slow down its fire offensive, and at the same time, the remaining ten small boats were ordered to retreat immediately. The mechanical tribe has slowed down their offensive, so Chen Ning has to take the initiative to put some pressure on them. The Stardust class, which had been fishing with its only tachyon spear in the rear position, opened all the flight deck doors on the left and right sides. Meteor drones similar to Heavy Rain's Terminator drones came out in droves. The tail flames of the meteor fighter jets drew arcs in space, sweeping towards the machine race fleet like Stardust all over the sky. As soon as the first batch of fighter jets left the hangar, Chin Ning used his repair power on the meteorite. Countless materials instantly condensed into a new batch of meteor fighter jets and flew out of the hangar again. Then came the third batch. Another 1,600 fighter planes in total swarmed towards the mechanical fleet and the entire battlefield was like a grand fireworks show. These meteor fighters continued to accelerate and overload during the flight, and their fuselage gradually began to turn red, exuding a red aura that seemed to be filled with the smell of blood. Under the influence of Chen Ming's repair power, it crashed into the mechanical cruiser with an overload efficiency several times higher than normal. At the same time, with the support of Chen Ming's unreserved mental power, he maintained the hull that had been overloaded countless times. Just for their last moment, Anyway, when the second and third batches of fighters left the warehouse, Chin Ming no longer expected these fighters to come back. He just wants to see Bo De Nao. Thousands of red meteors were seen bombarding the remaining cruiser of the mechanical race one after another. This number of meteor drones, which was ten times more than the total fleet of the mechanical race, all self-destructed in just ten seconds. The sensors could no longer see anything about the mechanical fleet. Chin Ming could only pass through the scanning array at the highest point, and the footage from the meteor fighter plane at the last moment before it self-destructed. It can be roughly seen that all the mechanical cruisers are finished. Five of the eight cruisers have exploded under the attack of meteorites, turning into several large pieces of space junk. The overloaded arcs, completely shattered armor, and crumbling hull structures of the remaining three cruisers have confirmed their failure, with Chen Ning winning the battle easily in space. He immediately began to control the highest point, and began to arrange various afterglow individuals to prepare to recover those cruisers as trophies. At the same time, just like before, he continued to pay attention to the situation of the Zerg on the ground. Chapter 191 Purgatory Chin Ming won the battle in space by relying on his uncanny psychic powers and the mechanical race, which had never encountered an enemy like him. However, after winning the battle, he discovered that the situation on the ground was not optimistic. Just when he quickly dealt with the second batch of additional members of the Machine Clan, the Insect Queen was counterattacked by the Machine Clan. The reason lies in the centipedes, the main mechanical body of the mechanical tribe that they encountered when they first entered the core area of the city. Those centipedes equipped with charged cannons can directly destroy the Zerg's most powerful front row human shield with a single SH. L. And the aftermath of the SH. L explosion after penetration will affect a large number of Zerg. Although a large Zerg cannot die even if such a hole with a diameter of 40 centimeters is opened in its body. This also means that it cannot share the damage with other Zerg. We can only allow explosions and arcs to wreak havoc among the insect swarms. So in the past 10 minutes, in front of the core area of the city, the mechanical tribe relied on the bombing of the organized centipede's charge cannon to suppress the number of the Zerg tribe. And the centipede of the mechanical race here is not only equipped with a charge cannon, but also two other weapons. Hellfire Cannon and Charge Machine Gun. The Hellfire Cannon is better. It is the Flame Cannon SH. L version of the Charge Cannon. And its penetration performance is even worse. But the Flame Damage Range after the SH. L Explodes is larger. However, the effect of Flames is not ideal when the Zerg on the ground have various means to counterattack. On the contrary, Pure Impact or other damage is more effective in killing the Zerg. For example, Chin Ming was previously forced to use the long-range artillery bombardment of the blazing silkworm supported by the tachyon spear at the highest point. And now the electric arc generated by the explosion of the charged cannon. Both types of damage can be devastating to the Zerg. 
The charge machine gun also has the ability to destroy the Zerg. The charge machine gun is said to be a machine gun. But it is no different from a machine gun. The diameter of the bullet has reached the point where it can break the limbs of the Zerg at will. And it also has the same terrifying penetrating ability as the charge cannon SH. L. Coupled with the high rate of fire of the machine gun itself. And the special performance of the charged bullet exploding at the point of impact. Producing a violent arc. Let these bullets penetrate the front row of Zerg in batches and cause frequent damage to other Zerg. In the dense insect swarm, the strength is much higher than that of the Hellfire Cannon. It was these three centipedes equipped with different types of weapons that led the rest of the mechanical race to suppress the advancement of the Zerg race and even looked like they were about to counterattack. Just when Chen Ning was about to start the idea of supporting the ground that he had just before encountering the second wave of reinforcements from the mechanical tribe, he suddenly discovered that a batch of fungi suddenly rose up on the carpet under the Zerg's feet. And the density of fungi is higher than before. Like a purple curtain covering the Zerg and machine races on the front line. Although there are blazing silkworms and centipedes equipped with H, fire cannons that are quickly cleaning up these fungi flying in the sky. When the coverage area and density of the fungi reach a certain level, the flames cannot completely remove them. At most, all the fungi that fell on the extremely high temperature silkworms would die. Most of the other mechanical races on the front line are still covered by these fungi. Chin Ning noticed the specialness of these fungi as soon as they started to appear. They are not the fungi that the previous insect queens used to sense the invisible units of the mechanical race. Or it is not right to say that they are fungi. Because Chin Ning discovered that the key to the matter was not the raised fungi themselves. But the tiny bugs hidden inside the fungi. This was not a bug that Chin Ming and the queen had created in advance. But a new bug that the queen had just cultivated. The only things that allow the queen to breed new insects are those centipedes that are difficult to handle. This is the method used by the insect queen to target the centipede. Chen Ning withdrew his hand from the control panel of the Supreme Point and continued to read. It just so happened that he also wanted to know where the insect queen's limits were, as a large number of fungi attached to the bodies of the mechanical race on the front line. Chen Ming discovered that these fungi gradually spread on the mechanical bodies, infiltrating into the body through the gaps between their armor and structures. From the perspective of other Zerg species, one cannot see what the fungi and bugs that infiltrated into the mechanical body are doing next. So Chen Ming immediately connected his consciousness to one of these microzergs, broadcasting what they saw to his eyes in real time. It is not accurate to say that what they saw is actually not accurate. These microzergs have no vision. They rely on their own special structure and the surrounding fungi to perceive the surrounding environment. And because Chen Ming used the hive mind network, and the auxiliary access of psychic energy to access the nerves of the miniature Zerg to obtain the pictures that these Zerg see. Therefore, Chin Ming's perspective felt extremely distorted at this time. But after getting used to it for a while, he got used to it and understood what the tiny bugs were doing. These Zergs that have infiltrated into the mechanical race use the fungi that protect them to take root directly in place. By absorbing the extremely tiny energy crystals it carries and the energy of the machine race itself, it strengthens itself and continues to spread. These fungi gradually spread to the bottom of the mechanical body and returned to the outside world and came into contact with the carpet that had unknowingly expanded to the feet of the mechanical race and connected with the carpet, with the nutrients provided by the carpet. The fungi in the machine race grow even more rapidly. Almost in the blink of an eye, the entire machine clan was completely filled. Just when Chen Ning thought it was over, the micro bug could completely kill such a machine in just one step. He suddenly discovered that these tiny insects hiding in the bodies of the mechanical tribe had suddenly formed cocoons, just like the queen of insects. However, unlike insect queens, they do not break out of their cocoons. Instead, countless nerve-like tentacles grew directly from the cocoon and gradually spread to the entire body of the machine race along with the fungus in the body of the machine race. Chin Ning then used the sensor to see a charged cannon centipede that was covered in fungi. It suddenly turned its muzzle aimed at the rear of the mechanical clan's front, and fired a charge cannon. Immediately afterwards, other mechanical races that were completely covered by fungi and allowed the microzergs inside to develop to the cocoon stage also made the same move. They are controlled by the microzero race, betrayed by the machine race, and used against their kind. Chin Ming didn't know how the insect queen learned to control the mechanical body. It might be that the insect queen learned and used it now. It may also be that some of the knowledge in his head is shared through the cellular network. But in any case, the Worm Queen did manage to launch another powerful attack before being pushed back. 
although such parasites cannot target those fiery silkworms that maintain high temperatures at all times. The fiery silkworms alone cannot play a decisive role, because the number of mechanical races that were covered by fungi just now was at least 3,000. And this happened to nearly 2,000 mechanical races within these 3,000 miles. The situation on the ground battlefield has completely changed. With the betrayal of the centipede, the trump card of the machine race, the Zerg immediately broke through the defense line set up by the machine race at the edge of the city's core circle, completely breaking the machine race's resistance. Chen Ming also took advantage of the favorable situation on the battlefield to communicate with the insect queen. After learning about this miniature bug, it turned out that it was a bug that the queen of bugs had just barely evolved based on it and made reference to the genes of parasitic animals and plants. Whatever is needed on the battlefield, the insect queen can evolve. This is the ability of the insect queen. It seems that the insect queen doesn't need his follow-up help very much. After thinking about it, Jin Ming decided to arrange for the cruiser to land on the planet in advance, preparing for the Zerg to start capturing the remaining individuals of the mechanical race. After all, the main purpose of Chen Ming's raid this time was not to completely kill the mechanical tribe on the planet, but to rob the mechanical tribe's population and the mechanical tribe's colony ship. It is obviously very difficult to kill the entire city when the mechanical race starfield next door may increase its numbers at any time. Although if Chen Ming really wants to destroy the city, it is not impossible. He can just let the cruiser's large weapons clean the ground. But even mechanical individuals without combat capabilities are quite meaningful to Chen Ming. Chen Ming would not do things like weapons washing that were harmful to others and not self-interested. It is the individual mechanical race that he grabs that is valuable to him. And now there just happen to be new bugs that can assist him in capturing the mechanical race. Now the front line has been pushed into the core of the city by the Zerg. The Zerg behind has spread in the city and begun to capture. The Zerg on the front line has already approached the cruiser in the center of the mechanical city and will immediately be able to completely paralyze all ground forces allowing the Zerg to take whatever they want. However, not long after Chen Ming started to implement his plan, the accident happened again, not far from the machine cruiser. A unique and huge machine that Chen Ming had never seen suddenly appeared. Its existence once again curbed the progress of the insect tide. The appearance of this mechanical family is similar to that of a centipede, but its size is fully double compared to the centipede's average size of about 20 meters. Its size on the ground battlefield can be said to be unparalleled, being 7 or 8 meters larger than the giant zerg. But just being huge doesn't mean anything. Just like a centipede can shoot through giant bugs with one shot. So if this machine was just an ordinary machine, the zerg would have simply run over it. But since it can contain the insect tide, this machine is obviously not ordinary. I saw that its whole body was exuding as high a temperature as a blazing silkworm. But the heat it contained was far hotter than that of a blazing silkworm. And this scorching heat, which was a fatal threat to the zerg, did not dissipate with the passage of time like the blazing silkworms. Instead, it gathered inside the body and actively transferred to the limbs and feet. It was transferred to the ground that had been specially modified by the mechanical clan in the mechanical clan city. The metal ground gradually began to shine due to the high temperature. A heat wave also suddenly rose from the environment around the city. The core area of the entire mechanical city is heating up at a terrifying speed with this machine at the center. The white city originally made of dolomite steel alloy is moving closer to the orange-red heat. The Zerg relied on their own ability to influence the environment to suppress the damage caused by the fire to them. And when the environment has gradually changed from a normal environment to an environment shrouded in high temperatures and flames, the Zerg's methods are somewhat less effective. Especially the creep that is in contact with the metal ground inside the mechanical city. The germ blanket that spread forward as the Zerg invaded gradually shriveled up. Lost water became deactivated, and even began to burn under the scorching heat that could cause a city to begin to heat up. Even if the insect queen continues to increase the supply of nutrients to the fungus carpet, it can only barely keep the growth rate of the fungus equal to the rate of loss. Once the supply of nutrients slows down a little, the carpet will be instantly burned into a puddle of dregs by the high temperature conducted by the metal, and will no longer be able to provide a steady stream of nutrients for the zerg on the front line. This is not just a problem that prevents the Zerg from moving forward. In addition to these high temperatures that have begun to affect the environment on a large scale, some mechanical buildings that are not made of dolomite steel alloy have even begun to melt. This machine race itself is destroying the city of the machine race. Even as the temperature spread by this machine family further increased, some buildings made of dolomite steel began to melt under this extreme high temperature. Burning flames and molten metal almost covered the path it walked 
and the Zerg it was about to encounter. It formed a scene like purgatory. Moreover, this machine race itself has a huge cannon that is almost as long as its body and looks like an electromagnetic gun installed on its back. Chin Ning has already seen the power of Centipede's weapons. This is a giant artillery carried by an individual of a very special mechanical race. It is definitely a terrifying weapon in ground combat. Although Chin Ning didn't have much contact with the mechanical clan, since he had more contact with Yu Hui, he had deliberately learned about the knowledge and news about the mechanical clan next door. And he had some understanding of the mechanical clan. But Chin Ning had never seen or understood the machine that appeared in front of the Zerg now. And he had never found anything similar to it in any of the information he had searched. But Chen Ning knew one thing clearly. This machine must have technology that truly surpasses this era. The heat emitted by a mechanical body that is no more than 40 meters tall can actually affect the environment of the surrounding city. Although it is not the entire city. And the mechanical city itself is basically made of metal. It is very easy to conduct heat. But a 40 meter sized body can heat up a coverage area of tens of kilometers to such an extent that it is definitely not something that modern technology can achieve. There must be powerful individual soldier skills left over from that civilization. Although Chen Ming only needs to ask one of the five cruisers in space to mobilize a large weapon. He can completely solve this problem with a tachyon spear. But after seeing the performance of this machine clan, he wanted more. Moreover, landing operations does not mean that we will always have the opportunity to directly use space weapons to carry out dimensionality reduction strikes on the ground as we do now. Obtaining such a special machine family is also of considerable benefit to him. So after seeing the impact of this machine, it and the city core cruiser behind it, Jin Ning wants them all. So now, he didn't wait for the insect queen to show off herself. The scanning array at the highest point that had already begun to descend directly started at full power, trying to find weaknesses in this machine that could quickly solve it. It's just that when this scanning array, which can scan the entire planet, scanned this mechanical family, the result it scanned was pitch black. In addition to the external armor and some exposed structures that can be scanned, the rest of the mechanical family seems to be covered with some special protective material, and the scanning array cannot scan it at all. But this is to be expected. Chin Ning could still analyze some of the details on the scanned surface to figure out that this machine seemed to be a temporary machine activated by the machine family. Many of the maintenance details are problematic, and it has obviously not been well maintained. Combat equipment and weapons that lack maintenance and upkeep often have problems during long-term use. Perhaps the only shortcoming of this machine family is that it lacks maintenance and cannot fight for a long time. It seems that the only way is to let the insect queen pile up directly based on the number, relying on the sacrifice of a large number of individual zerg, and just pile it up until it malfunctions. After receiving Chen Ming's order to try to capture the machine, the insect queen made the same choice as Chen Ming had just thought, commanding the zerg to continue charging. But at that moment, the bugs made new violent movements. The giant cannon on the back of the machine moved. The surrounding heat suddenly began to converge toward the giant cannon in a manner that violated the laws of physics. The gun barely emits a scorching red light. And the sides of the gun body violently emit violent airflow carrying extremely high temperatures. The threat posed by the orange-red laser beam emitted by its locking device made all the insect swarms crowded forward as if they had received extreme stimulation. Even without the command of the insect queen. But before the Zerg came into contact with the machine, the cannon had already fired. The moment it opened fire, the entire city seemed to sink into darkness. All light was absorbed by the giant cannon. In the blink of an eye, an area nearly a kilometer in diameter in front of the machine race was occupied by a fireball, with only a dazzling flash visible. Whether it was the Zerg race, the mechanical race that had not retreated to safety, or even the mechanical race's building itself, they were all covered by this fireball. And dozens of seconds later, the fire completely dissipated. All that was left was a deep pit. And at the bottom of the pit, there are large lakes formed by molten metal. Except for the mechanical race themselves and their own buildings. All that was left inside were the corpses of the Zerg race that had been burned to ashes. The power of this weapon is close to the power of large weapons normally only carried on cruisers. The Zerg suffered casualties in just a few seconds that were almost equal to the losses they suffered along the way. The entire front line was dragged back nearly a kilometer as a result. The mechanical race, which had been destroyed by the centipedes, who were controlled by parasites and turned against them, once again took advantage of this opportunity to reorganize. They are not afraid of this scorching environment like the Zerg. If the Zerg want to come again, they won't have as good a chance as before. Moreover, the high temperature of the surrounding environment has been rising. 
and it has begun to gradually affect the Zerg parasites in the bodies of the mechanical races. If this continues, these mechanical tribes mixed in the Zerg tribe may turn back again at any time. The insect queen can only be forced to let these parasites retreat to the outer city. Then, let the Zerg, who are still alive continue to rush towards the recast defense line of the mechanical race in the distance. Only one step away from the mechanical race's cruiser, the insect queen no longer worried about any casualties. Anyway, the consciousness of all Zerg individuals will return to the hive mind network at the moment of death, and their bodies will be reabsorbed by the carpet. It doesn't matter even if the corpse is not absorbed and is directly burned to ashes by the flames. From the moment Chen Ming put resources on this planet, he never thought about recycling them. He only needs those mechanical tribes. Time passed by minute by minute. The artillery of the special machine family has fired more than ten times in succession. The Zerg casualties have reached an incalculable level. Although Chen Ming could feel that the time it took for the machine to activate the giant cannon on its back was getting longer, which was obviously due to poor maintenance. But it has only become longer, and the key progress has not happened. There is no way for the Zerg to break the current deadlock. Chen Ming was also a little anxious at this time. It's absolutely not possible to continue like this. He must go faster. After all, the mechanical tribe is a hive mind. And everything that happens here is known to the mechanical tribe within the mechanical tribe star field. In other words, after the second batch of reinforcements from the mechanical tribe were easily killed by Chen Ming, the third batch of reinforcements from the mechanical tribe will definitely not make the same mistakes as before. The third group of mechanical tribes coming will most likely kill him. So now he is considering whether to give up this special machine family and instead only obtain his initial target, the machine family's colonial cruiser. But just when Chen Ning was about to give up, he suddenly realized something was wrong. The movements of that machine clan seemed to be slightly delayed. Either the delay is caused by component were due to lack of maintenance, or it is a weird delay that should not occur according to common sense. Chen Ming immediately said to Chao Fan at the highest point of his ride, Fried rice, do me a favor. I don't understand command. You don't need to understand. Please help me calculate the propagation time of the machine clan's communication signal and the delayed reaction time of the machine clan below every time it makes an action. Xiaofan didn't reply, but sent a string of data to Chen Ming a few seconds later. When Chen Ming saw this string of data, a glint flashed in his eyes, and he subconsciously said, That's it. What is this? Chen Ming once again cast his eyes on the special machine on the ground and said, that machine does not have a core chip. And all its actions are controlled by the cruiser. The strange delay he only noticed after a long battle was exactly the time delay required for the signal propagation of the cruiser behind. This machine is not a living machine at all. It is just a control body. Chen Ning finally found its fatal weakness. Chapter 192 Trap Chen Ning suddenly discovered that the method he had prepared before that he didn't pay much attention to had unexpected effects because according to the technical level of the machine race and another civilization, judging from the distance between this machine race and the machine race cruiser in the center of the city, there should not be any delay in the signal sent by the cruiser's control machine. The source of this situation now is because the three-component planet-level communication blocking device was activated by him shortly after the battle began, blocking communication signals inside and outside the entire planet. Although Chen Ning felt that the effect was not ideal at the time, Support from outside the mechanical clan came just as quickly. And because those orbital defense satellites that should be effective are fired too fast, even if the signal on the planet is blocked, there will be no subsequent effect. However, what Chen Ning thought at the beginning was that doing it would be better than not doing it. So he didn't care at all even if it had no practical use before. But he really didn't expect that a piece of equipment he had arranged casually, which he had already arranged a bit too much, would actually play a role at such a critical moment. Chen Ning did not hesitate after making this clear. Immediately, the three connected devices were remotely controlled to adjust their respective frequencies and slightly change their positions on the track. All the power of the equipment originally used to block communication signals inside and outside the entire planet was applied to the city of the mechanical race, where the Zerg and the mechanical race were fighting. The signal sent by the mechanical cruiser was completely disrupted, and all communication signals in the entire city were completely cut off. All signals except Chen Ming will be silent for a short time on the entire planet. And that special machine became paralyzed after it completed the last command it received. Without the support of this special machine race, the remaining machine races have no ability to resist in front of the Zerg, whose overall number has not been significantly reduced yet. It was defeated by the Zerg very easily. 
the insect queen once again splashed the fungi and the blood of the zerg unscrupulously. Relying on the effects of these special substances to continuously lower the temperature on the battlefield. At the same time, they are also trying to lower the temperature of that special machine. In just a few minutes, the surrounding environment returned from the orange red color to the pure white color at the beginning. The molten metal liquid under the giant crater blasted out by the special machine body was almost solidified. At this time, the Zerg race had countless bugs that completely surrounded the special mechanical body that was paralyzed in place. Three circles inside and three outside. The bugs that had gone around began to destroy the few defensive weapons on the cruiser in the center of the city. The moment when all the external security weapons of the mechanical cruiser were destroyed. The temperature of the special machine outside finally dropped to a level acceptable to the Zerg. The queen of insects immediately released the parasites against the special machine race. Allowing the nerves of the fungi and parasites to completely control the machine race. Although different from other machines controlled by parasites. The parasites on this special machine cannot use its abilities excessively. But the performance of this machine just now left a deep impression on Chen Ning. Chen Ning felt that this machine seemed to be an elite individual in the machine's ground unit. Similar to HR. After all, this is just a machine with a length of more than 40 meters. About the same size as two small frigates stacked on top of each other. The difference from other mechanical races is not too big. But the actual combat ability is exaggerated to the extreme. The weapons installed on its back can almost achieve the effect that can only be achieved by the large weapons installed on cruisers two levels above. And that's not all. This machine also has the ability to change the environment, which shows that it must have special technology. Moreover, the powerful individual combat effectiveness of this machine clan also reminded Qin Ming of Yin Xiong before. Yin Xiong can physically enter space directly, rely on the wreckage of a cruiser to condense a steel giant, and has the ability to fight against a fleet of cruisers with a single soldier. If Chin Ming hadn't taken advantage of him, a wave of cruisers would have concentrated fire and forced him to expose himself. Then he used Yin Xiong's arrogance to feed him some spacecraft wreckage, and then used the material logistics of several afterglow colonies to replenish the explosives. Otherwise it will definitely not be that easy to fight. Chin Ming just blew Yin Xiong half to death. If Chin Ming hadn't controlled the spacecraft and went over to check, Yin Xiong might have been resurrected with full health in a few hours. If Yin Xiong's ability were to face such a mechanical city, the entire city would probably be like clay in the hands of a child, letting it be manipulated. This is the peak of individual combat effectiveness. And when this special machine race was fighting against the Zerg tribe, it affected the entire surrounding environment with one machine body, and it was able to fight against the entire Zerg nest without falling behind. It really made Chen Ming feel a little bit like Yin Xiong back then. Therefore, besides arranging to transport the mechanical body as soon as possible, Chin Ming was trying to find out what kind of working principle it had. He is still considering whether it is necessary for him to let the insect queen try to get elite combat individuals. Similar to Yan Xiong. This machine, or what Chin Ming once saw in the Zerg genes during genetic retrieval. The large pitch black Zerg being hunted by the Zerg. Its combat effectiveness looked very good. Although their final endings were similar. And not very good. Yin Xiong was turned into a ball by Chin Ming and used as an alloy furnace. The special mechanical body was kidnapped by Chen Ming just now. The jet black Zerg finally entered the belly of the thorn Zerg and became part of their genes today. But their performance is indeed impressive and worthy of research. Chen Ming thought he could give it a try. But not now. He still has things to do. The ground battle was won the moment Chen Ming discovered the weakness of the special machine race. There are only a few scattered mechanical tribes left on the ground. Carrying out some stubborn resistance that cannot be organized on a large scale. However, the third batch of additional members of the mechanical race is definitely on the way. Although it will take time for them to arrive. It will definitely not be too long. Chin Ming needs to speed up the cleanup of the mechanical clan and complete the final finishing work. At the same time, he packed up his loot and retreated as quickly as possible. Otherwise, he will definitely be piled to death by the reinforcements from the mechanical race that can come in a steady stream. Chen Ming didn't want to experience the situation where the special machine just now was constantly attacked by the Zerg. But at this time, another thing that surprised Chen Ming happened. Those mechanical tribes that were still resisting suddenly gave up their defense of the city and chose to retreat, leaving the city from the opposite side of the Zerg attack direction. Under the further oppression, an attack of the Zerg in the face of the retreat of the machines. Those machines who could no longer escape the city and fought desperately began to collapse. The mechanical ray seemed to have completely abandoned the city. Chen Ming's sense of vigilance instantly rose to the extreme. 
He was thinking whether this could be a trap left by the mechanical tribe. The mechanical race has been on the planet for at least half a year. It is normal to leave some backup in other places. But even if it was a trap, there were some things he had to do. Otherwise, there would be no point in coming here. Chen Ning made up his mind and immediately controlled the highest point that had started to descend before. At this time, it was already close to the highest point on the ground. The defenders protecting the highest point gradually approached the city of the mechanical tribe and prepared to land. Prepared to take away the mechanical tribe that has been kidnapped by a large wave of Zerg since the Zerg broke through the core area of the city just now. There are blazing silkworms and special mechanical individuals on the front of the battlefield and in the core area of the city, which can increase the ambient temperature and suppress the parasites of the Zerg. But the mechanical tribe on the outskirts of the city are not treated so well. By relying on the spreading fungus, it is easy to control a large number of machines. Although the Zerg cannot directly connect the mechanical bodies they control to Chinning's psychic control like Yue, it does save a lot of things. As the defenders separated from the Supreme Point, they landed in the outer areas of the city, preparing to assist in the transportation of these controlled mechanical bodies. There are traces of jump again in space. However, this is not Yu Hui's third wave of reinforcements. But the traces of the Colossus class cargo ship that Chin Ning snatched from Yu Hui before. A specialized cruise class cargo ship is the main force for transporting these controlled machines. Although Hui Wang was still on guard in space at this time, he was still distracted as before, helping the two ships on the ground to manage the transportation machinery clan, seeing that he no longer needed to care about the city's outskirts. Chin Ning returned his attention to the high point of the ship he was driving. Prepare to land in the center of the city and snatch the mechanical cruiser. Without the mechanical defense and all its weapons, the cruiser was just a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. In addition, although the mechanical tribe ran away, Chin Ning still gave the insect queen a new goal to continue tracking the escaped mechanical tribe. The first is to let the Zerg help him step on the possible traps of the mechanical clan. Anyway, as long as nothing happens to the queen, the loss of any other Zerg, or even all the Zerg except the queen, will be nothing more than drizzle. The second is to obtain as many mechanical races as possible. After all, those who escaped were the mechanical clan who could last until the end, and they were the backbone of the mechanical clan's ground operations. The benefits from catching these mechanical clans will definitely be greater than those from ordinary logistics machines. It was also at this time that Chen Ning discovered that the Zerg tribe actually had the ability to accurately track the mechanical tribe. Even though many mechanical races have left the city and are fleeing throughout the desolate planet, the Queen of Insects can still accurately mark each individual mechanical race for the Zerg units to capture. The reason why the Zerg can do this seems to point to a deep pit inside the mechanical colony. Of course, it's not the deep pit blown up by the special machine just now, but a pit dug by the mechanical race that exists here. This pit looks like a water storage warehouse in a sewage purification plant, but all the liquid stored in it has a gray-green color similar to the color of Zerg blood. These things... Chin Ning suddenly remembered that these gray-green liquids were all pollutants produced by the nanorobots in the mechanical race when they were working. He remembered that the several research reports on the machine race that he had read before introduced the unique pollution produced by this machine race, which had extremely strong diffusion capabilities and a considerable degree of toxicity. A little bit is okay. For example, the few machines that Chin Ning encountered on Ruemu planet produced almost no pollution. But once the number of machines increases and clusters form, the pollutants produced will cause extreme damage to the normal ecological environment. And even the machine race itself does not have a good way to deal with these pollutants. So what they do is to find a place to store it, store it to a certain amount, and then release it into the environment, to the mechanical race. It doesn't matter whether it is a habitable planet or not. They themselves are not affected by these pollutants. It doesn't matter what planet they are emitting. That's it. This is why the Zerg are able to track the mechanical tribe. Each individual mechanical tribe has these nanobots that produce pollutants. Nanobots are the mark of the Zerg. Anyway, Chin Ning felt more and more that something must have happened between the Zerg and the machines in the past. Probably before humans had stepped out of their own galaxy. Then the situation of the mechanical tribe is not right now. Because as Chin Ning thought deeply about the current situation, he suddenly remembered what Bai Quan had said to him before. When the machine race fights with humans, they will definitely fight to the death. And they will definitely beat themselves to the point where they are completely unable to fight. The fight to the death that Bai Quan talked about is definitely not the current situation. It is definitely a fight to the death. One soldier at a time. Until the end. It's impossible for the mechanical tribe to say 
that they don't know that someone is behind these Zerg tribes. Especially after Chen Ming killed the second batch of additional members of the Machine Tribe and swept the ground with his Tachyon Spear. The Machine Tribe should fight to the death and not retreat. It is impossible to say that when facing insects, the Machine Race will lose the same ferocity as when facing humans. On the contrary, this seems to be a seduction. Seducing the Zerg to continue to spend a lot of time tracking these fleeing mechanical races. At this point, Chin Ming finally realized one thing. The mechanical clan's trap may not be placed on the planet in front of the escaping mechanical clan, but may be in a wider place. He raised his head and looked at the starry sky outside the window at the highest point. The third batch of reinforcements from the mechanical clan may have arrived. The mechanical clan is well aware of Chin Ming's combat effectiveness and the situation of Chin Ming's fleet. They know that if they want to completely retain Chin Ming, they cannot appear directly in Chin Ming's face. They have to make some preparations and make some arrangements. Then it makes perfect sense for the machines on the ground to cooperate and do things they wouldn't do under normal circumstances. After figuring this out, Chin Ming felt a pressure in his heart. The machines that escaped from the city no longer pose a threat to the Zerg after losing their clusters. They are just walking trophies. The city was also abandoned by the machine race. And everything in the city was controlled by Chin Ming. The mechanical tribe is not using those mechanical tribes as bait by using the entire city as bait to trap Chen Ming on this planet and in the galaxy. But Chen Ming still had no way of determining what exactly the machine tribe would do. But at this moment, Chen Ming's spiritual power suddenly came into play, and a sense of danger from outside the galaxy was transmitted to Chen Ming's mind. This sense of danger seemed to be a cover that was gradually closing, and gradually Chen Ming was completely restricted in this galaxy. Chen Ming took a deep breath and prepared himself mentally. Then he immediately issued an order to the insect queen directly recalling the insects, no longer tracking the fleeing machines, and instead started to capture the machines on the ground with all his strength. He wanted to take away as much of the loot he needed before the cover-like sense of danger he felt completely closed. Anyway, for Chen Ming, there is no essential difference between the escaping machine race and the machine race staying in the city. They are both members of the machine race and can enhance the hive mind network of his machine race. The only difference is the difference in the abilities of their former mechanical bodies. But as long as Chen Ming masters the method of creating a mechanical race, the physical difference will no longer be a difference. So Chen Ming directly changed his thinking on how to capture mechanical individuals with high efficiency. He didn't have much time left. He must start the jump engine and take the mechanical tribe he captured to leave here before the final time comes. As for these Zerg species on the planet, they will have no choice but to stay on the planet. After all, the number of these Zerg units has reached a terrifying level during the development of the Zerg Queen. Even if a lot of losses have been suffered during the attack on the city, it cannot be taken away by two cruisers in a short time. At that time, these insects will be directly absorbed by the Queen of Insects and transformed into the most basic energy crystals. Chen Ming's spiritual energy can just recycle these energy crystals directly, minimizing losses. One minute later, Chen Ming's highest point landed near the cruiser in the core of the city. During the landing process, Chen Ming had already released a batch of robots equipped with afterglow cores from the highest point and landed on the landing craft in advance. Following another defender that had separated from the supreme point, it landed in the middle of the city and cooperated with the Zerg to start cleaning the battlefield. What Chen Ming wants is to let these afterglows find the mechanical clan with damaged circuits and then immediately connect to the circuits for control. As long as the machine race is controlled by Chen Ming, it will transform into anomaly sub-individuals and Chen Ning can directly transfer the consciousness of these anomalous sub-individuals into the hive network of the machine race he built. He relies purely on his consciousness and mental power to temporarily support the consciousness of these mechanical tribes to survive. Save storage space on both of his cruisers. Anyway, Chen Ning's goal is indeed the consciousness of these mechanical tribes, not the bodies of the mechanical tribes. As long as the consciousness of the mechanical race exists, and these consciousnesses strengthen the hive network to the point where a new conscious individual of the mechanical race can be constructed. The physical problem is actually very easy to solve. Then, there is only one thing left for him to do. Control that cruiser. However, he didn't have time to get off the boat. A piece of news reached his ears that made him freeze on the spot. The afterglow individuals he sent out and installed on the robots failed when they controlled the mechanical races with damaged appearances. His mental power cannot affect the consciousness contained in the core chips of the mechanical race. He couldn't control the individuals of the mechanical race. 
but when the afterglows tried to access the bodies of those mechanical races whose consciousness had died. There was no obstruction. This strange situation stunned Chen Ming for a while, causing countless chaotic thoughts and ideas to flash through his mind. But he didn't have time to think too much. The methods arranged by the mechanical clan in the galaxy would not give him time to think. Chin Ming could only let those thoughts seem like a mess in his mind for the time being. And solve them later. Now let's take away these mechanical races from the physical level first. As for the cruiser in front of him. He had to try it himself. See why his psychic powers can't control the machines. Is there something wrong with the afterglow of the transfer? Or is there something wrong with his psychic abilities? Or perhaps? There is something wrong with these mechanical tribes themselves. Chin Ming arrived at the exit of the highest point. Pure white metallic liquid gradually flowed out of the body. And at the same time, there was also some bright green mix with Zerg energy crystals. The dolomite liquid gradually condensed into the skeleton of the power armor. And the color of the energy crystals gradually solidified on the skeleton, gradually turning dark. In the blink of an eye, what appeared on Chin Ming was not the locust-powered armor given by Bai Quan, but a unique biomass armor. The coverage of the jet black Zerg carapace gives the armor a biological aesthetic. At this time, Chin Ming did not look like he was wearing modern individual combat equipment, but instead evolved into a ferocious insect. The original mechanical auxiliary wings on the back of the power armor were replaced by Zerg Elytra, and the jetpack's bump was also covered with Zerg carapace, giving it the texture of a Zerg biological spacecraft. This is a complete set of biological armor that Chin Ming created by simultaneously using the biotechnology and power armor technology he currently mastered as well as the in-death repair capabilities he had just acquired, combining the various advantages of the Zerg carapace and the locust armor. It crushes the prototype locust-powered armor in almost all abilities. It can be regarded as an attempt by Chen Ming. Let Chen Ming know that biology and machinery are not two ends of the spectrum. They can be combined with each other to do things that are originally difficult to do, and reach heights that are more difficult to achieve than individual technologies. In this attempt, after Chen Ming had communicated with the insect queen before, he found that the insects still had various shortcomings even after his deep spiritual repair. These shortcomings are inherent shortcomings of the species and cannot be compensated for by itself. So Chen Ming had such an idea at that time and tried it. The result was clearly a success. The unique evolutionary ability of the Zerg and the crystallization of human technology are most vividly reflected in the biomass-powered armor that Chen Ming is currently wearing. It proved that the method chosen by Chen Ming to make up for the shortcomings of the Zerg species was correct. He would make more attempts later. And this biomass-powered armor is also the basis for his confidence to leave the spacecraft in the city of the mechanical race. Of course, there was another thing that gave him confidence. The psychic power of the insect queen. To be precise, it is the spiritual power of the Zerg. Chapter 193 Source of Danger After Chen Ming controlled the Zerg biological spaceship, he relied on his mental power to build a hive mind network belonging to the Zerg. He can use this network to get feedback from the spiritual power of the Zerg in the entire network, provide thinking assistance, and speed up thinking. With these mental and mental feedbacks, the insect queen swallowed the psychic fungi and spent more than half a month evolving into a psychic creature. Chin Ming also used the ability of deep repair to allow the insect queen to swallow psychic fungi. The spiritual energy evolved from biological violence was completely adapted to the body of the insect queen. And after being linked to the hive mind network, New changes occurred. In addition to the previous two, the Zerg Hive Network can provide one more feedback. That is to say, the spiritual energy of the Zerg can be transformed into spiritual energy fluctuations spread based on the Hive Mind Network, and then act on Chen Ming, who is also in the Mind Network. This also means that he can also use the spiritual powers of the Zerg as a part of the Hive Network. As the builder of the Zerg Hive Network, it is not too much to use the psychic energy in the network. It would be better to say that Chen Ming, as a psyker who became a psyker very early, would be more proficient in using psionic powers than the current insect queen. The effect of the insect queen's psychic power is the simplest and crudest ability, which strengthens physical fitness through psychic power. It's just that the physical strength of the Zerg race is already there after all, and it only appears a little weak when facing the main unit of the mechanical race. Therefore, such a newly awakened spiritual energy is not ideal for the Zerg with extremely high physical strength, but it's completely different for Chen Ming. Chen Ming's own spiritual energy is not like Yan Xiong's or the Zerg's spiritual energy that can act on himself and strengthen himself. Apart from his regular exercise, his physical fitness is that of an ordinary person with slightly better physical fitness. 
The spiritual energy that had no effect on the powerful Zerd body could improve Chen Ming's body by more than a little, relying on the mental power of the Zerd to transform into spiritual energy fluctuations. You can feel the full sense of power in your body. Chen Ming clenched his fists subconsciously, feeling a little excited. But he knew he had no time to waste. So he immediately opened the hatch at the highest point and jumped directly from the hatch. The biomass ejection port on the back of the biomass armor sprayed out pure gray-green tail flames and the powerful physical fitness given by the Zerg's spiritual energy. Chen Ning was like a swift Zerg in an instant, rushing to the top of the mechanical cruiser, just as he was finding his feet. The mechanical cruiser, which had been silent since the external defense weapons were destroyed, suddenly opened several passageways, and several flying mantises and static mantises sprang out. The backs of several flying mantises instantly erupted with bright tail flames, and they quickly swung the sharp blades on their arms towards Chen Ming. If Chen Ming had relied on his strong consciousness and thinking speed before, he would have been able to see the scene very clearly, but his physical limitations did not allow him to dodge and fight back. But now, with the spiritual assistance of the Zerg that purely strengthens the body, Chen Ming, who has no actual fighting experience, actually successfully dodged the attacks of the two flying mantises. It's just that the remaining three flying mantises can't dodge the attacks, so they can only take them hard. However, the powerful protective power brought by the biological armor did not leave even a mark after being chopped by six flying mantis sickle blades. The impact of the blades chopping actually caused Chen Ming himself after being buffered by layers of buffers. It was not even as big as the impact that Xiao Shi sometimes had when he jumped off the back of the bed and hit him. For Chen Ming now, it's not even tickling. He can even react and directly control the flying mantis close to him by relying on the synergistic power brought by himself and the armor on his body. When Chen Ming instantly tried to use his spiritual power to control the flying mantis, he found that his spiritual power was just like when Yu Hui controlled these mechanical tribes before and was unable to take effect. Chen Ming frowned and said nothing more. He didn't have time to dwell on this now. He directly relied on brute force to remove the relatively fragile Fei Mantis arm equipped with a sickle blade from the fragile key point, completely killing the Fei Mantis. This is just pure strength. And the combat capability of biomass armor is not all about brute force. The biomass armor's gauntlet suddenly condensed a pitch black blade extending forward like a sharp claw, relying on the strength of the black carapace and the fusion of various metals that can easily tear into dolomite steel. Chen Ming instantly killed four other flying mantises by chopping melons and vegetables. Others also appeared on the top of the cruiser, and they had spread out to shoot at Chen Ming. But they were also unable to break through the defense at all. After Chen Ming killed the flying mantises, he directly hit their heads with an electromagnetic javelin that could generate projectiles supported by Zerg energy crystals that was instantly condensed in his hands. And they were completely killed in the explosion of unstable energy crystals. Chen Ming's heartbeat continued to accelerate. And this unprecedented feeling of personally participating in the battle made him excited. Although this is not his own ability, it is the biological armor on his body and the spiritual power of the Zerg that allows him to do this. But the face-to-face -face battle still made it difficult for him to suppress his excitement. But he also knew exactly what he should do now. So after excitedly clearing out a few machines that were interfering with him, Chen Ming immediately touched his hand to the cruiser beneath him and actively activated his psychic powers. Not surprisingly, the control failed. And when Chen Ming didn't directly invoke his spiritual energy, instead, use the panels, spaceship signal detected. Do you want to connect? After this option, he got a signal conflict. Unable to access prompt. This result caused Chen Ming to stop for half a second. He took a deep breath and suppressed the tumbling emotions in his heart. He stood up and flew into the air again relying on the biomass armor. Returning to the highest point. A few seconds later, a large amount of metallic liquid flowed out from the highest point and was once again transformed by Chen Ning into a dozen robotic arms with different functions. These mechanical arms acted on the nearby mechanical cruiser, dismantling the facilities connecting the mechanical cruiser to the ground and uprooting the cruiser that had taken root on the ground. Although it cannot be controlled spiritually, there is still no problem with physical control. Take the cruiser away and there's always an opportunity to utilize psionic control in the future. After firmly fixing the mechanical cruiser at the bottom of the highest point, Chen Ming controlled the highest point and flew into space. At this time, on the other side of the city, the Defenders and Colossus, with the assistance of the Zerg ground units, controlled most of the machines that could be taken away and stuffed them into the spacecraft, loaded with machines that were also controlled. They followed the highest point and flew into space. 
At this time, the few cruisers left by Qinming in space were still safely in orbit, without any attack or other interference. So Qinming started the jump engine directly. But equally unsurprisingly, the jump engine process was interrupted before it even started. The mechanical race had already arrived outside the galaxy when Qinming's spiritual energy became alert and began to blockade the interior of the galaxy. However, because Chen Ning had noticed something was wrong before, he focused on pursuing efficiency when doing things on the planet. So it happened to be that the mechanical race returned to space at the moment when the mechanical race had not completely completed the blockade of the jump engine of the galaxy. And since the gap in the mechanical race that had not yet completed the blockade of the galaxy, as long as Chen Ning's ship can reach the gap that has not been completely sealed, he can get rid of the situation where he may be blocked by the mechanical race in the galaxy and beaten. So Chen Ming immediately commanded several cruisers to sail towards the gap in his psychic perception. And when Chen Ming's fleet was about to arrive at the edge of the galaxy, through the scanning array at the highest point, Chen Ming finally discovered that the mechanical race had arrived long ago, but had been hiding the cruiser that was deploying a blockade device, and other convoys that were protecting the cruiser and sealing the gap. In fact, in order to prevent Chen Ming from jumping, the mechanical race just relied on the ship's own engine to fly out of the blocked area from normal space. So a number of cruisers were evenly arranged around the galaxy. But more were arranged here in the gaps that had not yet been closed. But the mechanical fleet here only has a dozen cruisers that can be considered a trouble to Chen Ning. Therefore, Chen Ning chose to completely ignore losses in order to maximize the effectiveness of his psychic powers. I saw five rounds of meteorite drones flying out of the Stardust-class flight deck with a total of 8,000 meteor drones flying out. With a terrifying red light, they rushed towards the fleet blocked by the mechanical race at the gap. As long as he can break through the defense line composed of these cruisers, Chen Ning can safely start the jump engine and escape in scathe. But as Chen Ning's fleet broke into the scanning range of the mechanical clan, the mechanical clan responded very quickly. In just 10 seconds, more than 20 cruisers also located at different locations in the galaxy made a short-distance emergency jump arrived at the gap, and came to stop Chen Ming. Moreover, the scanning array at the highest point also immediately scanned a new transition wave. The huge coverage area of this jump fluctuation also made Chen Ming's eyes widen, because behind this jump fluctuation is either a cruise fleet of at least 50 ships, or a battleship. 20 or 30 cruisers can be defeated as long as Chen Ming works hard and relies on the terrifying output and protection capabilities of his cruisers. But the number of cruisers exceeding 80 is really beyond what Chen Ming's five cruisers plus one Stardust can handle. Not to mention the battleship. The only thing that can threaten the battleship is the battleship. Without the battleship on the frontal battlefield, all other spaceships are garbage. Therefore, as long as the mechanical tribe is delayed for less than 30 seconds, he will have no possibility of escape. So Chen Ming made a decision instantly. He must jump immediately. In fact, when Chen Ming arrived near the gap, and saw the mechanical race arranging jump blockade devices on the periphery of the galaxy. He could already start the jump engine. A cruiser that just starts its jump engine has almost no protection if it is attacked. Therefore, Chen Ning had previously thought of killing the fleet here first, completely breaking through the galaxy, and then making the jump. This was the safest way. But things are obviously not going so smoothly now. Therefore, Chen Ning's current choice is to lose a defender that does not have an alpha level afterglow core installed, and takes away the smallest number of mechanical races. Let it withstand the concentrated fire of the mechanical fleet. While the other cruisers immediately began to jump on the spot, no longer seeking to escape the fire range of the mechanical clan, it would really be fatal to be late at this time. As Chen Ming's command order was issued, the defenders, together with the 8,000 meteor fighters just released by the Stardust class, rushed towards the mechanical fleet. Several other cruisers in the rear began to slow down and started their jump engines. Right now, the jump fluctuations that had just existed gradually subsided, and a fleet of more than 50 cruisers and dozens of destroyers and frigates jumped here. Chin Ning breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, it was not a battleship, but another cruiser with a larger number that Chin Ning guessed. But Chin Ning suddenly realized that something seemed wrong. Almost all of this new batch of mechanical cruisers were injured, and among the destroyers and escorts, it was almost impossible to see one that was not injured. It was as if they had just experienced a brutal battle. And at this time, the transition process has not yet been completed. And something has suddenly been scanned on the scanning array that has not yet left the highest point of the galaxy. It was at the position where reinforcements from a group of more than 50 cruisers from the mechanical tribe had arrived. 
and at the position where the jump fluctuations had just subsided. There have been some strange fluctuations, somewhat similar to the fluctuations of a jump engine, but nothing jumps over, and the fluctuation quickly disappeared, and there didn't seem to be anything abnormal. But at the moment when the fluctuation disappeared, Chen Ming suddenly felt a sense of extreme danger from the center of the mechanical fleet, where the strange fluctuation disappeared. The next moment, the side of the injured cruiser of the mechanical race that was closest to the fluctuation suddenly seemed to be hit by something, and a huge dent appeared in the armor of the ship. The entire ship also crashed into a similar spacecraft next to it uncontrollably. In a blink of an eye, two fireworks appeared in the space. Before the fireworks completely dissipated, the scene that just happened happened again on another mechanical cruiser. The hull of the ship was violently hit by something and crashed into other spaceships uncontrollably. In an instant, several spaceships were completely reduced to wreckage. In the process, Chen Ning sensed a huge source of danger wandering inside the machine race's fleet. Chen Ning didn't know what it was, but Chen Ning knew that it was extremely aggressive and was constantly destroying the mechanical race's spaceships. What the H, L is this? This question flashed through Chen Ming's mind. So he quickly asked the defenders to retreat and return to his side. At the same time, it also immediately forcibly suppressed the startup process of the jump engine. At the cost of losing the life of the engine, the jump engine is maintained at the highest output power. That is, the jump engine can be started at any time for jump retreat. Anyway, the damage to the engine's life is nothing in front of Chen Ming. And it can be repaired at any time. Chen Ming wanted to stay here for a while. He wanted to find out what it was that could be so baffling and kill several mechanical cruisers so easily. Several of Chen Ming's spaceships turned around and kept a safe distance from the mechanical fleet. At the same time, all the scanning equipment at the highest point was activated at full power, scanning the situation inside the mechanical fleet. But the scan results showed that nothing was scanned except the mechanical clan's own ships. It's like the destroyed spaceships of the mechanical tribe were destroyed by their own people. But the obvious effects of external forces on those spacecrafts don't lie. Something must have caused such havoc. And it was definitely not a small body enhanced psyker that punched it. But something really close to the size of a cruiser that hit the mechanical cruiser. There seems to be something in the galaxy that cannot be seen, scanned, or detected at all. Destroying everything in the mechanical race. Even if the mechanical cruiser has its shield turned on, it is of no use. As long as the ship is not completely protected by an all-round shield like the Supreme Point, there will always be places on the ship that cannot be covered up by the shield. And there will always be exposed positions. Then, there will be an attack from the source of danger. However, the mechanical race didn't seem to care at all now. They just charged towards Chen Ming, as if they didn't see the source of danger that was constantly destroying their warships. Continuously fired at Chen Ming's fleet, which was still out of range. Chen Ming is not worried anyway. He has pushed the jump engine to the extreme. If there is any problem, he can jump away as soon as possible. It's just that Chen Ningming saw many weapon projectiles or energy beams hitting the source of danger he perceived when shooting in his direction. But the source of danger did not react at all. It can't be seen, touched, or hit. But that thing can do all of this in reverse. It doesn't seem to be in the normal cosmic environment. But it can affect this universe. The mechanical race was targeted by such a terrifying thing. Half of the machine race's cruiser fleet of more than 80 ships had been destroyed in the blink of an eye. No ship can escape the attack from the source of danger and get close to Chen Ming. But Chen Ming feels that it won't be long before that thing is likely to target him. He knew he couldn't stay here much longer. So the moment the defenders also entered the final stages of activation of their jump engines, he released the restraints on the jump engines and the six cruisers entered the jump together. Chen Ming's spaceship disappeared. Only the source of danger is left to continue to destroy the mechanical race. As time passed by, until the source of danger destroyed all the mechanical spacecraft in the galaxy, the galaxy gradually became quiet. But only a few minutes passed. The city of the mechanical race on the planet that had been destroyed once by Chen Ming suddenly faced an attack from a dangerous source. It continued to destroy the city, defeating all the mechanical races that barely survived and were not captured by Chen Ming. In just 10 minutes, Hundreds of huge manta ray-like traces that were tens of meters deep underground and at least a kilometer long were left in the city, which was almost entirely made of dolomite steel. After the entire city was in flames under this horrific attack, it returned to space again, using that unique wave. Following its jump trajectory, it returned to the star domain of the mechanical race again. If Chen Ming still stayed here, he should be able to guess what the situation of the mechanical race was during this period 
and why the development of this galaxy was so slow. But if he really stayed here, he would probably end up like the mechanical tribe. Fortunately, he had started the jump engine in advance, left the gap that the mechanical clan had not completely closed, and successfully escaped, went to the Empire. After all, the trajectory of the jump can be tracked, and Chen Ming would not be so foolish as to run directly to the temporary stronghold. If you run into the Empire, you don't have to worry about the machine tribe tracking you. At the same time, he is not afraid of the source of danger chasing him. At least Chen Ning still believed in his boss's abilities. But when Chen Ning made two more jumps and reappeared in the city where the pirate space station was located, it was basically completely safe. Chen Ming's heartbeat still accelerated a lot, and some belated cold sweat appeared on his forehead. In the mechanical city before, if he had been a little more greedy and let the insect queen track down the escaped high-level mechanical individuals and wasted some time in the process, then he might have ended up here today. Not only because of the subsequent increase in the number of members of the mechanical clan, but also because of the source of danger that left the cruisers defenseless. So Chen Ming kept thinking after he calmed down. What is that thing? Chen Ming has not learned about any similar existence from any research report he has read or from the information he has. So Chen Ming thought for a while and dialed Bai Quan's phone number. Bai Quan quickly picked up Chen Ming's call and asked, Is it over? It's over. It went smoothly with basically no losses. But I have a problem. You ask. Well, I can't tell. I'll send you the video, and you can watch it yourself. Okay. Bai Quan opened the video of Chin Ming Fa's past, and started playing it. Chin Ming explained smoothly. This is what happened when I was preparing to evacuate after I had achieved my previous goal. You also saw it. There were five versus a dozen on my side. Bai Quan watched five waves of meteor fighter jets totaling 8,000 flying out of the Stardust class, he had previously handed over to Chen Ning, and subconsciously pushed up his glasses. He had imagined how powerful Chen Ning's spiritual energy was before. But now that he actually saw it, he couldn't help but feel that it was a bit too exaggerated. This is just a cruiser. But what if it is a main class aircraft carrier? How many fighters can Chen Ning release in a short period of time? Although the Empire currently does not have a main level aircraft carrier equipped with unmanned combat aircraft. But to be honest, if Chin Ming really decides to join the imperial military or government one day, as long as it has been verified for a period of time, the Empire's senior officials will immediately start arranging for Chin Ming to design a capital ship and let Chin Ming participate. Bai Quan now wants to send out solicitations habitually. However, he still held it back. Since Chin Ming had questions to ask, he should wait until Chin Ming finished asking them. This looks okay. You should be able to fight. Is there any problem? What Chen Ning saw was even more shocking than what he heard. So he just said, You will know after watching. About 30 cruisers from the mechanical tribe jumped over right away. Even if I have psychic powers, there is no way a Stardust can defeat them. So I decided at that time to directly lose one cruiser to the rear, and the other spaceships would jump on the spot and run away. Bai Quan nodded slightly and said, There is nothing wrong with this decision. You must pay losses when necessary before you can survive. And for you, the only loss is the cruiser itself. And there is no loss of other manpower at all. Chen Ming didn't care at all about the losses on any ship when he had the power to dismantle the psychic energy and could transport materials at will. He agreed. Indeed. But the problem is not the loss. But other things. The moment when the strange fluctuation appeared was played on Bai Chuan's terminal screen. Just a few seconds later, Bai Quan also saw the scene where the mechanical fleet was hit by something. This. Bai Quan subconsciously stood up from the desk in his current room with a serious expression. I have to ask. Chapter 194 Purgatory Core Bai Quan looked like he had already made some assumptions in his mind. Chen Ming directly said, I feel that this thing is a bit like what you said some time ago. Bai Quan responded before Chen Ming finished speaking. I feel so too. So I have to ask and wait for my news. Okay. Bai Quan hung up the communication with some eagerness. He immediately took the video sent to him by Chen Ming and went to the exclusive research institute under the headquarters of the 14th Army Corps where he was currently located. Only Chen Ming was left thinking. Consider the situation of those 50-odd cruisers and that source of danger. First of all, Chen Ming was certain that even if the more than 50 cruisers of the mechanical tribe were injured before arriving in the galaxy, they must have been caused by his troubles on the mechanical tribe's colonial planet. It's not that he was driven here because he failed to target the source of danger because these more than 50 cruisers have no ability to resist in front of the source of danger. Assuming that the mechanical race knew such a dangerous thing in advance, 
it would be impossible for them to mobilize more than 50 cruisers to target this thing at once. Anything that cannot be captured can be given away by one ship or by 50 ships. The machine race wouldn't be so stupid if the machine clan didn't know about this thing. The purpose of these more than 50 cruisers would indeed be Chin Ming's. Therefore, Chin Ming felt that it was very likely that the reinforcement fleet of the mechanical tribe happened to accidentally encounter this thing on the way here. Although he is still not sure whether the mechanical tribe understands the source of this danger. But there is a high probability that the fleet of the mechanical race fought with this thing. Or was beaten unilaterally. And suffered a lot of losses. The remaining fleet of the mechanical race chose to continue to their destination. Which was the colonial galaxy outside that was attacked by Chen Ning. The cities they built as colonies have collapsed under the attack of the insect swarm. Leaving the instigator Chen Ming behind and killing them when it is irreversible is already the best result for them. So it is also a good choice to divert trouble to the east when necessary. Anyway, even if they failed, they would never be able to get back what they had lost because of Chen Ming. It would be better to exchange greater losses for a greater possibility of killing Chen Ming. The mechanical tribe is indeed cruel. Unfortunately, Chen Ming ran too fast. The source of danger brought by the machine tribe was the first to be targeted by the machine tribe itself. As Chen Ming roughly guessed what had just happened, he suddenly took a deep breath because he still has many questions in his mind. What exactly is the source of the danger? How did the machine tribe provoke this thing? These two questions remain unanswered as always. Therefore, Chen Ming temporarily stopped thinking about this matter and waited for Bai Chuan's response with peace of mind. At the same time, there is another matter waiting for Chen Ming to solve. It's the fact that his psychic powers can't control the mechanical race. Chen Ming personally tried using psychic energy before. And when he saw the prompt later, he basically understood what was going on. It became clear what was the reason why he couldn't control the machine race. In fact, the answer is very simple. The only thing that can fight against spiritual energy is spiritual energy. Although the sentence is not absolute, it makes sense many times. The hive mind network among the mechanical races in the entire mechanical race star field is the same as Chen Ming's own mechanical race hive network, which is linked together by spiritual energy. It is precisely because the machines on Chen Ming's target planet are connected to the cruiser in the core of the city. And the cruiser is connected to the higher level hive network. That's why he can't control these machines that have been affected by spiritual energy. The discovery of this situation also made Chen Ming figure out something. He had actually been thinking before that metaphysical things like the hive mind should be disconnected when the distance is far enough. How can a hive mind continue to be maintained across hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of light years? And can it transmit everything seen by the same kind without any obstruction? Obviously the same hive mind zerg is divided into different groups. And there may be internal fighting between each group. It's like the mother of the insect queen controlled by Chen Ming discovered another group of thorn zerg on the track of the previous independent mechanical tribe and directly devoured the other group and turned it into her own nutrition. And then evolved into a destroyer. The hive mind network among the Zerg is obviously based on the group. However, the mechanical race can be integrated into such a large star field. And there is more than just this star field in the entire universe. Only a very small number of independent mechanical clusters may not be in this huge hive mind network. Chen Ning never understood it before. It wasn't until today that he discovered that the answer had already been reflected in himself. Psionics are the basis for maintaining such a hive mind network, whose coverage is measured by the star field. Chen Ning felt that he should have thought of it earlier, because the first thing related to psychic energy that he came into contact with, the Whispering Spirit Stone, was something he got from the machine tribe. The mechanical race itself is different from Yue. They are the legacy of another civilization, and they are born with psychic powers. Therefore, it is normal for their hive network to be constructed with psychic energy. Of course, this does not mean that there is a psyker behind the machine race controlling them. When Chen Ning tried to control the cruiser with his own hands before, he could feel that the psychic energy of the mechanical race was a dead thing, not an extension of a psyker's will. The boss, Yen Xiong, and even the insect queen that Chen Ning had contact with were different. When a psyker or psionic creature uses psionic energy, they emit psychic waves that reflect the state of the psyker's own mind. Other psykers can sense the emotions of the psyker emitting the psychic waves through these psychic waves. No matter how calm a psyker is, when he uses his psychic energy to emit psychic energy fluctuations, his psychic energy fluctuations will also bring with him a hint of calmness. Even if you are not a psyker, but an ordinary person, you will still have subtle feelings when exposed to psychic energy fluctuations, and you can understand the emotions of the psyker. Although Chen Ming didn't know much about psychic powers, he had used them many times in front of Lao Wu and the factory director. In the past, 
when we occasionally chatted. I happened to learn these strange and strange knowledge about psychic powers from them. So if such a mechanical race all over the universe is controlled by a living psyker, then Chen Ning would not dare to touch these mechanical races. However, when Chen Ning tried to control the mechanical race before, he did not detect any emotional fluctuations in the hive mind network. What constructs the mechanical hive network is a dead object. A mechanical device similar to a psychic pulse generator. And it is not difficult to crack a dead object. The mechanical tribe relies on psychic energy to link. But not every mechanical tribe individual can use the psionic energy of the hive mind network to do things to resist the control of Chen Ming's psionic energy. It's just that the instinctive protection of the psychic hive mind network prevents Chen Ming's tentative non-force control from taking effect directly. That's all. Chen Ming only needs to let his spiritual power show aggression and forcefully destroy the original network connection of the mechanical tribe. And the rest will be easy to handle. So even before, when Chen Ming was standing on the mechanical cruiser, as long as he wanted to, he could directly eliminate the influence of the mechanical clan's spiritual energy on them and control the ship personally. The mechanical race has lost a lower level core of the hive mind. So the remaining mechanical race is also in Chen Ming's pocket. The reason why Chen Ming didn't do this was because the matter was not that simple. And there would be other consequences later. The machine race is the mechanical life form of the hive mind. Destroying the hive mind network of the machine race is tantamount to directly digging out a piece of the machine race's brain. Although this is just a city of mechanical people, it is not fatal to the mechanical people. But the damage is absolute. And it's still an extremely serious injury. And all intelligent species basically have a common problem. Those who have helped themselves will be forgotten after a while. But those who have hurt themselves will never be forgotten in this life. This means that if Chen Ming does this, the entire machine race will know of his existence and the fact that Chen Ming has caused serious harm to them. More than 50 cruisers had just come to chase them. If they continue to cause trouble, the mechanical race may not be the real capital ship that will come over the next time they meet. And if the mechanical tribe only knew that Chen Ming was a person with considerable combat ability and could control the Zerg, then next, the machine race will discover that he is a psyker who can cause fundamental destruction to the machine race. Just like when Yu Hui discovered him. But Chen Ning was still relatively weak before. And Yu Hui and humans did not have such an extreme conflict as the machine race and humans. That's why Yu Hui and humans exchanged some prisoners and supplies. That's why when Yu Hui discovered Chen Ming, he immediately wanted to take Chen Ming away. Try to recruit him. Or extract the spiritual nerve. But if the mechanical tribe knew of Chen Ming's existence, they would never give Chen Ming any chance. And they would definitely pursue him with the highest standards. A psyker who can cut off the machine hive network knows best how big a threat they are. Once Chen Ming is caught, his life will definitely be lost. Therefore, if he really destroys the mechanical clan's hive network, it will definitely be very dangerous in the future. He had to think again. Anyway, the mechanical cruiser that Chen Ming took away has been damaged. And the mechanical race individuals on it have also been cleared away. It is definitely impossible to escape on its own. Chen Ming also brought the mechanical cruiser to the empire. Even if the machine race had hive consciousness, it would be impossible for them to actually pursue the cruiser if they knew its location. Therefore, as long as Chen Ming does not take the initiative to provoke the machine clan, the machine clan will have no other influence at all except knowing that he is now in the human empire. Moreover, the location of the temporary stronghold has not been exposed. And it is impossible for the mechanical tribe to find trouble in his temporary stronghold. Chen Ning still had time to think about whether he should be burdened with such a trouble. Then, he would not be in a hurry to come to a conclusion immediately. It is better to take a rest first and wait until the mental state returns to its best before thinking about this issue. And since he has returned to the Empire, and is still on the edge of the galaxy of the pirate space station, he must make a trip back to the space station. Moreover, the patrol team in the galaxy just came over and wandered around took one look at Chen Ming's fleet and ran away. Although Chen Ning didn't know the people on the Pirate Space Station's patrol team, they all knew Chen Ning and knew what was going on with these cruisers. So Chen Ning was left to stay at the edge of the galaxy. But they will definitely send back the news of Chen Ming's return. So Chen Ning must go back and say H, low to everyone he knows. But he still had one thing to do before returning to the space station. Count the harvest. Originally, Chen Ming's target this time was mainly mechanical race individuals to expand his own hive network. Secondly, there is the mechanical colonial cruiser, which will definitely be helpful for his future colonization. The other gains during the battle with the mechanical tribe were truly unexpected. So now the overall harvest is simply calculated. 
The most important ones are those mechanical race individuals whose total number has exceeded 30,000, all of which are parasitized by parasites that are desperately breeding and unable to move. It can only be said that Chen Ning didn't know how he crammed so many mechanical races into two cruisers. But he did it anyway. Although these parasites basically enter dormancy without subsequent nutrient supply. While they are dormant, they can also forcibly stop all mechanical activities of the mechanical family. In addition to maintaining normal individual consciousness, those mechanical tribes are almost equivalent to dead mechanical bodies that are completely unable to move. Chen Ning could just find a place to store them. After that, Chin Ming is ready to control the mechanical family. And then, he will control it in batches. Finally, these mechanical tribes were sent to the city on the planet where the mechanical tribe in Chin Ming's hand was located. Chin Ming estimated that after he finished controlling the batch of machines he had just captured, he should be able to completely build the hive network of machines he controlled, allowing him to produce the individual consciousness of the mechanical race on his own, like the Zerg network. In this way, as long as he can supply enough materials to the mechanical tribe in the future. The number of the mechanical tribe can start to skyrocket like the number of the Zerg. It's just that this material is a bit troublesome. After all, the main material of the machine tribe is high-grade metal dolomite steel. If there is no mine with stable output, the money it would cost to simply acquire it would be really exorbitant. Moreover, the Chin Ming colony has not yet found a suitable galaxy and has not officially started construction it is not a good idea to spend money on the mechanical race. Therefore, the expansion of the mechanical clan will have to be considered again at that time. However, as long as he can produce the consciousness of a new individual of the machine race, even if the machine race in his hand falls on the front line, he can still use spiritual energy to recycle all the materials. And he does not have to worry too much about losses. It can all be recycled and reused anyway. As long as the scale of the battlefield does not exceed the number of machines currently controlled by Chen Ming, it will be fine. It doesn't matter if it exceeds the limit. In addition to the mechanical race, Chen Ming also has the Zerg race that can serve as combat power on the ground battlefield. In addition to the individuals of the machine tribe, Chen Ming's second most harvest this time was the cruiser of the machine tribe. Except for the colonial ship that Chen Ming took away on the ground. There are also eight cruisers from the second wave of reinforcements from the machine tribe. Five of them were blown to pieces in Chen Ming's Meteor Fighter Sea. The internal cores of these five cruisers were damaged in the explosion. And they lost the psychic protection of the mechanical race. Therefore, the remaining large pieces of debris had been dismantled into materials and sent to the temporary stronghold, which made up for the white cloud steel material he was in short supply of recently. Although the remaining three ships did not explode together, they basically lost their combat capabilities under the attack of the meteor. Previously, Chin Ming had tied him to several other cruisers using local methods. Then when they jumped again, they were brought to the galaxy where the pirate space station was located. Previously, Chin Ming was not sure what mental consumption would be incurred in the subsequent battles. At that time, there was no immediate waste of mental energy to control the three cruisers that had lost their combat effectiveness and even the ability to move. So he didn't notice that his spiritual power couldn't control those mechanical races. Now Chin Ming also tested it a little, and found that the results were the same. Just like the other mechanical tribes, these three cruisers are also protected by the mechanical tribe's psychic hive network and cannot be controlled. However, Chin Ming's follow-up scan of the three mechanical cruisers revealed that they were all combat cruisers. The internal structure is similar to that of an ordinary machine race individual. In addition to various devices that realize the originally designed functions, the rest are three cores. A core chip, a secondary core, and a device for storing nanorobots. All upgraded to the cruiser level. Overall, it's just an ordinary cruiser. Moreover, they are still three cruisers of the same standard, with no special system devices on them. Only the colony ship was slightly special. And its internal structure was very different from other mechanical cruisers. Anyway, Chin Ming just left the colonial ship to Hui Hui to study. Let Hui Hui figure out how to use the mechanical tribe's colonial ship and then combine it with Yu Hui's own colonization method and Chen Ming's early colonial construction plan obtained from the empire. The three were combined into one to develop a plan that could adapt to Chen Ming's future colonial construction. Chen Ming believes that Hui Wang will definitely produce a result. When he actually colonizes in the future, his true value will be reflected. Except for the spaceship. Chen Ming also gained something special this time. That special individual of the machine family. Since this machine race is directly controlled by the cruiser, and does not have a core chip installed. There is no consciousness of the machine race on it. 
Therefore, Qin Ming can directly control it without any restrictions. And its name immediately appeared in front of Qin Ming. Machine Family Heavy Mechanical Body Purgatory Demon King. Energy Reserve, 27%. Main Weapon, Imperial Artillery. Secondary Weapons, Charge Blaster Asterisk 2. Charge Machine Gun Asterisk 2. External Armor, Mechanical Family Heavy Dolomite Steel Armor. Self-Awareness, None. Important Equipment, Purgatory Core, in Operation. Core Chip Missing. Secondary Personality Core, in Operation. Nanoscale Maintenance Machinery, 33%. Thermal Energy Curing System, in Operation. Thermal Energy Extraction Device, in Operation Middle. Available Operations. Repair, Deep Repair, Slash Modification, Slash Disassembly. Chin Ming briefly looked at the things on the panel. And then clicked on the Purgatory Core in the Important Equipment column of the machine called the Purgatory Demon King. Although there is no detailed introduction to this thing on the panel. But Chin Ming can figure out its function just by relying on his own understanding. He is the source of the Purgatory Demon King's ability to control and influence heat energy. It is the true core of the Purgatory Demon King compared to the core chip and secondary core. And it is also a special relic of another civilization in the true sense. Just like the low-temperature computing engine that Chin Ming heard about from Bai Quan. The cryogenic computing engine is a supercomputer used by the destroyed civilization specifically to calculate battle-type events. It needs to absorb heat to maintain the high-speed operation of the computer while completing its own tasks. It can also achieve the outrageous effect of entropy reduction, which violates the laws of physics. Although the purgatory core is not as exaggerated as the entropy decrease, it can also control the entropy increase and the steady-state distribution of entropy in the environment. Change the surrounding environment on a large scale, making the environment more suitable for silicon-based life forms, such as the mechanical race, and not suitable for any carbon-based life forms. Chin Ming has seen it before. What he wants to know more now is whether this core can play a greater role in his hands. For example, mass production for Chin Ming, even if it is a relic of another civilization, as long as it comes into his hands, it will be controlled by his spiritual energy. Psionics then automatically allow him to master the use of the things he controls. When the method of use is clear and the internal structure can be resolved through three-dimensional imaging, Chin Ming can completely analyze the internal structure of this purgatory core. From the outside to the inside, they are the SH, L layer, isolation layer, operation layer and core layer. There is nothing much to say about the outer SH, L layer. Above it are the various interfaces and the protective core SH, L. When he saw the isolation layer, Chin Ming was stunned for the first time. This isolation layer can isolate high temperature from the outside. Internally, it can isolate the psychic energy fluctuations emitted from the internal operating layer and core layer. Chin Ming blinked to confirm that he had read it correctly. The operation of this purgatory core relies on spiritual energy. Its operating layer and core layer are all made of pure psychic materials to form a complex mechanical device. Although Chin Ming could clearly see the structure of the entire core, Without understanding the principles, there was only one question left in his mind. How is this done? Chin Ming carefully checked it several times again and confirmed that there were no traces of psychic creatures or spiritual nerves in the core. This is really an object that can produce psychic effects purely relying on technological level and psychic materials. An object that allows mechanical beings like the machine tribe to control psychic energy. Chin Ming didn't change much on the surface. But there were already thousands of thoughts in his mind. Among them, the one that appeared most frequently was the galaxy marked by the coordinates he obtained from the satellite of the mechanical race. He must go there. There must be something more outrageous than the purgatory core or even the cryogenic computing engine. Chin Ming took a deep breath for a few seconds and suppressed some of his unrealistic thoughts. He returned his attention to the purgatory demon king itself. In addition to the core, there are other valuable things on the body. For example, the imperial cannon. This thing is also very special because Chin Ming also discovered a mechanical structure made of psychic materials inside the weapon. This thing is a psychic weapon. Chapter 195 Thoughts Psychic Weapons To be honest, Chin Ming didn't know much about psychic weapons, but he could clearly feel that the Imperial Cannon was a strange type of psychic weapon. Chin Ming originally thought so. Psionic weapons are either purely auxiliary, in addition to providing an increase in psychic energy to the psyker. The performance of the psionic weapon is the same as the performance of the sample produced by itself. For example, his revolver, which the designer calls Ming, only serves the purpose of assisting him in using his psychic powers. 
Its attack performance is no different from that of an ordinary revolver. The others were either what Chen Ning had seen before on the website, whereby Quan registered his weapons. Psionic weapons left behind by deceased psychers that are unique to them and can produce psionic effects according to the user's psionic abilities. Or, something like a psychic pulse generator. This is a device that specifically uses psychic energy waves to directly attack living creatures. It can also be regarded as a psychic weapon. But the Imperial Artillery is different from these types. It is a type of psionic weapon that uses the assistance of psionic materials to build a mechanical structure that can achieve psionic effects, so that effects that are originally difficult to achieve can be achieved. After all, the Emperor Yi Artillery is just a cannon with a length of no more than 30 meters. At this size, the ability to frequently fire projectiles with an explosion diameter of nearly a kilometer is obviously achieved by relying on the mechanical structure constructed of internal psychic materials. Under normal circumstances, if a weapon of this size was just a one-time weapon, it would be easily achieved according to the Empire's current technological level. It would definitely be fine for Chen Ming to learn some relevant techniques on his own. But under this size limit, it is not necessary to use a machine that is only two lowest level civilian frigates stacked together multiple times, frequently, or even for a long time. And if the use of his psychic powers is also restricted, the difficulty will be completely different. There are long-term heat dissipation problems at this size, continuous energy supply problems, recoil problems, and problems that must be dealt with in the miniaturization of various weapons. All are problems. And under normal circumstances, many of these problems cannot be solved by replacing materials according to their properties. But the physical rules clearly indicate that it is impossible to achieve and cannot solve the problem. But obviously, this imperial artillery is extraordinary. And spiritual energy is not ordinary. Therefore, all the problems that should have arisen on this imperial industry artillery did not arise. And were all solved by spiritual energy. Moreover, Chin Ning could see that this weapon did not just utilize the strength of the psychic material itself. It also clearly utilizes a special mechanical structure constructed of psychic materials in its design. Allowing these original rigid materials to exhibit an effect similar to that of a psychic using psychic energy. And what's even more special is that. The mechanical tribe itself is just a hive network built by relying on spiritual energy. It is not that the mechanical tribe itself has mastered the use of psionic energy. So in a sense, this is equivalent to allowing ordinary people to do things that only psychers can do. Chen Ning found that he seemed to have found his main research direction in the future from this weapon. Psychic materials can do many things that normal weapons cannot do through special structures. Chen Ming's psychic power can also enable many weapons to do things that cannot be done under normal circumstances. Combining the two will definitely provide better performance. Although Chen Ning's current technical level is still at the level of a cruiser, his systematic understanding of psychic energy is close to nothing. He has only gotten here through trial and error. There is nothing wrong with him using his psychic energy. But just think about it, and actually conduct research and systematically create psychic weapons. Even if the Imperial Industry Artillery is placed in front of him, he can only understand the actual effect now. The structure made of the psychic materials inside is completely incomprehensible, let alone understanding the principles and designing new psychic weapons according to the principles. But Chin Ning is not in a hurry to give up. He is very clear about his progress all the time. As long as he is given time, he will master this knowledge one day. This Imperial Cannon is not only a weapon that will be used by the Purgatory Demon King in the future where Chin Ming needs it to appear. At the same time, it is also Chin Ming's best reference when conducting research on psychic weapons in the future. The two items of special value in the Purgatory Demon King are the Purgatory Core and the Imperial Cannon. There is nothing special except for some supporting heat control equipment. After all, it is still a ground unit and cannot compare to the real crystallization of technology. The Battleship just like the army cannot compare with the navy. Of course, Chen Ning was referring to the mechanical battleships, although he has only seen a few ordinary mechanical cruisers so far. But since the mechanical tribe has special mechanical tribe ground units, like the Purgatory Demon King, it can be inferred that the mechanical tribe has some equally special battleship units. And if the large weapons of the battleship, even the main weapons, also have things similar to the Imperial Artillery, or even things like the Purgatory Corps, and the low-temperature computing engine. That's the really scary stuff. If Chin Ming decides to control those mechanical tribes, then these things will definitely come across sooner or later. However, Chin Ming also believed that the Imperial military knew much more than he did at least in fighting the machine race. There are many things that he can't find now, but it doesn't mean that he can't find them with the help of the 14th Legion. 
so he could ask Bai Quan about things related to it. But he had to wait until Bai Quan figured out what it was that destroyed the mechanical fleet before. Chen Ming temporarily put aside his attention to the Purgatory Demon King, and then turned his attention to the other mechanical races. Although the Purgatory Demon King is indeed outstanding, the other ordinary individuals of the Machine Tribe are also very good. The Insect Queen took the lead in making a surprise attack, crushing her troops and overwhelming the battlefield. Despite the unfavorable start, it managed to hold on for a long time. There were even signs of a counterattack in the middle. But it was not until the end that the Insect Queen was killed by the specially cultivated Zerg. It is definitely wrong to say that such a mechanical race has no value. So Chen Ming also took a look at the current individual types of the mechanical clan, which will be useful in the future. After all, the Zerg tribe is led by the Insect Queen. But there is no individual like the Insect Queen in the mechanical tribe in Chen Ming's hands. All these mechanical tribes directly take orders from Chen Ming himself. In other words, Chen Ming himself is equivalent to the Insect Queen in the Mechanical Tribe. Therefore, in the absence of the Insect Queen, he needs to personally command the Mechanical Clan. And some things are always unavoidable. Instead of scrambling in the future, it is better to take advantage of the right time now and figure out everything that needs to be clarified. Chen Ming gave a rough summary of the types of machinery. It can be divided into six levels. Micro, Small, standard, medium, large and heavy duty. The micro machine family Chin Ming currently has on hand is A, machine family micro machine body worker B. Although there is only one type of worker B, there are actually more detailed differentiations of worker Bs. Their individuals will install different tools on different worker Bs according to different work needs to achieve different functions. Chin Ming counted casually and found that the mechanical family in his hands could currently be divided into more than a dozen worker Bs with different functions. It's basically a purely logistical type of machine. In the future, when Chen Ming's colony is built, it will definitely be no problem to use it to attack Yue individuals. There are two types of small mechanical species, digging bugs and termites. Chen Ming had seen the digging worm before. It was a 3 to 4 meter long mechanical race that was good at civil engineering. The termite is a combat type mechanical body similar in size to the burrowing insect, but more slender and flatter. It is equipped with a short-range artillery equipped with armor-piercing explosive SH, LS specially used to destroy buildings, making it a proper siege unit. It's just that Chen Ming had hardly noticed this kind of mechanical race in previous battles. After all, the mechanical race is the one being beaten, and the number of termites is indeed very small. The number of termites among the more than 30,000 mechanical race individuals that Chen Ming took away was only close to 10. This thing is useful, but not many types. The further standard type is more special. All humanoid mechanical bodies are classified in it, although they are smaller in size than the burrowing insects and termites classified in the small type. They are the standard type. To be honest, this is a bit intriguing. After all, the word standard is still very special. However, Chen Ming was just guessing. There was no substantial evidence. So he didn't think much about it. In short, there are quite a few standard mechanical bodies. Things like Flying Mantis and Jing Mantis are all divided into it. Then during the previous battle with the Zerg, those mechanical bodies, slugs, of the mechanical tribe that could fly and cause some trouble for the Zerg were also included. Another invisible mechanical body that can eject liquid energy crystals that assassinate the Zerg, both fly, is also among them. They are all units with unique abilities, each with their own value. In addition, Chen Ming actually discovered the same type of mechanical body of a flying mantis that had almost no sense of existence. Shield Mantis. It is equipped with an electromagnetic rifle and is equipped with a special device. It can build a powerful electromagnetic force field around itself to block any metal from approaching. Basically blocking bullets. But the Zerg don't shoot bullets at all. Nor do they spit out anything made of metal. So the previous combat effectiveness of this kind of machine didn't play a role at all. So much so that Chen Ming didn't even care about this kind of mechanical body. But when I take it out now, I feel that it is somewhat useful. At least it will be effective when facing humans, or afterglows, who can use live ammunition weapons. There are currently two types of medium-sized mechanical clan Chen Ming. Namely the, Blazing Silkworm, that has been captured before. The other type is the non-combat type of mechanical race, Carrier Ant, that is more common in mechanical race cities. Just by looking at the name. You can tell what this is a mechanical clan, but it can actually do more. But for the current Chen Ming, it doesn't have much value. Then, there is the large mechanical clan. Chin Ming currently only has one type on hand, 
which is centipede. Although centipedes can continue to be subdivided into three types. Hellfire Cannon Centipede, Charge Shock Centipede, and Charge Machine Gun Centipede. But it's not necessary. Speaking of which, Chen Ning suddenly remembered the idea that came to him when he saw a centipede's weapon. Just study these charged weapons a centipede. Charged weapons are different from electromagnetic weapons. Electromagnetic weapons simply use electromagnetic acceleration to launch high-speed live ammunition. Charged weapons use special charged bullets that can produce explosions and arcs when the bullets hit. Chen Ning feels that it has great potential. Although his fleet now basically uses energy weapons. And this thing is a live ammunition. The effect is really good. It's not right to steal first. But to learn first. Because you may not be able to use it one day. And since Chin Ming Kai had obtained charged weapons after two fights with the mechanical tribe, it meant that the Empire must have obtained samples of charged weapons earlier than he did. But since Chin Ming has never learned the relevant knowledge, it must be that the Empire has blocked the information about this weapon and used it for the army's own use. Since there is quality assurance from the military, Chin Ning will not lose money if he learns it. Finally, there is the heavy machinery family. Chin Ming only has one, which is the Purgatory Demon King. Speaking of which, Chin Ming suddenly noticed that the naming method of this purgatory demon king was different from the ordinary mechanical race that was related to insects. I don't know if that civilization has any special interest in bugs, or if the empire's translators have some strange habits. In short, there are only so many types of machines that Chin Ming currently controls. But there are definitely more models in the mechanical family. The current situation only occurred because one of the two mechanical tribe cities that Chin Ming found was on the border of that civilization and had declined, while the other colony was still developing. After summarizing the units of the mechanical clan, Chin Ming also sorted out all the units of the Zerg clan, including the individuals that evolved individually from the Queen of Zergs during the battle. In addition to the Strider, Giant Spider, Vesicle Bug, and Scale Bug that are present at the beginning, it's the Blood Baneling that has little presence, but has been playing a role. It sprays out a large amount of Zerg blood by self-destructing interfering with the normal operation of the mechanical race. Although it dies quickly, it does play a lot of uses. It's just that Chin Ning hasn't figured out the reason why the Zerg blood interferes with the operation of the mechanical tribe. Although it doesn't affect Chin Ming's use of the Zerg blood, he should investigate it if he has time. The other is the main force that previously advanced on the frontal battlefield between the Zerg and machines. The largest Zerg, which Chin Ming simply and crudely called Titan Bug, Liquid Crystal Worm, capable of spraying unstable and explosive energy crystallized liquid, able to launch a cone-shaped product that combines Zerg carapace and energy crystal. It is used by the Zerg Queen to intercept the bombardment of blazing silkworm artillery, cone crystal worm. There are also improvised fungus bugs that can spit out large amounts of sticky fungi. But this bug is simply used to restrict the flying mechanical bugs like nymphs. The restrictions are too great. There are too few scenes that can be used. And there is not much meaning. However, the other type, stinging scorpion flying insect, is more valuable. It is a high-speed flying melee zerg unit, which is very useful when facing the fragile back row of the mechanical race. The jet black carapace gives it powerful protection and sharp weapons. It has no obvious shortcomings except that it is easily wiped out by large-scale flame attacks like blazing silkworm. The last type of insect left was called Parasite by Chen Ming. It was the key to the queen's comeback when she almost overturned. He directly controlled a large number of mechanical centipedes and pushed them all the way to the center of the city. It is also the key to helping Chin Ming obtain so many mechanical races. It can only be said that the Zerg have evolved to a very powerful level without knowing it. Some Zergs may not be useful individually, but when all these Zergs belong to one insect nest, they have an advantage that no other force can match in ground combat. Of course, Zerg also have shortcomings, such as the breeding time being too long. The breeding of Zerg now basically relies on the queen to actively control the carpet to generate Zerg larvae. The larvae are then differentiated into different adults as needed. Generally speaking, it takes a long time. And the insect queen also needs to keep an eye on it. That's why he took so long to prepare when he attacked the mechanical city. Chin Ming already has some thoughts on this issue. It is to let the insect queen find a way to evolve a factory similar to the mechanical race. A biological factory unique to the insect race. The mechanical race can rely on factory assembly lines to produce mechanical race individuals. But once the insect race breaks away from the insect queen, Chin Ming has to find a way to give birth to new insects on his own. But if this idea can be realized, the insect queen can set up several breeding factories like the mechanical clan 
and it can produce Zerg individuals on its own even if it is out of its control. That is very valuable to Chen Ming. And Chen Ming didn't need the Insect Queen to be able to figure out his thoughts completely. Chen Ming only needed the Insect Queen to come up with a prototype. And the rest could be completed with his spiritual power. Chen Ming can also study the thoughts in his mind when the Queen of Insects studied the Zerg architecture when he saw the Purgatory Demon King before. That is to create a special individual with powerful abilities that belongs to the Zerg race and belongs to Chen Ming himself. Although the special individuals of the Zerg race may not necessarily have the outrageous combat power brought about by using the Purgatory Core like the Purgatory Demon King. But Chen Ming's psychic powers can always produce some unexpected effects. And the Zerg now possess psychic powers themselves. The combination of two psychic powers can't be compared to a psychic device made purely by relying on psychic materials and special manufacturing technology. Right? Moreover, Chen Ming actually has a special idea that he can try when the time comes. At this moment, Chen Ming suddenly received a message from the Queen of the Hive Mind Network. At this time, it had already gathered back the Zerg that attacked the mechanical city and retreated deep underground. At the same time, it also destroyed the underground passage and began to absorb the insects, gradually converting the insects into energy crystals, which Chen Ming could take back at any time. And if the mechanical tribe wants to dig out the insect queen from deep underground, it will definitely take a lot of effort. But the greater possibility is that it cannot be dug out. Because the insect queen transmitted a picture to Chen Ming that he had not seen just now. A memory of the insect queen herself. Just after Chen Ming ran away with the fleet, the insects on the ground had not completely evacuated yet and saw what was happening in the mechanical colony. That is, the buildings and the machines themselves that are constantly being violently destroyed by something that cannot be observed as well as those huge manta ray-like marks. This should be an important clue to confirm the source of the danger perceived by Chen Ming. Chen Ming really couldn't take out this scene. After all, memories could only be transmitted within the hive mind network. Chen Ming himself is the builder of the cellular network. In the cellular network, other people and other mechanical equipment cannot access the network. However, Chen Ming thought about it and felt that it should be fine. Since Bai Quan had such a big reaction before, he must have made a very accurate guess. He should be looking for him soon. In short, the summary of Chen Ming's gains this time is that his machine race and the machine race hive network can become stronger, providing him with more mental power and other assistance. The premise is that he chooses to take the risk of the mechanical clan. At the same time, the Zerg have also become stronger. This one is really stronger. In addition to Chen Ming's previous evolution and deep repair of the insect queen, there were also exchanges of new species created. The bugs that evolve on the battlefield are proof that they have become stronger. Even though some of them are designed to target specific bugs, they have their limitations. But parasites clearly don't fall into this category. Parasites are powerful and dangerous. Because the targets it can affect are not limited to the mechanical race. But Chen Ning will not let the insect queen use the parasite to deal with any enemies other than the mechanical race for the time being. He will never be exposed to anyone or any species with normal thinking. Although Chen Ming himself did not gain much in this battle. But as long as the machine race and the Zerg race become stronger, Chen Ning will also become stronger with the feedback from the Hive Network. So that's pretty much it. After Chen Ming summarized the gains this time, he breathed a sigh of relief and moved his tibia slightly, arranged where to go after a few cruisers. The Defender and the Colossus were left at the edge of the galaxy by Chen Ning because they carried individuals of the mechanical race that were not yet controlled by him. They can't go back yet. At least until Chen Ning figures out whether the benefits and risks are worth controlling those machines. Anyway, he is now in the galaxy where the pirate space station is located. There should be no one who doesn't have eyes who comes to this place. The remaining two cruisers used hyperspace to leave the pirate galaxy for a certain distance. And then return to the temporary stronghold through several jumps. Hui Wang and Hui Ao both have things to do at the temporary stronghold. Fighting against the machine clan is just a guest appearance. Their business at the temporary stronghold is their business. After completing the other four cruisers, Chen Ming took control of the Supreme Point and Stardust and headed to the Pirate Space Station. Although the main business of development is important, there are still some other things waiting for him to deal with. Chapter 196 Phase Space Chen Ming arrived at the Pirate Space Station not long after. The new director had already arranged for people to squat in the special passage of the cruiser ship's position early on, and specially met Chen Ming to say H, Lo. The new director is not the deputy director, who was demoted before, and was promoted again. But the new director sent by Cinda Company headquarters. He is obviously very aware of the situation of his predecessor. So his attitude towards Chen Ming can be said to be quite respectful. 
Don't reach out to hit the smiling person. When others give face, Chen Ming also gives face, greeting people normally and getting to know them. Anyway, as long as he and the people he knows are not offended, he doesn't care who the director is or what the distribution of interests is within the company. After politely declining the new director's invitation to dinner, Chen Ning did not find the factory director and Lao Wu in the maintenance shop. On the contrary, the bald man whom he had given a sum of money to before and the only newcomer who survived the military attack who he had taken care of for two days were working in the factory. After chatting with them for a few words, Chen Ming ran directly to the hardware store of Space Arm 2, preparing to find the boss. However, when Chen Ming arrived, he found that the hardware store was closed. At this time, he suddenly remembered that Bai Chuan's promotion ceremony was less than two weeks away. The boss had been invited to attend, so it was normal to be absent. Chen Ming turned around and ran to the administration building again, only to find that the door of the factory director's office was also closed. Maybe he had something to do. So Chen Ming ran all the way to the bar again. The security guard, who was unfamiliar to Chen Ming at the door obviously knew Chen Ming and walked into the bar with respect in his eyes. After all, Chen Ming did not wear protective clothing or power armor when he came out this time. So it was normal for the security guard to recognize him. In the past, Chen Ming was worried about his identity being exposed and his personal safety. So he wore various protective clothing and power armor. But now his identity has been made public. Moreover, with his current mental strength, even if he does not have any protective equipment, he is enough to react to any sneak attack by any weapon and manually create armor. Thus ensuring safety, there is really no need to wear these things. Chen Ming entered the bar and scanned the entire bar. This time he didn't miss it. Chen Ming asked the bartender for a glass of orange juice, walked a few steps to the corner of the bar, and sat down next to Old Wu, who was drinking here as usual. Old Wu, who was drinking with his head down, noticed Chen Ming at this moment and asked unexpectedly, You're back? Yeah. I was chased and beaten outside. And I hid for two days when I came back. What kind of thing can chase you and beat you up? More than 80 mechanical cruisers. Lao Wu almost spit out a mouthful of wine. He felt that what Chen Ning said was true. Did you dig into someone's ancestral grave? No. I dug the foundation of someone's new house. But nothing else. How are you doing lately? Lao Wu raised the cup in his hand and said, It's still the same. Just live like this every day. Do whatever you have to do. Just like there will be a sister waiting for me to go to dinner later. Otherwise, how can I drink so lightly? Of. A few words of small talk. Chen Ming changed the topic to business and asked, Have there been more pirates in the Star Territory in the past half month? Lao Wu nodded and said, It's a little more. And there may be more in the future. How to say? Old Wu took out the terminal, placed a few articles on the terminal and said, Have you seen the news recently? There are more babies born with deformities in the hospital. And it's not just one or two places. This situation has occurred in most areas of the entire empire. Then, there are rumors that the wave of deformities from decades ago is coming again. This kind of thing has endless consequences. So it makes people panic. The whole environment is in chaos. So it's normal for there to be more pirates. When Jin Ning was reading the news reports on Lao Wu's terminal, Lao Wu continued, And recently, people from Huijing have also been active within the empire. The god of the cult that promoted them punished humans for their blasphemy. TSK, TSK, TSK. But some people still believe this nonsense. What can be done? Chin Ming shook his head slightly and said, Zhu Jing is really troublesome. Who says it's not? By the way, isn't there any movement from the Empire's top brass? It doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. The publicity department has only blocked the news of some deformed children. But substantive solutions have not yet been provided. Chin Ming had nothing to complain about because there was no solution. After all, the Empire couldn't get it even if it wanted to. The gaze from another dimension created by Yu Hui some time ago is not going to work for anyone. As a person who has personally experienced dimensional infection, even the president of the Psychic Association cannot deal with the gaze of another dimension, let alone other inexperienced psychers. In the next 20 years, various conflicts will inevitably break out within the Empire. If you want to spend these 20 years safely, you have to look at the above methods. But this has nothing to do with Chen Ming. Anyway, the gaze from another dimension can only affect fragile newborns. And he has no idea of getting married and having children yet. Moreover, he will continue to develop externally in the future. And naturally, he will not be affected if he is not within the empire. 
So Chen Ming didn't talk much with Lao Wu on this topic, and instead brought up the factory director. I just went to the factory director's office. Where are the others? He should be there. Before old Wu could finish speaking, the terminal on Chen Ming suddenly rang. The factory director's phone number. Chen Ming picked it up and immediately heard the factory director's voice. Xiao Ming, I heard that you are back. Can you come to my office? Okay. Chen Ming agreed, shrugged at old Wu, then stood up and turned to the door of the bar. But before he took two steps, he suddenly remembered something. He turned to look at Lao Wu with a smile and said, I almost forgot. Chen Ming took out the backpack he was carrying when he got off the spacecraft, then took out a green gelatinous thing contained in a refrigerated box and handed it to old Wu. Old Wu took it and asked, What is this? The local specialties brought from outside taste good. Although Lao Wu usually investigates various aspects of intelligence, he obviously does not have a deep understanding of the food of the thorn zerk, which is already an endangered species. Even if it is said that part of the reason why the space station where Chen Ming stayed before was destroyed was the zerg, it's enough to know what kind of creatures the zerg are. There is really no need for more in-depth investigation. It was only because Chen Ming happened to see SH lack before and had zerg on hand that he could understand what ordinary zerg individuals usually eat. Lao Wu obviously wouldn't do this specifically. So now, he doesn't know what Chen Ming gave him. Seeing the suspicion on old Wu's face, Chen Ming waved his hand and said, I just have to go find the factory director, and I will give him a copy then. If you still want to eat, come to me. I have some on hand over there. Seeing Chen Ming turn around and leave the bar, old Wu touched his chin and opened the refrigerator box. Chen Ming's seemingly cunning smile just now flashed through his mind. However, the food should not be a trap for him. So he opened his mouth and took a bite of SH. Lack. An unexpected expression of surprise appeared on his face. And he quickly ate the whole ball of SH. Lack. After staying in the bar for more than 10 minutes, Lao Wu held his stomach and got into the toilet of the bar. Of course, at this time, Chen Ming didn't know that Lao Wu was also very lucky to be among the 0.2%. He had just arrived at the administration building and came to the factory director's office. Here, Chen Ming saw people from Xinda Company again. The factory director spread his hands and said, They said they wanted to give you money. So I called you here. When the person from Sinda Company heard this, he immediately handed a card to Chen Ming with both hands holding the corners and said, Mr. Chen Ming, this is your first installment of patent fees. The antimatter engine has begun mass production and development, tested on a large scale. Although Chen Ming already knew about this, he still cooperated and said, so fast? Yes. The antimatter engine currently seems to be the empire's most promising technology. Many people are now waiting for the results of this large-scale test. If the results are good, antimatter technology will be widely promoted throughout the empire, and the empire may experience another technological explosion. That's it. Chen Ming nodded slightly. It seemed that the importance of the antimatter engine was more important than he thought. Then his previous decision to leave the antimatter engine patent was indeed correct. Chen Ming inserted the card into the terminal smoothly. When he saw the 30 billion inside, Chen Ming's breathing became a little heavier. The money was more than he thought. After all, he does not hold the patent for antimatter technology alone. Other researchers and the company itself hold a higher proportion of the patent. It is an unexpected surprise to have 30 billion. Not to mention that people from Sinda Company said that this is only the first phase, and there will definitely be more to come. So Chen Ming smiled and accepted the money which would relieve his pressure for a long time in the future. Seeing that Chen Ming had confirmed the situation of the debit card and there was no dissatisfaction on his face, the people from Xinda Company bowed to Chen Ming and said, Then I won't bother you anymore. Goodbye, Mr. Chen Ming. With that said, he left the office very simply. Forehead. Chen Ming looked at the closed office door and was stunned for a moment. He thought that Xinda Company was planning to take this opportunity to chat with him. But he left immediately. It would be enough to just transfer the money directly to his card. But I don't know why he went all the way. But everyone left. So Chen Ming didn't say much. Turned around and sat at the factory director's desk. The factory director handed Chen Ming a cup of tea and asked, How long do you plan to stay this time? Chen Ming took a sip of tea and replied, The situation outside is good. And it doesn't matter whether I am there or not. So I'm going to stay on the space station for two days and do something. Although as the exploration progress at the temporary base increases, it is almost always necessary to fly outside to open up routes. However, Chen Ming knew this. 
So during the week of preparations before attacking the mechanical city, the Supreme Point was dedicated to opening up Ruth's day and night with high intensity. It should be enough to last for more than half a month for the low-level ships of Afterglow that will be explored later. It's not a big problem if I don't go back during this period. And he was indeed bored to death outside. The development was refreshing at the beginning. But then it became more and more boring day by day. Anyway, Jin Ming only provides mental strength when it comes to development. People are the same everywhere. So why not run around and do other things? After understanding this, the factory director did not continue to ask Chen Ming what he wanted to do. He just said, If you need help, just ask. Will do. Chen Ming then chatted with the factory director for a while about what happened during this period and then left the factory director's office. After going to receive a batch of living supplies that Lao Wu temporarily transferred over for him, he returned to the highest point. After calling and telling his boss that he was going back to the space station to stay for a few days, Chen Ning planned to directly start what he had to do after returning unexpectedly. Although some things can be done anywhere, there are some things that will be more valuable when you return to the Empire. For example, using psychic energy to deeply repair some technologies. As for the technology for in-death repair, Chen Ning had already thought about it before. First of all, it must be the technology of antimatter reactors and antimatter engines that the Empire seems to be vigorously promoting now. All technologies cannot be very mature when they appear. It must be gradually updated after a lot of testing and experiments. Chen Ming's spiritual power allows him to skip these steps. Therefore, when Chen Ming conducts and death repairs on antimatter-related technologies, the benefits should be the greatest. It just so happened that he also had a Stardust equipped with an antimatter engine. And since Chen Ming's deep repair psionic power only works on the target, any parts that can be disassembled at will will not be deeply repaired along with the target of Chen Ming's psionic power. This means that the Stardust-class engine has not been deeply repaired so far, and can be disassembled for related experiments at any time. And this is the reason why Chen Ming drove the Stardust class back to the space station, instead of returning to the temporary base with other ships. In addition to antimatter technology, there is another thing that Chen Ming also plans to repair in depth. It is Chen Ming's self-developed unstable hyperspace channel jump engine. Although the inspiration came from the abandoned case of Yu Wei research that Chen Ming obtained from Yu Wei, but the subsequent creation of this thing mainly relied on Chen Ming's ability to repair and adapt without fear of loss. His ability to adapt at will, and his understanding of the not-too-advanced hyperspace technology that has become popular now. Chen Ming had a good idea at the beginning, which was to use hyperspace to allow the spacecraft to achieve an effect similar to a jump. It's a pity that he was still limited by his technical level some time ago, which resulted in the final product being very unstable. The jump effect that Chen Ming wanted was not achieved, but instead a weird random teleportation effect was achieved. His long-dead refraction ship was lucky enough to be caught in the gap between the machine tribe, Yu Wei, and the human empire after it was equipped with this thing. If it was unlucky, it might be teleported to some dangerous place. Chen Ming only used it once. And he never had time to conduct in-depth research and testing. So this technology has been hidden until today. However, Chen Ming believes that as long as this technology undergoes in-depth maintenance with his psychic power, the effect will definitely change significantly. Of course, it is not impossible to restart the research on this thing with Chen Ming's current technical level, but it will definitely take a long time. Since there are psychic powers that can save time, Chen Ming feels that he does not need to study them honestly. Knowing the answer and working backwards is much easier than doing the math yourself. Anyway, the research results he finally came up with must be correct, and he did not steal the fruits of other people's labor. No one can say that it is wrong. By then, this achievement should be published in a scientific research journal in the Empire in his own name. After all, Chen Ming still has some pursuits. Gaining wide recognition in technology is something he has always wanted to achieve. Of course, there is another reason why Chen Ming wants to publish his research results. He is short of money. Even if Xinda Company had just given him 30 billion, he was still short. And the cost of development was much higher than he imagined. Moreover, the battle with the mechanical tribe just now consumed much more supplies than he had previously estimated. Chen Ming has only been out for less than two months. He has only made a jump, built a temporary stronghold, and explored less than 80% of the surrounding 400 light-year galaxies. But the amount of materials consumed can be said to be very huge. The colonized galaxy that Chen Ming targeted was at least seven or eight extreme jumps away. Not to mention that he has another target. The coordinates of the communication signal transmitted by the mechanical satellite. That is beyond the 13 extreme distance jumps. 
even if Chen Ming's path to find the colony happens to be exactly the same as the path to the coordinates of the machine tribe. The cost involved is definitely not 30 billion. He can't really live off the patent of antimatter technology. What he develops himself is what really belongs to him. The next day, before Chen Ming found Bai Quan to start teaching for the day, Bai Quan made a phone call. And he came up and said, I have already asked about the matter yesterday. And there is a result. But if I want to talk to you in detail, I need you to sign a contract. Bai Quan said and sent an electronic contract to Chen Ming, which contained a confidentiality agreement. Chen Ming looked at it and signed it directly after seeing that there was no problem. After confirming, Bai Quan organized his words and said, Let me tell you a basic concept first. Phase space. This is a unique space independent of the normal universe and hyperspace. Things inside phase space cannot be observed by ordinary means. But things in phase space can affect the normal universe and hyperspace under certain circumstances. That's the basis of the phase craft we're developing. Xin Ming interrupted and asked, Is this technology also a legacy of that civilization? Obviously not. Otherwise the machine race, as another legacy of that civilization, would not have a way to target things in phase space. Our access to the source of phase space is just an ordinary researcher. While conducting some research in hyperspace, he discovered a special signal that was similar to a transition wave. Following this signal, he discovered something that could not be observed by normal means, and he reported his findings layer by layer. Then the Empire started researching phase space. Xin Ming suddenly asked again, What did the researcher discover? Have no idea. Have no idea? Yes. Because when our phase technology has developed enough to investigate phase space, the object that allowed us to discover phase space has long since disappeared, and the question of what it is has not yet been answered. All right. Chin Ming thought for a moment and then asked, Who is the discoverer? An ordinary researcher at Tachyon Technology has not participated in subsequent research, so he has no special value. After waiting for a while and seeing that Chin Ming had no follow-up questions, Bai Quan said, Have you finished asking? Then I will continue. According to our research over the years, the interior of the phase space is exactly the same as the normal universe. Except that the phase space can affect the normal universe. But the normal universe cannot affect the phase space. And we have never found anything in phase space that is unique to phase space. So some research institutes have the idea of treating phase space as a unique environment to create unique spacecraft. Bai Quan paused for a moment, giving Chen Ming time to digest. And then continued, The situation is different now. What you discovered there can basically confirm that things in the phase space are affecting the normal cosmic environment. And the way the thing moves looks like some kind of creature. So it is temporarily named the phase behemoth. It will wait for more precise investigation before giving a scientific name. By the way, let me tell you first. We determine the location of your video based on the starry sky in the video you sent. So uh, you know. Fine. Chen Ming said casually. I jumped back to the empire directly in front of that phase beast. If you move faster, you don't even need to analyze the video. You can directly go to the location where I jumped back and determine the trajectory of my jump. And you will know where I came back from. And I asked you to help me cover up the traces of my jump before. It doesn't matter if you know. So, how do you deal with this phase beast? Bai Quan hesitated for a moment and said, There is no way to deal with it. Although our research progress on phase technology is pretty good, the phase ship itself is still in the experimental stage and the phase beast is at least the size of a cruiser. It can only be said to be a fantasy to go to the mechanical tribe to deal with the phase beast. At most, some spaceships will go over to investigate and find ways to obtain data. Chin Ming asked slightly worriedly, What if it comes to the Empire? Is there no way to deal with it? That's not the case. Although the research on phase spacecraft has not yet reached the level of practical application, many phase weapons have been developed for a long time. If it doesn't work, we still have psychers. Besides, in the video, the giant phase beast was attacking the mechanical fleet entirely with its body, without any means of non-melee attack. If it weren't for the fact that it's in phase space, it would just be an ordinary space beast. Although it cannot be said that we have completely lowered our guard against it. It seems that it is just like that at the moment. Shin Ming asked back, You mean you don't really need to worry? Right? Right. That's okay. If I encounter a phase beast in the future, I will tell you. After all, Chen Ming couldn't handle this thing himself. It would be no harm to him if the Empire could find a way to deal with the phase beast. Of course, it would be the best if you don't encounter them. 
It would be best if the phase monster goes to the mechanical tribe to avoid annoying him. After ending the topic of the phase beast, Chen Ming suddenly said, I want to ask you something. Bai Quan, does your military accept some spaceship technology or something? What do you mean? Have you figured it out? No. No. It's just that I have a research direction here, which I think is quite special and should be valuable. Bai Quan blinked. He knew everything about Chen Ming from birth to today and knew what Chen Ning's technical level was roughly. Although Chen Ning's technology now seems to have surpassed that of many people, there is still a gap compared with cutting-edge scientists. So he said tactfully, just find some official websites or magazines to publish it. The military has always paid attention to research from all walks of life. If it is of value to the military, it will contact the author directly. Chen Ming could understand the meaning of Bai Quan's words, and Chen Ming didn't find it strange. After all, who would have thought that a psychic who could only control a spaceship at the beginning would one day have the outrageous ability to perform conceptual and death repairs on various mechanical equipment and even living creatures? It's normal for Bai Quan not to completely believe him. But Chen Ming believes that time will give the answer. Chapter 197 Xiao Yang's Connection A week passed quickly. Chen Ming once made a habit of recording what happened in the past week on weekend nights. In the past week, the temporary stronghold was operating normally without Chen Ming and was conducting normal external development and investigation. He also unexpectedly discovered the skeleton of an Alcheran sky eel floating in space, which was collected by brilliance and intensified its exploration of the galaxy around the discovery of the skeleton. Chen Ming, who was on the space station, continued to teach with Bai Quan every day and reduced the time he spent on other studies and spent it on research. In one week, he managed to get two deeply repaired technologies out. Of course, the antimatter engine only has improved physical samples because Chen Ning himself does not understand antimatter technology. The other unstable hyperspace channel jump engine he developed himself became completely different after in-depth repairs. After several days of research, Chen Ming has completely understood the operation of the improved hyperspace engine technology. And through reverse inference, he successfully wrote a paper that seemed to be completely forward research. It can only be said that psychic energy is also part of the research ability. Then Chen Ming also submitted the paper to a top academic journal related to spacecraft technology that he knew. By the way, I borrowed Bai Chuan's connections. Let those who are specifically responsible for review speed up the review. Chen Ming didn't know where Bai Quan got this kind of relationship. But since he could do it, Chen Ming had no reason to refuse to do it. It takes a lot of time to review professional papers. If you can find connections, why not? There should be no surprises in this paper. After all, Chen Ning first developed a stable hyperspace channel engine and then wrote the paper. He knew very well what kind of effects the hyperspace channel engine had. Chen Ning estimated that there would be a response within the next two days. By then, it would be very easy to make money with the patent in hand. It's just that the antimatter engine is a little hot. Because it is completely different from the hyperspace channel engine. Chen Ning cannot give a forward research process that at least seems reasonable. This means that Chen Ming's psychic power can deeply repair anything without being limited by his own knowledge level. The value of such a psychic power is terrifying to anyone. And this is even more true for an empire that has mastered countless cutting-edge technologies. If Chen Ming showed the optimized antimatter engine, he might not be able to leave this time, because his psychic powers have shown far more value in research than in combat. If you change your thinking a little bit, think about it. If Chen Ming is an official of the empire, or a top official researcher. So knowing that there is such a powerful psyker running outside, you must be worried. You must be thinking of leaving the person in the empire. And it is best to find an extremely safe place to place him. Then the food and drink are served. And the psyker waits for the psyker to use his psionic improvement technology. This kind of life seems very good. But Shin Ning doesn't want to live like this. So he hid the improved antimatter technology and left it to Chao Fan to study. To be precise, Chao Fan was thrown above the stardust level. Then within two days, Chao Fan sent Chen Ning a list of research equipment used to study improved antimatter engines. Because the batch of equipment Chen Ming purchased before did not include equipment for researching antimatter technology. And if you want to buy it new, the price of this batch of research equipment will be around 12 billion. It is quite difficult to buy. And there is no place to install it after buying it. The remaining space on the highest point has long been filled with the research equipment Chen Ming purchased in the previous batch. But Chen Ming finally agreed. And the idle space such as the crew lounge on the Stardust class, where the self-destructing small aircraft is placed at the end of the battlefield. 
which generally does not appear at the front of the battlefield, has been, okay, transformed to leave space. It will be used to transform the research laboratory for Chow Chow. After all, Chin Ming himself owns the patent for antimatter technology. It is not difficult to obtain antimatter technology itself. And it is not difficult to let Chow Fan learn it. But if you want Cha Extraordinary to master the improved antimatter engine with bare hands, you can only think about it. But the antimatter engine has significantly improved the spacecraft. The greatly increased radiation capacity and radiation dissipation are of great significance even to Chin Ming. Not to mention improved ones. Therefore, Chin Ning must try to master the improved antimatter technology, which will be beneficial to his own fleet and the construction of future colonies. As long as Chin Ning can write a complete research process similar to the improved stable hyperspace channel engine he developed himself, he can throw out the improved antimatter engine technology. And if he doesn't use it, he will face possible restrictions from the Empire's high level officials. At the same time, you can use such improvements to make more money. Therefore, this 12 billion cannot be saved. Lao Wu definitely couldn't get antimatter related equipment. So Chen Ning went directly to his boss. The boss did agree. But it was hard to say when exactly he would get the equipment. In short, in the past week, apart from waiting for equipment and writing papers, Chen Ning was also doing some other things. His research on Zerg structures is ongoing. Although it is a bit difficult, the progress is not ideal. Just the first step of cultivating the larvae was stuck for several days. Because under normal circumstances, Every step of cultivating the larvae is carried out by the queen herself. And every larvae is pinched by the queen herself. If automated breeding is to be accomplished through biological architecture, then every step that the insect queen completes at will must be carefully differentiated. The various organs and tissues inside the biological building must be able to reproduce the steps of pinching the larvae of the queen one by one. And they must be able to reproduce them in batches. Just like every step of a fertilized egg from dividing to differentiating to finally forming a baby is no longer carried out automatically, but needs to be squeezed by human hands. You can imagine the difficulty. Fortunately, Chen Ming's spiritual power is not a decoration. In the past week, except for the first two days when Chen Ning used his spiritual energy on antimatter technology and unstable hyperspace channel engines, the next five days of his spiritual energy were used on the Zerg. Finally, the Zerg biological building named Larvae Hatching Pool by Chen Ming was successfully built. As for the subsequent differentiated and cultivated biological buildings that are exclusive to the Zerg race, it can only be said that the goal is still far away. The cultivation of special individuals on the other side is still in progress. It's just that the progress is basically zero. Chen Ming has not yet thought of any means or genetically cultivated Zerg that can fight one against 10,000 like the Infernal Demon King or even one against 100. It is a bit difficult to achieve. However, the food must be eaten step by step, and the road must be walked one bite at a time. So Chen Ming's idea is to first use modern science and technology and the biological technology of the insect queen to create an individual whose combat power is at least higher than that of the same insect race, and then cultivate it step by step. But this is not a simple matter. After all, the Zerg individual is not the biological armor he wears but a real living creature. How to cultivate such a living creature is a problem that has been bothering Chen Ning for the past two days and has not yet been able to solve. And since there are special units on the ground, there can also be special units in space. But Chen Ning thought about it carefully and found that the special unit in space was the battleship. After all, special units on the ground can defeat thousands of enemies when the opponent has no special units. In that space, the only ones left in the space that can defeat 10,000 enemies with one enemy without units of equal strength are the battleships. And even the cruisers might be overturned. So Chen Ning simply gave up the idea of special individuals in space for the time being and concentrated on the research of special units on the ground. Although this one was not very dedicated. At least Chen Ming tried it. But there was no progress. And there were other things to do. And although the idea of special individuals in space has been temporarily abandoned by Chen Ming, but Chen Ning also thought of the insect queen incidentally. The mother of his current insect queen evolved from a frigate into a destroyer. Then evolving from a destroyer to a cruiser is a reasonable thing. And further up, it is not impossible to evolve from a cruiser to a battleship. So Chen Ning had plans to evolve the insect queen's current expulsion level biological spaceship into a cruise level one. It was a bit difficult to evolve directly. So Chen Ning planned to use the Zerg's own old method. It just so happens that the insect queen still has the memories left by her mother. 
So when Shenning drove the defender who stayed at the temporary stronghold to the insect queen's current location and asked him to try to replace the components of the cruiser, he found that this idea was completely feasible. It just takes time. Previously, the insect queen spent a lot of time replacing the parts of a frigate. And it also took a long time to evolve from a frigate to a destroyer. So Chinming just asked the insect queen to try it experimentally. And the actual implementation has not started yet. At least until the queen researches and understands the Zerg architecture that will allow the Zerg to continue to develop without it. Rather than just having a larvae hatching tank. Let's talk about it later. Although the progress of most of the things Chen Ming wanted to do with the insect queen was not ideal. There was still good news. Chen Ming's idea of using the Zerg hide network to advance suddenly came up without any problems at all. And there might be practical results in a few days. When the time comes, Chen Ming plans to give Lao Wu and the factory director a surprise. Of course, it may also be a shock. But this is not important. What is important is that this technology can bring many benefits to Chen Ming. Chen Ming suddenly shook his hand. Finish recording the important events of the week and prepare to rest as usual. But at this time, Chen Ming suddenly received a message from his boss. It's a string of communication codes and a sentence. This is Xiao Yang's contact information. Just when Chen Ming was filled with questions, a call came over from Chen Ming's terminal. And what was displayed on it was Xiao Yang's communication code. Chen Ming answered the phone. And a bookish young man's voice came from the other end of the phone. Chen Ming? It's me. Well, I'm Xiao Yang. Mr. Wu and told you about me. Right. Xiao Yang said this so directly that Chen Ming was stunned for a moment before he responded. Yes. I know you. Okay. Let me tell you about the batch of research equipment you need. Now Chen Ming knew the situation. The boss directly handed over what Chen Ming wanted to Xiao Yang for processing. No wonder he sent the communication code. Before Chen Ming could say anything, Xiao Yang said, Many of the things you want are currently out of stock. If you follow the recent news, you should know that equipment related to antimatter technology is in hot demand right now. But I have found a way to basically help you get it. Only one antimatter particle capture device is really out of stock. It is not available yet. You have to wait for a while. It was an unexpected surprise for Chen Ming to basically find the equipment so quickly. So he immediately thanked him and said, It doesn't matter. I can wait. Please excuse me. Um. Xiao Yang accepted Chen Ming's thanks calmly. And then said, in addition to telling you about the equipment, I have another thing I want to talk to you about this time. What's the matter? Tell me. There is a slight problem with the data I received from your highest point. Just last week, Chin Ming's expression changed slightly. And he suddenly realized a problem. He had obviously undergone extensive repairs on the ship at the Supreme Point. And the ship itself was obviously different from before. So as a designer who completed the Supreme Point design alone, can he discover some changes on the spacecraft through changes in the data transmitted back? Chin Ming felt that the answer shouldn't require much thought. So, Xiao Yang said simply, So I want to cooperate with you. Your psychic power should not only control the spacecraft and things related to the spacecraft, but also have the ability to optimize the design of the spacecraft. And it is an optimization without any restrictions. I know you. Your knowledge level is definitely not enough to optimize the Supreme Point. It has only been three months since the Supreme Point was developed. No one can optimize it. Xiao Yang's tone was very confident and full of arrogance. So when I got the data you returned, I thought about it and finally determined that the reason for the data change was you. Am I right? Xin Ming asked back. Then have you ever thought that I might have made up false data to deceive you? People that Mr. Wu and likes will not do this. Well, it seems that there is no point in talking nonsense. So Xin Ming asked. How do you want to cooperate? I hope you can send the Supreme Point to me so that I can study its structure and draw a new blueprint. Upon hearing this request, Chen Ming immediately declined. You know what I am doing now. Right. The highest point is still very important to me. At this time, Xiao Yang, who was in a research institute at the headquarters of the 14th Army, glanced at the various data on the improved highest point that he had estimated displayed on the computer next to him and a flash of determination flashed in his eyes. Light. He must understand how Chen Ming's psychic power has re-optimized the highest point that he has optimized after several years of hard work in tachyon technology and his psychic awakening. Just recently, Chen Ming's supreme point brought back a large amount of actual usage data. The various test results of the institute also show that the supreme point class exploration cruiser does have its value as a new type of exploration ship. It has also been put up for sale with the joint support of the Psionics Guild 
and the 14 Legion. He also made a fortune during this period. So Xiao Yang said to Chen Ming, I can give you another Supreme Point. And after I complete the test of your Supreme Point here, your improved Supreme Point will also be returned to you. Such conditions had to make Chen Ming excited. But there was a question that Chen Ming had to confirm. How long will it take? About a month. It is equivalent to Chen Ming renting out the Supreme Point for a month. And then, the rent is a new Supreme Point. I have a question. As soon as Chen Ming spoke, Xiao Yang said directly, The Supreme Point I gave you before was a prototype, which is different from the Supreme Point produced now. So it won't work for me to drive the Supreme Point here and go through your optimization before driving it back. Of. Okay. Then I can do it. But I have to wait until the highest point on your side reaches my ship before I can go to your side. As long as your ship arrives on time. I'll have no problem. Okay. Anyway. Chen Ming's ship can continuously jump. When Xiao Yang's cruiser arrives. It will only take a few dozen minutes to fly back from outside the empire. It is impossible to be late. After talking about this matter. Xiao Yang continued. Actually. I have another idea for cooperation. You say. It's very simple. I will study the results. You will optimize the results. And then we will publish them together. And all profits will be split 50 to 50. Or another way. I provide you with technology. You are responsible for optimization. And I pay you directly based on the results of your optimization. Chen Ming ignored Xiao Yang's first suggestion. He has his own pursuits and will not cooperate with others in this way. But the second thought is a little more telling. Chen Ming asked. Let me ask you a question. Is the technology you provide your own? Of course not. Xiao Yang said matter-of-factly. I just want to see what kind of changes will happen to a technology optimized by your psychic energy. Especially if you start to acquire equipment for researching antimatter technology. This means that you have already used your psychic powers on antimatter technology. If even antimatter technology can be optimized. It means that other technologies are definitely not a problem for you. I want to understand your ideas for psionic optimization and try to learn the logic. Is there such a thing? Chen Ming was a little surprised by Xiao Yang's idea. But when I think about it carefully, it seems that there is really no problem. It is better to teach people to fish than to teach them to fish. Mastering the ideas of optimization may indeed be of great help to your own research. As the owner of psychic powers, Chen Ming himself ignored this point, which was a bit inappropriate. But it's not too late now. And Chen Ming also has more opportunities than anyone else. Xiao Yang saw that Chen Ming didn't reply for a while. So he added, You are not a researcher. So you may not feel it. But you must know that your psychic powers have advanced to a level that is coveted by all researchers throughout the empire. And so have the products of your psychic powers. I'm not an exception as a researcher. Chen Ming thought for a while and corrected. In fact, it is not for the researchers of the empire. But for everyone in the empire who thinks about the development of the empire's technology, including various officials. He actually knew what Xiao Yang said. So he didn't release the improved antimatter engine technology directly, because this would probably mean that he would never be able to leave the empire again. This time, Xiao Yang didn't seem to have thought of this. After a while, he reacted and said, Indeed, it would not be a good thing for you if your psychic ability is exposed. But we are all members of the Psychic Association, and have a good relationship with Mr. Wuin. I will not reveal your psionic power. But I still hope you can think about it, and contact me if you have any ideas. Xiao Yang didn't say much, and hung up the phone before Chen Ming explained that he hadn't joined the Psychic Association yet. It's very simple. It's this straightforward character. No wonder his previous boss said he was squeezed out of Tachyon technology. In the past, Xiao Yang could only continue to be squeezed out. But as a psychic, he has the capital to continue to maintain such a character. Chen Ming didn't care anyway. And Xiao Yang didn't have a bad attitude towards him. He just had a straighter temper and spoke more straightly. But it wasn't like he couldn't communicate normally. And if you think carefully about what Xiao Yang did just now, there is nothing wrong with it. First of all, he explained that he was helping him collect research equipment. And then based on this help, he made a request for cooperation. Which was absolutely fine. The only thing you need to do is speak in a straightforward manner. You may run into a wall when meeting someone with a bad personality or a bad temper. But you will definitely have no problem meeting someone with a good temper. It was the idea of cooperation that Xiao Yang said that made Chen Ming consider whether to give it a try. After all, Xiao Yang is considered developed now. And he probably won't need to spend a lot of money on development like he does. It's always good to pick something out of him. 
Chin Ning felt that he could wait until he was almost done with the things that he urgently needed to use deep repair psychic powers, and then contact Xiao Yang to cooperate on some deep repairs on a regular basis. It can be considered as making some extra money. Just when Chin Ming made his decision, Chao Fan suddenly sent a message from the Stardust class parked next door. Actually, I've always been curious about how your psychic power can be optimized for our afterglow. Forehead. Although Chao Fan is currently researching an optimized antimatter engine on Stardust, he still needs the assistance of some research equipment at the highest point. Chin Ming incidentally gave Chao Fan the control authority over the highest point. So Chao Fan heard the conversation between him and Xiao Yang just now. And the curiosity in his heart was naturally amplified. To be honest, Chin Ming was also very curious. Just because he had been optimizing technology and helping the insect queen optimize the things it created in the past few days. If the Zerg is optimized, it can directly provide Chin Ming with substantial and tangible benefits. That's why Chin Ming Kai has not optimized Yu Wei for the time being. However, even if extraordinary is not mentioned, it is almost time for Chin Ming to optimize Yu Wei. Although I am not sure about the effect of optimization, it is not necessarily negative. The afterglow over the temporary stronghold must be stronger. So Chen Ming said, There will be a chance. Let me try it on other afterglow individuals first. After the test is completed and safety is guaranteed, I will use this psychic power on you alpha level afterglows. Chapter 198 Intention to Cooperate Early the next morning. New week begins. As usual, Chen Ming read the status of Yu Wei's individual investigation that Hui Wang was still arranging during last night's break. Although his main focus in the first two weeks was on the mechanical tribe discovered during the exploration and subsequent research on the mechanical tribe and Zerg as well as the improvement of technology. But the matter of developing the star systems around the temporary base has never been abandoned. After all, this has been Chen Ming's goal all along. Everything else he does midway through is building up to that goal. The daily report sent by Hui Wang showed that last night was calm and nothing happened. It's a pity that the Afterglow team's investigation of the galaxy near the previously discovered Kung Yu bones yielded little results. And they still found no trace of the Kung Yu school. The corpse has been bombarded by a large amount of space radiation and various particles. And has lost its original properties. Apart from the skeleton, it can be seen that it is an empty fish. And has no value for feeding the insect queen. However, the Yue individuals who were still out investigating last night have basically returned safely. And few of them were damaged let alone those who were lost. So it doesn't matter if you can't find the empty fish. There will be opportunities to find it later. And this morning, the material consumption list for the previous week as of last night was also listed brilliantly. It can only be said that the amount of material consumption is still as shocking as last week. Or even much more than last week. There are currently more than 50,000 afterglow individuals in the temporary base. There are actually about 20,000 people active outside and there are still more than 2,000 individuals doing logistics work in temporary bases. All the rest are dormant, as a backup when necessary. And, when making the second jump, the main force to develop a second temporary stronghold. Therefore, when the star port of the temporary base was built, it was not based on the goal of carrying all 50,000 extra lights. Then this star port cannot be built in a few weeks. But even so, the amount of fuel consumed by the more than 20,000 Yue individuals who drove out in no more than a destroyer was not a small number. If the quantity of materials is converted into money according to the market price, it will be even more huge. In addition, Chin Ming's fight with the mechanical tribe was also taken into account. It really made Chin Ming feel heartbroken once he saw it. Fortunately, Chin Ming still has the support of his boss. So he can purchase large quantities of supplies in batches at very low prices. Otherwise, he would have already started reducing the number of afterglow individuals operating outside. The rhetoric before leaving the empire had to bow in the face of the actual consumption of money and materials. But it is definitely not an option to continue like this for a long time. Chin Ming, a colony that only sees investment but no output, looks a bit uncomfortable. Although the boss didn't seem to have any objections, he had been silently preparing new supplies for Chin Ming based on the supply consumption list sent back by Chin Ming every week but Chen Ning couldn't accept it for granted. Therefore, he would improve the promising technology he had previously studied and publish it to make money. Only then will he try to improve antimatter technology and let Chao Fan study antimatter engines. Although this investment is also huge, in a short period of time it is greater than the material consumption of 20,000 yuan more than Hui per week. But Chen Ning believes that his current investment will definitely be earned back in the end. And even more. 
After all, this is an antimatter engine with specially matched antimatter fuel. In the same trip, the output power is higher, the speed is faster, and the fuel mass consumption is less. The improved antimatter engine will only be more cost effective. And the antimatter engine itself can also use ordinary fuel. But the conversion efficiency of ordinary fuel is lower. But even if it is low, it is not much lower. At least it is more efficient than ordinary engines in converting ordinary fuel. While studying the antimatter engine, Chen Ming's plan to expand the Zerg hive and the mechanical city was also a decision made to increase his own mental power and thinking speed. After all, the core of the entire afterglow, the entire mechanical race, the entire Zerg race, and the entire development process is himself. And he himself can rely on other methods besides exercise to receive feedback from the hive network of the mechanical race and the Zerg race and become stronger. Therefore, in the process of development, it is a normal choice to develop the Zerg and machine races in order to develop itself. And developing Zerg has another benefit. That is, after swallowing the energy crystal crab, the Zerg can produce Zerg energy crystals, a product with better yield, output stability, and ease of output than crystal crabs. Moreover, energy crystals are basically pure energy aggregates, but the parts condensed into crystals may be mixed with some substances that express the producer species. But as long as Chen Ming asks the insect queen to make some simple modifications to the insects that specialize in producing Zerg energy crystals, the traces of the Zerg can be erased from the energy crystals produced. Forging Zerg energy crystals is the result of the production of energy crystal crabs. As long as the existence of Zerg energy crystals normally produced by these energy crystal crabs, which have been crushed in all aspects of output, is known, they can cooperate with the antimatter engine that can greatly improve the performance of the spacecraft. It will definitely be welcomed by the Empire and be widely disseminated. Soon, Chen Ning will have a new amount of funds on hand. And as long as the output of energy crystals is still controlled by Chen Ming, the funds imported to him will definitely continue for a long time. Even if the empire has crystal crab samples, it will take at least several years to start mass cultivation of crystal crabs. But by then, regardless of the issue of production, Chen Ming's energy crystal producing bugs may have been replaced for several generations. It would be impossible to keep up with his progress if we slowly started developing the crystal crab. Chen Ming sorted out his current thoughts a little. And after confirming that there were no mistakes or omissions, he put down the daily report sent by Hui Wang. Then he continued to confirm other situations last night. Before Chen Ming took a break yesterday, he promised Chao Fan something. He had deliberately found a random gamma afterglow for a test. Although Chen Ming passed out midway, the in-death repairs did not stop. And when Chen Ming looked at it now, the changes that had taken place in that gamma afterglow were indeed very gratifying. According to Chen Ming's observation and comparison, the structure of this optimized gamma afterglow core has basically been optimized. The running logic circuit is obviously much simpler. And its running speed has also been greatly improved. By about 50%. And the changes in the entire core did not have any impact on the afterglow individuals inside the core. And even caused this gamma core to produce an emotion called comfort. I can only say that the effect is very good. Although Chen Ming is not sure whether the alpha level afterglow core will have such an excellent optimization effect during in-death maintenance. It is unclear whether there will be new changes. But even if it is only 1% optimized, Chen Ning will definitely have to perform in-death repairs on the several alpha level afterglows he has on hand one by one to further improve their capabilities. Chen Mingka has not forgotten that he has not chosen appropriate alpha level core bonuses for the several alpha level afterglows he has except HR. If Chen Ning's optimization allows the enhancement of alpha level afterglows capabilities to be superimposed with the enhancement of core bonuses, even if they are not multiplied. The overall improvement for each afterglow core will be extremely obvious. Chen Ming is the core of the entire development plan. The few alpha afterglows in his hand are the trump cards in the core's hand. It is always okay to strengthen them if there is an opportunity to strengthen them. What's more, this only consumes the remaining mental energy before taking a break every day. And with Chen Ming's success in strengthening the afterglow core last night, another thing happened smoothly. It's just a little different from the smooth way Chen Ming imagined. Because to this day, he still hasn't waited for his paper to be published in that journal. Or for a reply from the reviewer. Instead, I waited for Bai Quan to contact me. Before the daily command and teaching time began, Bai Quan took the initiative to make a phone call. Chen Ming answered the phone immediately and said, Bai Quan! The voice on Bai Quan's side seemed a little noisy. But it soon became quiet. Bai Quan could only be heard saying, Chen Ming! 
Let me discuss with you about the technology you have been researching that you told me before. Chen Ming immediately became energetic and asked, What's wrong? Our 14th Legion is very interested in that technology. Chen Ming showed a slight smile on his face and said jokingly, That's not what you said two days ago. Bai Quan said without blushing at this time, The situation will always change with time. To be honest, when Chen Ning said before that he had a technology he was researching that he thought had potential, Bai Quan didn't think much about it at first. After all, Chen Ming's technology was just like that. He just thought it was Chen Ming's strange invention. A few days later, Chen Ming confidently mentioned in class that he had completed his research and wanted to publish it. He also mentioned that someone he knew could help speed up the review, who happened to let him know that one of the reviewers of the journal that Chen Ming was going to publish was a person from their 14th Army Corps. Then Bai Quan basically forgot about it after explaining it to others. But something unexpected happened later. It was the reviewer Bai Quan found. He was not always at work. His job was still the director of the research institute affiliated to the 14th Army Corps. He only had his name on that journal and occasionally reviewed two articles. At the same time, he does have some power to push some papers sent to journals for review to those who are actually reviewing them in advance so that they can review them early. When Bai Quan came over and mentioned Chen Ming's thesis to him, he remembered it, but did not help immediately. After all, someone wanted to publish a paper in that top scientific research journal through Bai Chuan's connections. If the content was rubbish, not only would it fail, but it might also affect Bai Chuan's reputation. Although he is not responsible for the review of Chen Ming's paper, it is better for insiders to check it in advance than to let it out and lose face. Originally, he was just taking a look, but after actually seeing the content of the paper, he found that the situation was different from what he thought. This paper is not a paper that relies on journals for gold plating. The technology in this paper is a paper that has been actually tested and has a considerable degree of value. The purpose of asking Bai Quan for help is to speed up the review. Nothing more. So the researchers from the 14th Legion went directly to Bai Quan and explained the situation. Then Bai Quan discovered that he had been paying more attention to Chen Ming raising the upper limit of Chen Ming's psychic abilities in his perception, and incidentally raising his understanding of Chen Ming's own abilities. But his understanding of Chen Ming is still not perfect, even a little low. Bai Quan's understanding of Chen Ming is mainly about psychic abilities, not Chen Ming's own abilities. Of course, I am not looking down on Chen Ming. After all, the psychic powers of psychers are of course the abilities of psychers, and Chen Ming is very good. Moreover, the terrifying learning ability that Chen Ming has shown recently is indeed exaggerated. But Chen Ming's learning ability is more in the learning of command techniques and other aspects of learning. Although Bai Quan also knew that Chen Ming was really good at learning. No matter what. Before he became a psyker, Chen Ming was only the leader of the logistics maintenance team within a space station in the edge star field of a branch of Sinar Company. The technical ability is pretty good. But when you zoom in, it's just like that. Chen Ming has never shown any research ability before and he only improved it later. To be honest, it is really difficult to convince people. But now, the director of the research institute directly under the 14th Army Corps came to personally come to Chen Ming for his thesis. So Bai Quan's evaluation of Chen Ming had to be raised again, not only in terms of psychic abilities, but also in other abilities as an ordinary person. At that time, Bai Quan made plans to talk to Chen Ming about this matter again. So when faced with Chen Ming's seemingly teasing words, Bai Quan could only shamelessly pretend that nothing happened. After all, since Chen Ming took the initiative to mention this matter to him before the paper was completed, he had the idea of trading with the 14th Army. As for this paper and the technology contained in it, which the director of the research institute could find personally, he would not be able to push it away on his own initiative no matter what. Just as Bai Quan thought, Chen Ming didn't talk nonsense here. After adjusting his mentality a little, he formally said to Bai Quan, so what do you think? Bai Quan cleared his throat again and said, First of all, make sure one thing is true. Did you develop this technology yourself? Of course that's for sure. And you should have checked it out. Right. Indeed. We couldn't find any similar studies. This is nonsense. Chin Ming checked this technology before deeply repairing it and conducting research. No one in the empire had ever conducted similar research. What's more? This entire technology research plan was inspired by the samples of Yu Hui's abandoned research projects when Chen Ming was still there. Afterglow if these abandoned plans were grasped by humans. The afterglow of this star field would have died long ago. Which round should be studied by Chen Ming? However, although it was a plan abandoned by Yu Hui, 
after Qin Ming's development and in-depth maintenance. The effect was amazing. The product of Qin Ming's technology called the Stable Hyperspace Channel Jump Engine is actually an engine. Rather, it is an additional device mounted on the engine similar to the hyperspace channel system. The effect after stabilization is also very simple and crude, with only one coordinate and much higher fuel consumption than normal space navigation. A spacecraft equipped with this device can jump in hyperspace. There is nothing to say about the effect of the jump. It is a cruiser equipped with a jump engine. What's truly unique and powerful about this hyperlane jump drive is that it can be mounted on a frigate. Allow frigates to jump as well. It can only be said that Qin Ming has found a lot of relevant information. I found that many people have tried to research the lightweight and miniaturization of the jump engine. But so far, no one has done it. No one has successfully researched it. And no one has thought of using hyperspace to achieve an effect similar to a jump. Yu Wei thought of a similar method. But Yu Hui's research also failed. And perhaps due to problems with their thinking, they did not continue. Leaving the inspiration and failure process of the research to Qin Ming. Chen Ming actually didn't succeed at first. Using the unstable hyperspace jump engine blindly would be almost suicide. It wasn't until this technology was deeply optimized for psychic energy that he could accomplish this goal that no one has been able to accomplish so far. Although Chen Ming's technology is suitable for any frigate that is not equipped with an antimatter engine, the fuel will be basically empty as long as it makes a hyperspace jump. But that's the limit of the rules of physics. Furthermore, the hyperspace channel jump engine does not directly use the jump engine that can be used in the normal universe, but uses the gravity well of hyperspace to achieve a pseudo jump. It is normal that the energy consumed is larger, but whether there is any remaining fuel after using up the jump is one thing, and whether it can jump is another matter. A jump means an opportunity, maybe a chance to escape, maybe a chance to win. So this cause also has its value for the frigate. Needless to say, there is no need to mention the destroyers further up. Its power is enough to support the consumption of the hyperspace channel jump engine technology. Unlike the frigate, which still needs to be considered, and higher-end ships are more casual, because the technology of the hyperspace lane jump engine is not the same system as the jump engine used by normal cruisers. There is no conflict between them. This means that any ship from cruiser and above can choose to install two systems. Prioritize using the hyperspace jump engine. Then use the normal jump engine. This is the value of Chen Ming's research. Of course, this thing also has shortcomings. For example, it needs time to cool down just like a normal jump engine. At the same time, because Qin Ning is a device designed based on the gravity well of hyperspace, it is subject to system design restrictions. Therefore, even if the jump is made in a hyperspace that is smaller than the normal cosmic environment, the actual jump efficiency cannot be compared to the genuine jump engine. The limit of a hyperspace jump is about half of the limit jump distance in a normal cosmic environment. In addition, the coordinates of the hyperspace jump engine are also limited. Although hyperspace is similar to the normal cosmic environment, it is basically a proportional expansion and contraction relationship. However, due to various strange curvatures caused by the gravity of various planets and other cosmic environmental influences, the actual coordinates in hyperspace and the coordinates of the normal universe do not completely fit. Instead, it can be said that there must be a deviation. This means that the hyperspace channel jump engine must have very precise coordinates to make the jump. Otherwise, once there is a deviation, the end point of the jump may appear in a certain high-density hyperspace channel cloud and be struck half to death by hyperspace lightning. It was even directly sucked into the gravity well of a star in a certain galaxy and torn into pieces. But in general, as long as you have accurate coordinates, there is no problem. Therefore, this system can be used in any galaxy where humans have set foot and recorded hyperspace information. And there is no possibility of problems. And there is another drawback to this system. That is, it is mounted on the hyperspace channel system. Like the hyperspace channel system, it is easy to receive interference. Any blocking device of the hyperspace channel system can directly stop its transition process. It is extremely fragile compared to the jump trigger that requires a blockade of the entire galaxy to make it unusable. However, even if this system has various shortcomings, they cannot cover up its advantages. The coordinates of hyperspace can be obtained. Fuel can be solved through logistics. And the military definitely has a way to deal with interference problems. As for the problem of only being able to make one jump, that's not a problem at all. Because so far, almost all spacecraft can only make one jump under normal circumstances. How could this extra time be considered a shortcoming? On the contrary, 
It has obvious strategic significance for military operations at any time. In the case where not everyone can use the jump device almost unlimitedly like Chen Ning, the opportunity to jump multiple times is definitely very important. So now it is reasonable for Bai Quan to come and handle it personally. After confirming with Chen Ming, Bai Quan also talked about his thoughts. Or the thoughts of the 14th Legion. Our current decision regarding your technology is that we must cooperate with you to develop this technology and subsequently block this technology from the outside world and only use it within our military. Just as Chen Ming opened his mouth to speak, Bai Quan said first, We can see that the potential of your technology is definitely not limited to military use. It's a cutting-edge technology that is enough to enable the entire empire's low-level spaceships to leapfrog a big step in mobility. But because of that, we have to limit it. You may not understand it, but the Empire has always intentionally restricted the development of civilian hyperspace channel technology. Before Chen Ming could ask the question, Bai Quan explained on his own. Because now the Empire's civilian hyperspace channel technology has developed to a sufficient level, Chen Ming intervened this time and asked, Enough? That's right. Military spacecraft can use jump engines and stargates to move far beyond hyperspace speeds, while civilian ships can often only move after a long process of approval or by slowly sailing in hyperspace. This is enough. As for why, what's the reason behind this? I think you should understand. Chapter 199 Contract Test By Quan's words made Chen Ming think about the current situation of the Empire for a moment. And then he suddenly understood and asked, Maintain stability? That's right. Bai Quan said without denying. It seems that you have also thought about the consequences if your technology is obtained by some people. Yeah. I've already thought of Zhu Jing using my technology to fly around in a small self-destructing plane and blowing things up. Bai Quan was silent for a second because of Chen Ming's wonderful description. And continued. There is no problem in continuing to research hyperspace technology in the military field. But if you want to transfer military technology to civilian use, you must face this negative effect which will not be beneficial to the stability of the empire at all. Chen Ming commented on this. I feel a bit complacent. So I just said that the current level of hyperspace technology in the empire is sufficient. And the empire has only imposed restrictions on civilian hyperspace technology. Not a complete blockade. And military affairs are business as usual. Let me give you an example. Suppose you go to work only two kilometers away from your usual resting place. And then the empire imposes restrictions on your means of transportation so that you can only use bicycles or some ordinary vehicles. Then, they then restricted the development and use of rail trains and aerospace vehicles in the civilian field, preventing you from taking these two means of transportation when you go to work. Will this affect you? The answer to this question is obvious. Chen Ming answered decisively. No. That's what I mean by enough dot. Judging from the scale of the empire, the current level of civilian hyperspace technology is sufficient. Bai Quan suddenly said with some emotion. If it were the pioneering era, your technology empire would definitely use all means to spread to every galaxy, every place with relevant technology manufacturing capabilities, and every spacecraft that can install this technology, go up and make the empire's territory even larger. But now, the pioneering era has ended, and with the occurrence of various events in recent times, conflicts within the empire are gradually increasing. If civilian low-level ships have more hyperspace technology, the benefits to the entire environment will be far less than the difficulties in solving the problem. Shen Ming interrupted at this time and said, That's true. Because when he returned to the space station this time, he had already felt the changes in the border star field from many places. And he had personally experienced some changes in the empire. The same technology is always multifaceted. When the negative effects cannot be effectively controlled, we would rather not release it and only use it within the military but we can only guarantee that this technology will not be leaked within five years of full deployment. Wait a moment. Chen Ming suddenly interrupted Bai Quan and said, The technology within your army can only be kept for five years? Bai Quan said in a helpless tone, There is nothing we can do about it. There are so many legions in the empire, so many star field theaters and subordinate departments. Together, we can guarantee that there will be no leaks for five years. It is already very good. But thinking about it on the other hand, the pressure to leak technology within five years has indeed promoted the efficiency of our military technological innovation. Chen Ming couldn't help complaining. This promotion method is a bit outrageous. It's outrageous. So we must make countermeasures for this technology within five years. We cannot allow this technology to be used without restrictions. At the same time, we must develop a new generation of technology. 
otherwise it will really kill you. In short, according to the researchers here, let's not talk about the new generation of technology for the time being. As for countermeasures, they plan to place a large blocker in every galaxy. Similar to the device I sold you before to block jump signals. Then every spacecraft that uses hyperspace jump must first use super light communication to notify the target galaxy in advance and open permissions. Otherwise it will not be allowed to pass. That should solve most of the problems. It just takes time. To be honest, your technology can also promote the development of a bunch of other technologies in disguise. Counting its own effects. It really has great prospects for continued development. But we really can't make this technology public at the moment. And we do have to come up with countermeasures. After listening to Bai Quan's story, Chen Ming frowned and thought for a while, and finally asked with some confusion, To why are you telling me this? Forehead. Bai Quan did not expect Chen Ming to react like this, and explain, Are we afraid that you will feel wrong? Let me explain to you in detail why we want to cooperate with you. But we must impose restrictions and counterattacks. Of course, this matter is not so absolute. There may be some relaxation in these aspects in recent years, but I've only heard about this news so I can't guarantee it. So I'll act according to strict rules first. Seeing by Quan's appearance, Chen Ming also explained, I actually don't care. He is not studying this to benefit the people of the empire, nor is he doing it for fame. He was out for self-gratification and pure profit. Nothing more. Anyway, it was purchased by the 14th Legion and then used at the level of the entire Imperial Army. It does not mean that no money will be given. If the money is given, what does it have to do with what others use the technology for? What does it have to do with him whether it is restricted or not? If one day the Empire starts the pioneering era again and really needs this technology, the Empire will definitely be more eager to release it than he is. As for counterattack, he knew his technique very well. He could just grab a blocking pulse generator and counterattack without having to bother to study it at all. It's just that the galaxy where the hyperspace jump lands has no way to detect the fluctuations of the jump as early as the jump engine. It really needs to have early warning means or something. But this is all normal. Even if the military doesn't do it, Chen Ming might have to find a way to get one in the future. Otherwise, is what Jing really gets hold of this technology and uses hyperspace jump to send self-destructing small planes everywhere. He might one day get sick of himself. So it doesn't matter at all about the counter technique statement. Got a reply from Chen Ming. Bai Quan understood Chen Ming's attitude. So he stopped talking and brought the topic back to business and said, then let's talk about the details. There are several plans here, including profit sharing and buyout. Chin Ming interrupted directly. Buyout is not possible. This is such a loss for him. Chin Ming's idea is actually very simple. He is to use his spiritual power to obtain more research technology patents and then use them to cooperate with others to share and make money. Making a steady stream of money. A one-time buyout may seem like a lot, but his development is not a one-time thing. Only long-term benefits will be more stable unless he is really in a situation where he is about to run out of funds if he cannot reveal the blame. A buyout is absolutely unacceptable to him. Okay. Bai Quan must have followed Chen Ming's request. But he also asked tentatively, What about a friendly price for the share? Let me think. Chen Ming made a simple calculation based on his share of patents in antimatter technology and the share of antimatter patents held by others. Send a company and some sponsors. We calculated the effort and money earned by the companies that help promote and manufacture antimatter-related technical equipment. Then he came up with a ratio that was completely acceptable to him, and finally gave it to Bai Quan at a 92% discount. After all, it is a big long-term business. If the discount is slightly higher, Chin Ming's losses will still be relatively large. What's more, Chin Ming has another project that he wants to cooperate with Bai Quan in the future. Chin Ming's concessions don't seem to be much now, but Bai Quan will definitely get enough benefits later. Bai Quan thought about it and agreed. Then we will sign the contract directly. You have basically written down the complete technology in the paper. And we will just follow it. However, the actual start of mass production and large-scale testing may be slower. After all, the Empire is still pushing antimatter technology. Chin Ming had nothing to say about this and responded casually. I understand. He knew that antimatter technology and his own technology were not at the same level at all. And he knew the gap between them so he didn't have any objections. Anyway, as long as he can get the money in the end, he doesn't care about other things. Bai Quan quickly drew up several contracts and sent them to Chen Ming. They had obviously already prepared them and only needed to change a few numbers to use them. 
and we plan to give you a name in the Empire's government agencies. Namo? If you want to put your name on it, you have to find a place to hang it. And the name by Quan mentioned must only be under the name of the 14th Legion. It seems that Bai Quan found the direct invitation to join some time ago was not successful. So he used another indirect method to slowly try. But in fact, from an outside perspective, Qin Ming's current identity has been determined. The Psionic Association does not restrict its internal members from joining other forces. And most other forces do not mind if their subordinate psychers are members of the Psionic Association. In the eyes of the outside world, Qin Ming is a member of the Psychic Association and has also joined the 14th Legion. Only the 14th Army Corps itself knew that Qin Ming was just close to the 14th Army Corps and had some cooperation. That's why Bai Quan keeps trying to invite Qin Ming to officially join. But Qin Ming never made such a decision that might limit himself. When Bai Quan heard Qin Ming's rhetorical question, he quickly explained, Because some accounts need to be disclosed, but some things cannot be revealed. So it is best to give you a job so that we can send you money and other things later. What are the benefits? Qin Ming asked. Just a name. Only a name. Without any obligations. It's just a civilian job at a research institute affiliated to our 14th Legion. The research institute doesn't even have a physical place. Let alone obligations. Qin Ming asked again. Whether it is in name or not. Will it affect my cooperation with you? Bai Quan replied decisively. There is no impact. There will be other solutions to the lack of money in the accounts. But it will be more troublesome. That's it. Then forget it. Rather than restricting himself, Qin Ming thought it would be better to trouble Bai Quan. Bai Quan received Qin Ming's answer and did not continue to mention the matter. Anyway, he was rejected not once or twice. He now has a very thorough understanding of Qin Ming and knows what level of invitation will not arouse Qin Ming's disgust. As long as they continue to cooperate in the future, there will always be opportunities for invitations. There have been so many times. Maybe one time Qin Ming agreed? Bai Quan quickly put the small defeat behind him and prepared several contract documents that could not be prepared in advance, ready to be given to Qin Ming to sign. While waiting, Qin Ming could still hear the sound of Bai Quan's fingers tapping on the computer keyboard and terminal. Somewhat bored, Qin Ming asked Bai Quan casually, By the way, you are at the headquarters of the 14th Army now. Right. Right. Isn't it troublesome for you to manage it in the Gallo Star territory? That's not the case. I have trustworthy deputies staying in the stronghold over there. Moreover, after experiencing the previous battle on Yue's side and the collapse of several people who caused trouble in the war zone, internal problems are no longer a problem. It won't have any impact if I leave for a while. And the headquarters also supports me. I will go back as soon as the ceremony is completed. I also need to expand the influence of our 14th army in the Gallo Star territory. Qin Ming suddenly recalled and asked, have I heard you say before that your 14th Legion went to the Gallo Star territory because the progress on the frontal battlefield was not ideal and you wanted to increase investment in other aspects and create results? Bai Quan paused while sorting out the contract, thought for a moment, and said to Qin Ming, It wasn't at first. At first, it was purely because that bastard Chung Xingha was causing trouble outside, and I had to go and get him back. But after passing through, a casual investigation revealed that the local army in this Edge Star region has poor military discipline and is extremely corrupt. But it's strange that they managed to hold the border even when there was a Star Territory of the Afterglow Branch and a Star Territory of the Mechanical Tribe outside. I put some pressure on the local military and took some time to investigate. It turns out that not everyone is getting bad. There are still soldiers from a few units who are not collaborating. They are the main force on the front line against the Machine Clan and Yue. Then there happened to be a clearly written list of smuggled materials and personnel provided by Shinda Company. With this thing and an urgent appointment document from the rear, we occupied this place. They should be sent to a military court if they should be sent to a military court. And those who should be collected should be collected. In short, our 14th Legion fully took over the military management of this star field. And then we came up with the idea of opening a gap in this direction. It's mainly because of the recent changes in the Empire's policies. Listening to Bai Quan's words, Chen Ning suddenly remembered something that had happened before. And he immediately said, Wait a minute. What's wrong? Amid Bai Quan's confusion, Chen Ming opened the panel of the Mule Class Logistics cargo ship that was being driven around the Galastar territory by Gamma B, then opened the panel's warehouse to confirm. Later, Chen Ming said to Bai Quan, I have something in my hand. Chen Ming activated psychic energy on the Mule Class 
and sent something from the mule class cargo hold to Baekwon. What is this? Dog cough. Military status card? Right. The military status card that Shin Ming just sent to him was from when he and Gamma A drove the refraction and followed Yuhui's fleet to raid the Gallo 2 sector military outpost near Ruemu on a captured military spacecraft. It was found on the body of a soldier who was stuck in the escape hatch of the spacecraft. What was found along with this military registration plate was the evidence of military smuggling and corruption in the Gallo 2 sector that Bai Quan had just mentioned and was discovered by Chen Ming and handed over to Shina Company, which in turn handed it over. Although he had deliberately packed the things in the warehouse onto the mule before, he didn't expect that they were actually preserved until now. Chen Ming explained to Bai Quan the process of obtaining his military status card. Anyway, now that his psychic powers have been announced, there is no need to hide the past. At the end of the explanation, Chen Ming added, I don't know how your side dealt with this soldier in the end, but I still hope that he will be treated fairly in the end. Bai Quan also temporarily put down the terminal, lowered his head, and looked at the military registration card in his hand, rubbed the name on it and said, Don't worry. The 14th Army has a complete protection system for all fallen soldiers, and it will not let anyone feel cold. I will arrange a special investigation, and the results of the investigation will be announced at that time. Just wait and see the news. Bai Quan put away his military status card and said to Chen Ming, Speaking of which, I remember you told me before that I will soon know why you, a spaceship student, suddenly want to learn those biological technologies. Right. Chen Ming nodded and responded. It's almost time. It should be during your promotion ceremony. It seems like this matter will have something to do with me. Yes, it has a lot to do with you. Good thing or bad thing? How could something bad happen on your big day? That's good. Ah, by the way, since you have mentioned the following ceremony, there is something I need to tell you. I probably won't be able to spare any time from now on. I may have to stop teaching you for a few days. Chin Ming can understand Bai Quan's busyness. Moreover, Bai Quan had been able to take time to teach every day for more than a month. So he already valued him enough. Therefore, it is not surprising that Bai Quan now wants to suspend teaching for a few days. Nor is it unacceptable. It just so happens that I can digest what I learned during this period, Bai Quan said with a smile. I don't think you need to digest it at all. With your study efficiency, you can digest everything in one go, especially in the past few days. Chen Ming did feel that his learning efficiency in the past two days was indeed exaggerated, because he had figured out one thing after writing the paper earlier. Anyway, he has destroyed a colony of the mechanical tribe, and it is certain that the mechanical tribe will come to hunt him down. The scale of the pursuit will definitely be upwards of 40 cruisers. Since it made no difference to Chin Ming whether it was a cruiser or a battleship, it didn't matter to him as long as the temporary stronghold was not discovered. What's more, is there anything in the universe that can outrun him? Chin Ming is not afraid of the multiple jump abilities brought by psychic energy. What's more, since the mechanical race is already in his hands, if he doesn't control it and disassembles it into the most basic materials, isn't it a loss of blood? Even if Chin Ming only killed the consciousness of these mechanical tribe individuals and left behind their bodies, it would still be a complete loss. It's better to be straightforward. Therefore, with the feedback from the enhanced hive mind network of the mechanical race, the learning efficiency instantly increased a lot. It didn't take long for Bai Quan to get used to Chin Ming's learning efficiency when he was shocked again. Chin Ming did not respond to Bai Quan's statement. He just smiled and asked, I should have studied half a semester's progress in more than a month? Bai Quan thought about the part he taught Chen Ming yesterday and said, No, you are now nearing the end of the semester. I know you psychers have good brains, even if you don't specialize in brain enhancement. But I didn't expect it to be so outrageous. Maybe I have a talent? Of course there is. Before you learn command, you were already very talented when you could rely on the shabby fleets and psychic powers of the pirate space station to carry a military fleet and defeat both parties. But after learning professional knowledge, it's not certain whether you still have talent. I have seen many people who were very spiritual before they studied systematically. But they became a bit rigid after studying. I don't want you to become like this. Chin Ming Fai asked. I remember I just had a fight with the machine race. Right. Can't you see if I still have talent? Bai Quan suddenly had a troubled look on his face and said. I've seen the video you sent. To be honest, it's of no value. If you can beat it, you can just get on the drone and crush it. If you can't beat it, a ship will stay behind and the drones will cover your retreat. It's true that there's no problem with what we've done. 
But there's really not much we can say. Unless you don't take the Stardust out. You may encounter an evenly matched enemy that requires your use of psychic powers. You must have experienced such a battle. Or a pure battle with a weak opponent and a strong opponent. Then you can see whether you still have talent in command after systematic study. Chen Ming knew that there was nothing wrong with what Bai Quan said. But he had his own thoughts. I would rather not have such a day. All enemies who can be crushed will be crushed. And those who cannot be crushed will run away. There will come a day when I can't run anymore. Chen Ming knew clearly that Bai Quan was talking about a colony. Since he wanted to personally build a colony that was not within the empire, he would have to face foreign enemies in the future. This was something he would never be able to escape in the future. That's why I'm learning command skills. I just hope that under normal circumstances, I can directly rely on psychic energy to crush them. And when necessary, I have the ability to command. Bai Quan already had some understanding of Chen Ming's thoughts during this period of contact with Chen Ming. So he did not argue with Chen Ming in this regard. He just said, Then I will take the time to arrange a test for you in the next two days. Come on. Borrow our analog equipment. Is it finally done? Yes. The station in the Gala Star territory is already being installed. It will be available for use in a short time. When the time comes, don't let the equipment I have worked so hard to get go away. No. 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 Bai Qian's casual joke relaxed the somewhat stiff atmosphere of the conversation. Chen Ming asked curiously, Who are you planning to arrange for my opponent then? I'm still thinking about it. I have to find a way to find you an opponent who can be evenly matched against you with psychic powers. Oh. Chen Ming noticed the problem in Bai Quan's words and asked, Can this device also simulate psychic energy? Bai Quan said matter-of-factly, Of course not. Just set up another simulation environment for debugging which is enough to achieve some effects similar to your psychic abilities. We will officially start after I return from headquarters. Chapter 200 Promotion Chen Ming and Bai Quan signed several documents. The tone was set to jointly develop hyperspace channel engine technology and share the shares in proportion. In the future, the 14th Legion will have professional technical personnel to do related things. Chen Ming does not need to worry too much. At most, he will occasionally need to participate in a few issues. Other times, just wait to collect the money. And as Bai Quan has really entered its busiest period, the morning teaching has been suspended, and Chen Ming has free time to do some things that were not originally planned. For example, in conjunction with the brilliant start of the exploration and finishing work around the first jump landing point in advance. Last week, the exploration of the galaxies around the temporary base had reached about 80% progress. It is expected that all galaxies with possible habitable planets will be explored within two weeks. But of course, there is only about a week left. That's when it's time to start preparations for the second jump. Chen Ming needs to count all the survey data and gains in all aspects so far, and summarize an efficient exploration process based on the exploration around this first temporary base to use in the next exploration. Of course, saying it's the end doesn't mean that Chen Ming will leave directly. There is no way that this temporary stronghold that was just built will be demolished in just over a month while arranging Afterglow to go to the next temporary base. He can continue to leave some Afterglow individuals to investigate other unfinished galaxies. The reserve Afterglow that I had deliberately left behind was used at this time. After all, the 80% exploration progress does not mean the comprehensive exploration of the galaxies around the stronghold. There are still many galaxies that Chen Ming Wei has never been to. It was just because some stars would make it impossible for habitable planets to exist inside galaxies and galaxies without habitable planets had no value for Chen Ming to build colonies. So his afterglow never visited those galaxies. But there will always be some galaxies in which even if there are no habitable planets, there will still be some valuable planets. It would not be a loss for Chen Ming if the data collected from valuable planets and valuable galaxies were resold, under the premise that he is currently conducting a large-scale investigation. The cost of each fuel can be reduced a lot. Then these survey data, when converted into direct money, must be much more than fuel money. Unless the surrounding hundreds of light years are completely empty and there are no valuable galaxies or planets. This is unlikely. The money earned can also be invested in the opening of the second batch of afterglows and the construction of the second temporary stronghold. The launch of the second batch of afterglow will definitely be arranged at that time. The construction of the second temporary stronghold requires special investigation of the planets and galaxies suitable for the construction of the temporary stronghold. The first temporary base that Chen Ming chose was due to the situation at the time. He just randomly picked a planet and started construction. 
The choice of the location of the second temporary stronghold must be carefully considered if there is sufficient time. You must at least choose a planet that has certain resources that can be developed for a period of time to make up for part of the material consumption. Let the afterglow left on the ground of the planet exert more effects. Of course Chen Ning didn't have time to do this arduous task. So it was finally handed over to Hui Yao. It is the most suitable afterglow to accomplish this goal. There are also some things that Chen Ning has been doing all along. And he has stepped up his efforts after having free time in the past two days. For example, continue to persuade HR, who has shown obvious signs of relenting, to completely let go of his prejudice against humans, at least against Chen Ming, and completely join him. The other thing is to find a way to remember him and the alpha level afterglow individual in his mind. It can only be said that the alpha afterglow of Twinkle has always been very taciturn. Although after Chen Ming rescued it from the massacre of other afterglows, it was basically certain that Flicker would have no other thoughts. At the same time, it was indeed silently guarding the temporary stronghold, which was easier to deal with than HR. There are many, but the only problem is that it is too taciturn. Chin Ming has basically never heard it talking to him. The rare contact was when Chin Ming regularly repaired several cruisers that were not adapted to the dock and had to be repaired by himself. As a result, Chin Ming often forgets about flickering and forgets that he still has an alpha level afterglow. So in the past two days, Chin Ming has been trying to remember the flicker while trying to soften HR. The effect is not ideal, but it's not a big problem. The flash will still do what it's supposed to do. It can only be said that Bai Quan's busyness did provide Chin Ming with a lot of time to do other valuable things. In addition to the preparations for the second jump, persuasion and understanding of the afterglow at hand, and the learning that is still going on every day according to the daily schedule plan. Before Chin Ming went to bed every night, he performed in-depth maintenance that was basically equivalent to once a day on the right position. For example, optimizing the afterglow core and helping the insect queen optimize its biological architecture. At the same time, Chin Ming specially allocated it to Xiaoyang, completing the first tentative cooperation. Everything is going in a good direction. And time came to the day of Bai Chuan's promotion ceremony in the blink of an eye. Although Chen Ming could not attend, he still needed to pay attention to the ceremony. Therefore, he deliberately contacted his boss in advance and told him if anything happened. Of course, even if Chen Ming didn't mention it, the boss would definitely tell him then. After all, Chen Ming still has a highlight to perform in the ceremony, with Bai Quan and related personnel in place. The promotion ceremony also starts normally with the arrival of time. However, the actual process of awarding Lieutenant General Bai Quan only invited relevant personnel from the military and government, and not many people could see it. However, many people were invited to the banquet later. In addition to military insiders, there are no less than representatives of companies with which the military maintains cooperative relationships. So the entire banquet hall was basically divided into two sides. On one side sat the people of the 14th Legion, and the atmosphere was dull and solemn. The atmosphere on the side, where those who maintained cooperation with the 14th Legion were concentrated was quite lively. After all, such a banquet is an excellent place for socializing. People from different work fields get to know each other, and it is a perfect place to discuss business. Bai Quan entered the banquet hall with the rank of Lieutenant General on his chest. The atmosphere in the banquet hall is at its most lively. However, everyone present restrained their behavior. After entering the banquet hall, Bai Quan, the protagonist of the banquet, first walked towards the side where the military was sitting. Then we came to the half where the various forces that cooperated with the 14th Army were concentrated. Also following him were several juniors from the 14th Legion who were led by Bai Quan before. They are all juniors who stand out from their peers and have already demonstrated their talents and practical abilities. They are the future of the 14th Legion. So they need to follow Bai Quan to get in touch with these partners of the 14th Legion. Among them were Cheng Xinghe, who had met Chen Ning before, and his sister Cheng Xinghai. However, Cheng Xinghe was not in a good condition at the moment, and his energy and energy were a little sluggish. One of the reasons was indeed that he was beaten up by Chen Ming, who had no command experience at all, and was eventually captured. But after all, he had been unconscious during the period of cryosleep. So it was okay. At least he was still alive. So it was mainly because he was beaten several times by Bai Quan himself after he was brought back by Bai Quan. He worked hard to get his position and was demoted again and again, which made him look like this now. In addition, he was assigned some tasks after he came back alive. That is, he must personally handle the pension and follow up security arrangements for all the soldiers who have died 
because of the decisions he made. This is the rule of the 14th Legion, a rule that every battlefield commander must do personally. Although this task is very troublesome and difficult, it is not too boring for Cheng Xingha. And he also knows the benefits of doing so. But Bai Quan gave him an extremely troublesome task two days ago to confirm the overturn of a matter that had been settled. All the things here are even more troublesome. Moreover, he also heard that Chen Ming was responsible for this task, which made him almost suffer from PTSD when he heard Chen Ming's name. So when Bai Quan walked towards Wu Yin, who was the core focus of the other half, and was surrounded by many people, Cheng Xingha lowered his head silently and began to pretend to be dead. Cheng Xingha's sister Cheng Xinghai was in sharp contrast to him. Although Cheng Xinghai was also wearing a military uniform, her short ear-length hair just added a bit of vitality to her. She didn't look as serious as the other military people at the banquet, but looked very lively. She smiled and walked at the front, pushing through the crowd and saying H, Lo to Wuin. He also dragged Cheng Xingha, who was consciously embarrassed, over to meet Wuin and say H, Lo. Cheng Xingha knew that Wuin and Chen Ning had a good relationship. So in the past few days, when he knew that Wuin was staying at the headquarters of their 14th Army Corps, he was trying to find ways to avoid seeing her. But now, he couldn't help but not seeing him. After all, the first person Bai Quan wanted to see when he brought them here was Wuin. And he couldn't avoid it no matter how hard he followed Bai Quan. Those who originally complained about Cheng Xinghai's somewhat brutal actions immediately changed their expressions when they turned their heads and noticed that Bai Quan had come over. Some people gave up on Wuin and gathered around Bai Quan. Their mouths full of praise for Bai Quan. Hoping to chat more with Bai Quan. However, they did not dare to go too far. When Bai Quan responded to them one by one with a smile, they also took the initiative to make way for Bai Quan to lead to Wuin, who they had surrounded before. Wuin, who was originally sitting in his seat, stood up with dignity and raised his glass to Bai Quan. Bai Quan immediately raised his wine glass and bumped it gently before saying to Wuin, Mr. Wuin, I heard that when you came this time, you didn't ask anyone to help you collect the gifts? Yeah, there are some things you have to accept personally. Both of them looked at the corner of the banquet hall, where there was a box-shaped object covered by a layer of cloth. How about now? Okay. Wuin agreed and walked to the corner of the banquet hall with Bai Quan surrounded by a group of people. On the way there, Bai Quan suddenly asked, Mr. Wuin, can you tell me a little bit about what it is in advance? I heard Chen Ning say two days ago that he would give me a surprise. But since he didn't come, yes, the surprise was delivered to me on your behalf. As he spoke, Wuin took out a spindle-shaped crystal that could be held in one hand and a piece of paper from his pocket and handed them to Bai Quan. This crystal is the back SH. L of the crab that naturally fell off during this period. And it shines with magnificent luster under the light of the hall. Before Bai Quan could ask or Wuin could introduce it, Cheng Xinghai said like a little girl attracted by something shiny. What a beautiful stone! Bai Quan took the crystal, glanced at it twice, and handed it to Cheng Xinghai, whose eyes were shining and then picked up the piece of paper. This is a test report. Although Bai Quan is not a designer who specializes in designing battleships, he has a clear understanding of what capabilities each component of a battleship has, what kind of performance it should have, what is good and what is bad. Therefore, when he read this test report, he was first surprised by the nature of the material itself, and then he was shocked by seeing the actual specific data with his own eyes. Finally, he felt joy after understanding the reason why Chen Ming and Wuin brought this thing to him. The benefits brought by mass production of such a material that can crush all current energy storage devices are extremely significant. And in the near future, countless people in the entire empire will be eyeing this piece of fat. Although Wuin and Chen Ning would not openly grab this technology, various small tricks are definitely emerging and endlessly. Those people will not only try to get involved, but will also try every means to try to reproduce it, and even want to get a complete production method and production system. Although Wu and Enchen Ming combined have connections and abilities, they do not have enough power. After all, the Psychic Association is a loose organization, and it is impossible to really help them in these matters. Therefore, they need a force with enough weight in the Empire to protect this unique business. And their final choice was him. Bai Quan. Bai Quan raised the corners of his mouth and said, So that's what's in that box? Wu and nodded slightly, stepped forward and pulled open the cloth covering the Crystal Crab observation box. A total of four crystal crabs, two large and two small, appeared in the sight of everyone present. The two big ones were those that Chen Ning gave to Wu and before, and the two small ones were hatched from the two eggs that Chen Ning gave to Wu and before. Cheng Xinghai, 
who was standing next to Bai Quan and glanced at the test report in Bai Quan's hand, was immediately attracted by several shiny crabs moving around. She immediately asked Wu and who had pulled back the cloth. Uncle Wu, what is this? Although Wu was not very familiar with Bai Quan before, let alone Cheng Xinghai. But after a few days since he came here, Cheng Xinghai knew that he was the top psyker of the psionic society. From time to time, she would come over to ask Bai Quan for help while the two were chatting about something. And they would become familiar with each other in a few days. Cheng Xinghai has just come of age. So it is not offensive to call Wu In, who is actually in his 30s. After Wu In checked with Bai Quan's eyes, he explained with an expression that looked at his younger generation. This is the crystal crab. The animal that produced the crystal. Cheng Xinghai blinked, his dark pupils reflecting the beautiful light of the crystal. She gradually looked away from the crystal in her hand and asked, Is there anything special about this crystal? This is a special energy storage material, and its effect is stronger than all current professional energy storage materials and energy storage devices. There is also specially tested data to prove it. Although Wu was answering Cheng Xinghai's question, he was obviously speaking to other people present. There were obviously many businessmen among the surrounding partners of the 14th Army. Someone among them immediately realized something and asked Wuin, Mr. Wuin, what data are you talking about? Wuin pointed to the corner of the box and said, Use the terminal to read this string of codes here, and you will see it. I found the results measured by the Energy Materials Research Institute with government-issued qualifications. They have their stamp on it. The crowd who came with Bai Quan immediately gathered around the observation box and soon saw the same content as by Quan's test report. Representatives from several companies that specialize in energy storage materials and energy storage equipment began to breathe heavily. They know how much impact it will have on the entire market if such materials are real and can be mass-produced. Wuin didn't whet their appetite and said directly, If you paid attention to Bai Quan's movement some time ago, you should have heard about Chen Ming. Right. This is the technology Chen Ming got from Yuhui. Chen Ming can already mass produce this material? Hearing someone in the crowd ask this question, Wuin's mind flashed back to what Chen Ming had said to him before. And he replied, Basically, it's okay. But the output will be a little low in the early stage. And the output will gradually increase later. What about the afterglow? Wuin was not surprised at all when he heard this question. Just like what he said when chatting with Chen Ming before. When someone learned that such a thing existed, some people immediately had strange thoughts. However, he answered very simply, Before leaving Yu Hui, Chen Ming had successfully uprooted Yu Hui's entire biological research institute and obtained the complete breeding methods and equipment. At most, there are only some scattered samples left in Yu Hui. It will take at least several generations, several years, or even more than 10 years to recultivate them to a scale that can be mass-produced. If anyone is interested, you might as well go to the Afterglow Star Territory and give it a try. There is always something left behind in Afterglow. Everyone present is obviously not a fool. After being influenced by Qin Ming in front of Yu Hui, it is absolutely a suicide act for people outside to go in again. Even if Yu Hui really still retains relevant technology, there is absolutely no way they can go to the Afterglow Star territory to bring out the technology. Therefore, there is no other way to obtain this technology without starting from Qin Ming. They can only find a way to join in at a lower price in order to get a piece of the pie. Otherwise, after a few years, the technology will be updated and iterated, and the day lily will be cold. Many people are interested in this technology, but they haven't done anything special yet. After all, Wuin took out this technique during Bai Quan's promotion ceremony, so this technique cannot be released without the owner's consent. Even if they want to seek cooperation, they should not go to Wuin, but to the 14th Army Corps. Qin Ming is the manufacturer, Wuin is the middleman, and Bai Quan is the distributor. At this time, Bai Quan was happy that Chen Ming was willing to hand over the sales rights of such a material technology to him. And he also understood why Chen Ming was studying biotechnology before. Obviously, this is to at least understand some of the cultivation techniques of this special biological material, so as not to become blind and not even know what they are producing. The actual operation of cultivating crystal crabs and harvesting materials should be left to the afterglows he controls. There is nothing logically wrong with Bai Quan's idea but it was indeed successfully misled by Chen Ming. But at least he is quite happy now. Even when today's banquet is over, the threshold of his office may be breached, and he must be mentally prepared in advance. At this moment, Cheng Xinghai, who had already taken away the research report in Bai Quan's hand and read it over, 
suddenly tilted his head and asked by Quan. Chen Ming? Is it the one who used the shabby fleet to give my brother away? Can you hit Chen Ming who can only hide in the escape cabin? Hearing this, Cheng Xinghe, who was pretending to be dead next to him, lowered his head even further. He didn't even want to explain that he was actually beaten by a local military's own dominator cruiser. Bai Quan obviously didn't take care of Cheng Xinghe's face. So he directly admitted, It's him! Cheng Xinghe's pupils flashed with curiosity and a hint of curiosity. Aggressive. She said to her two seniors, Uncle Bai! Uncle Wu! I want to get to know him! Bai Quan immediately understood Cheng Xinghe's thoughts and said, Do you want to fight him? Cheng Xinghe stared at Bai Quan with a pitiful expression and asked, Is it okay? Before Bai Quan could answer, Cheng Xinghe suddenly tugged on Cheng Xinghe's sleeve and said, Chen Ming is not from our 14th Army Corps. So why would he use a simulation device to fight you? You don't want to do it for real. Do you? Ah. Uh, yes. Just when Cheng Xinghe felt a little regretful, Bai Quan suddenly remembered that he had to arrange a test opponent for Chen Ming. Cheng Xinghe was originally a good candidate, but he had conflicts with Chen Ming. So he was ruled out by Bai Quan from the beginning. Bai Quan had never thought about which opponent would be suitable for Chen Ming. Now that Cheng Xinghe has taken the initiative to bring it up, and there is no conflict between her and Chen Ming, it is indeed a good choice. So Bai Quan said, Actually, it's not impossible. Ah? Uh? Bai Quan ignored Cheng Xinghe, who made a confused sound, and said to Cheng Xinghe, I can arrange for you to fight with him on the simulation equipment. Within a week, you can go and prepare first. Real? A new subdevice has been installed in the Gallo Star territory. The superiors agreed that I would give Chen Ning access to this device. You can directly simulate it remotely. But don't come to me if you are beaten to tears. She took away the aggressive look in Cheng Xinghai's eyes and said with a good-natured smile on her face. How could that be? Thank you. Uncle Bai. Okay. Okay. You have met everyone and you are ready to do business. I still have something to talk to other people about later. So you can go and have fun by yourself. Okay. Just when the crowd followed by Quan and we went back to the side of the banquet hall, there was a person in the crowd who was staring in the direction of Cheng Xinghai leaving the banquet hall and thinking, he is Su Lin, the chairman of Xinda Company. He did ask for the invitation letter to Bai Chuan's promotion ceremony as he said before. And he did come here and watched it for a long time silently holding a drink. Although he was a little regretful that Chen Ming did not hand over the sales rights of this crystal technology to their Xinda company for operation. But the focus of his thinking at this time was not on this, but on a side idea that just flashed through his mind.